Listen up, folks. This episode of Occult Book Club, not for kids, absolutely not. We're going to dive into things you've never heard before, things not suitable for a public setting. Don't play it in your store, classroom, or out loud. This is your warning. You either leave now or brace yourself for over five hours of the most shocking content you can imagine. Content that might be hard to digest, it might leave a bad taste in your mouth, but it also might just unlock secrets of human history and mythology. So if you're up for it, stay tuned. But remember, I told you, it's gonna get messy. This is the Occult Book Club review of The Box Saga. Welcome to another episode of the Occult Book Club. Me and Thomas just finished a five and a half hour recording about the box saga and introduction by Carl Borgen, which we go through what are actually Thomas's notes on the entire thing. Because when I read it, I didn't take any notes because I wasn't planning on doing an episode about it until Thomas got a hold of it and was like, dude, we got to do an episode on this. This is all gold. It's gold, if you know what I mean. Jackpot. It's a jackpot. And again, I am a, I, I'm a researcher, so I like to listen to all stories. Now, my problem is when people try to insert it like this is what it is and there's nothing else. That, that's my problem. I don't care about listening and studying certain things, but when you try and push your ideologies upon other people and you get mad because they're talking about something a certain type of way that, that that's where my problem comes in with it i don't know about you thomas but you know if you say that your thing is the one truth back it up and the box saga doesn't do a good job of backing itself up but again it doesn't hey there's no contradictions in it but hey what we just read was an introduction and i want to stress enough this is gonna be if it's on youtube it's going to be heavily, heavily censored, but we're still going to put it up there. If you want to get the full thing, if you want to get the full load, make sure to check it out on Rumble, either on Paranoid Americans Rumble or the Juan on Juan Rumble. The links will be down in the description. I don't know how I'm going to put this out on the RSS feed. If Before you start it, do not play us in your bookstore with your kids, with any of that stuff. You've been warned. And I just want to put that out there. It's so bad that my sinuses are being triggered right now from all the I just had to endure. And thanks to Thomas, we're here. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. And I still think it's but what what do you have any thoughts, Thomas? To leave the people with before they get started. Well, on yeah, this. you said you, you said you wanted to review this one uh, because I was like, I'll just do it by myself. But I'm just thinking, like, what would Eeyore Bach do? Eeyore Bach would have done it by himself. hundred percent. Yeah, an, an auto, an auto review. You would have done an auto review. <laughs> so, again, dude, like I said, we, I want to say we we gave the saga the respect to deserve, but, ugh. anyways, yeah, enjoy this one or don't, don't care. We did it, and I don't know about you, uh, I don't know about you, Thomas, but I think I'm gonna put this one to rest, and. That you, you told this isn't just part one. I thought this was part one of an ongoing series. Of a 20 year series? Yeah. This is kind of, I mean, the only way that we can convey this truly is 20 years and yeah, some like in person. Well, I figured, I figured we could actually have an actual Bacchus come on and talk to us about it. But I think after they hear this episode, they're not going to ever want to be involved with us ever again. I don't, I really don't see why, man. I think if someone were, I think there's a true Bacchus out there. They're like, finally, somebody's talking about all the real information in here. And they're not like dancing around the part that makes the most sense. So many people are afraid to talk about the real part of the box saga where they call it icky or they, they tell you not to bring it up. I feel like a real Bacchus would want to talk about that. That is the, the crux of all this. But it, in, in that, line of thinking though right you're you're in a secret society right we can talk about it, we can't talk about it, whatever but being in that line of thinking by exposing the innermost things but they've already been written down is that sort of exposing and taking away from the magic of the box saga in some sort of way by you bringing up the icky parts but then again you can't portray what the box saga is about without bringing up the icky parts 
So how does that From work? my understanding, Eeyore Bach never said to don't bring up the icky parts. And this guy, Carl, that wrote the book about the Bach saga, he at no point says don't bring up the icky parts. He just says that if anyone's been conditioned through like a Christian upbringing, they might find this a little bit bizarre. But if you didn't come up through Christian upbringing, then this is all normal. This is... This is what you would expect the world to naturally be like if you hadn't been indoctrinated by the Catholic and the, the Roman church, essentially. So you're actually weird if you hear this and you think that's icky. That means that you've been brainwashed. Okay. All right. Well, everyone, let us know what you think in the comments. And I'll be excited to read those comments after we finish posting this one. This one should be... This one should be interesting. So absorb, absorb those comments, absorb those comments. That's right. But again, leave thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. Subscribe tjojp.com, chosenjuan.com, patreon.com slash the one on one podcast. All that good stuff. Thomas, plug away. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Paranoidamerican.com, occultbookclub.com. Uh, I'll, I'll play a little nice commercial with stickers or chosen one or something, but more than anything else, teach your kids start around the age of seven, teach them. What up, y'all? Cold Book Club. We've got some content today. First of all, if you're watching this on YouTube, don't. Uh, but it's here anyways. But you might have a bad time because who knows how much of this we're going to censor. Juan and I had a very long, very serious, detailed discussion about how we can approach this topic with the sensitivity and the respect it deserves. And I think the only way we can do it is by just unbridled, uncensored, just say exactly what we feel because that this particular story, the box saga, has so much to do with semantics and words and picking words apart that it would be crazy to try and add this extra level of like occult words and code phrases. So whatever, if you're listening to this on YouTube, it might just all be beeps. We might replace uh, the word with hot dog. We might replace the word uh, with fun sauce. I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but... The YouTube version. Oh, and by the way, if you're playing this in your bookstore or if you're driving your kid uh, to school today, I guess a little late notice, but this is not going to be a super family friendly episode, but it is going to explain the entire history of the universe, of humankind, of religion, how the brain works, how language works, the the ultimate truth, like the, the truest capital T and little case I truth that there is out there for you to see with a capital T. So without further ado, we're going to be talking about the box saga today. I'm, I'm getting the list ready of words that I have to censor after the fact for, for YouTube. But yeah, if, I mean, do you want to just, do you want to just list what we think we're probably going to have to say right now? Just to, so we've got like a nice organized. Um, uh, eat pie. Hold on, slow down, slow down. Pie, pie Go too. I think is one G O K K U N. What is that? I think it's when you cook it. I'm not really oh, sure. Wow. I think it's when you make like an omelet out of it and like cook it. Okay, what else? I mean, I'm sure dude, there's actually so many more. There's probably people that are disappointed in me that i don't know a whole lot of other names for <laughs> and sauce and yeah i don't know i think we've i think we've got most of them covered is there any that i'm missing i think we should do an exercise up front and just get out all the joke you think we'll be able to survive not telling a joke or a nipple joke throughout this whole entire no, I think, thing i think they need to be, they need to come and go freely <laughs> they need to, we need to just let them come and don't 
Don't yeah, don't don't think about baseball. We're not going to be thinking about baseball at any point in this entire conversation. I think don't for- <laughs> don't force it type of thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. some of them just write themselves. So you were you were asking, and I'm going to pull up an article on Eeyore Bach, and I want to I want to preface this with that. I've only heard about the Bach saga, I don't know, like 10, 10 times or something. And I've seen a, a few people going hard on in the paint about this particular topic. But the one thing that has never, ever come up really in detail is I'm, I'm looking through this Eeyore Bach article and I see this word and you know it's purple because I, you know, I, I made this For thing research purple. purposes, yeah, of course. Of For course. research purposes only. But I've, I've looked at it for so much that it's turned purple. Nice. This auto exercise and yeah i guess we're gonna be censoring if you want to write the time code uh all (laughs) i did was hovered (laughs) over the link i didn't even click on it okay listen Um, dude listen (laughs) disgracing and slandering the box saga is pathetic okay you're pathetic right now thomas well folks so let let me preface this man before we get into that because i know that's let's let's beat that one off at the pass yeah, we're gonna beat this one off. Right yeah, so so don't be, <laughs> don't be happy that the saga's on this show. It's not a good thing that we're here, okay? Because we're and, we're gonna go hard in the paint. We're gonna go hard, real long and hard today. And I, I'm not anti box saga, by the way. And in fact, we found something out recently that. Being pro box saga seems to conflict directly with being pro flat earth or or maybe even yeah. some aspects of Tartaria. We'll get we'll get into that. Yeah. But I want to say again to to be everybody off first. I don't think that any of this discredits necessarily any of the research or the work. However, the amount of gatekeeping and the amount of secrecy that kind of revolves around the whole premise of the box saga being sort of like shunned away in this closet and telling people that it's icky or telling people that if they bring up these parts, then they're trying to discredit the whole thing. That seems incredibly silly to me. It would be like trying to talk about Aleister Crowley and say like, but never bring up magic, never bring up his use of drugs because those things discredit his work. Are you kidding me? That that is his work. Just like everything we're going to talk about today that sounds icky or that it sounds like we're trying to discredit someone. This is seminal to this guy's work. This is the main vein of his work. All of his work flows through this one particular <laughs> pipe. So there's, it's impossible to shut this thing. You can't pinch the tip of this thing off. Dude. You will cause problems. I love how all that is like directly, directly related to the saga, bro. You didn't admit, did you write that? I did. And this is, this is flowing freely through me, man. I'm just going to let it come. Dude. Oh my dude. That was awesome, bro. Like that was literally straight from the tip, straight from the source of the whole thing, bro. That that's, we're going to get deep. We're going to get juicy. It's going to get messy. There's going to be sticky, icky parts of this. But we're not gonna we're not gonna skip any of it because another part of this that that frustrates me a little bit and it's a little bit comical that first of all the premise is that this guy Eeyore Bach hears the Bach saga audibly it's told to him through his mom and his aunt I guess for twenty years and he's not allowed to ask questions he's not allowed to write anything down he's only allowed to sit there and listen period like you don't and that's to me it's like a crazy way to learn to go to school for 20 years and you're never allowed to ask a question. The other part of this that makes it so interesting is that for Eeyore Bach to fully communicate the Bach saga to you, you're going to have to sit your ass down and listen to him for 20 years. There's no other way around that. So what we have instead of that is a book, right? The book And he is... can't tell you the whole thing either, by the way. There's, he didn't finish telling the whole thing. Of course, again, we're going to be... And this is why people get mad and angry but we're going to be going straight to the source okay of the box saga by carl borgen and whatever we're saying is coming from this i've seen i've watched a few documentaries with jim chesner on i've seen two or three of his documentaries on youtube welcome to hell was one of them and there was two other ones that i watched 
I've seen various interviews of him. The latest one that I saw was on Crow Triple from 2019. And again, I've read this whole thing. Now, I'll say this. I read the box saga because if I'm going to, if I'm going to make fun of something, I want my 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 sources to be lined up, right? I'm going to draw directly from it and I'm going to make fun of it. And dude, I make fun of everything. I'm the homunculus guy, all right? The homunculus and this has more in it than the homunculus. That says a lot. Okay, that that says a lot. And it's all fun and game when you can make fun of the homunculus, but as soon as you start disrespecting our true history with a capital T, it gets real choppy right it gets real maybe this is where we get lost in the sauce if you will and this is you can imagine what the sauce is you want to you want to guess there's gonna be there's gonna be so much just gonna happen automatically here it's gonna be like auto it's just gonna come naturally nice dude and this nice so so again so so the very beginning of this let me let me finish so i I read the box saga for myself and then I had told you about it, and then it piqued your interest, really got your nipples hard, and then you were like, "Hey, we should, we should talk about this on the occult book club." And I was like, "Nah, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I don't want to do any of that." And then you're like, "Fine, I'll do it myself." And then I was like, "Fine, let's do it on the on the occult book club." So here we are. I didn't take any notes, and I had talked about it. I did like one episode on it a while ago way back when and so i was kind of familiar with it but you know when you know about something but you don't really know about something because people leave out the the icky parts if you will right the the all the weirdness it's like you can't just nitpick you know you got to take the whole the whole schlong <laughs> you can't just take the well, tip and it's it. sad because what they're doing is they're they're refusing to offer you their knowledge and unless you consume that knowledge that they're offering you'll never be able to receive it and fully integrate it like into you truly so anyone that ever says it's icky or tries to steer away from any of this like deeper meaning in the box saga they are literally refusing to offer you their wisdom and that according to the box saga is like the ultimate sin that's been the the sole reason for the the decline of society is that no one's offering knowledge to each other anymore uh, i think they still are thomas there's people still each other's well, in very small pockets of Twitter only, but it's it's no longer widespread. It used to be, what was it oh, like, twenty two thousand people? Yeah. We're, we'll get into the numbers in a second. Here, I so, think we should so, go through the claims too of the Box Saga before from from the Box Saga website. The what, well, here here's the so this is where it all started for me at least because I'd heard about the Box Saga and the the claims that I'll paraphrase and we'll pull them up in a second, but that. This box saga explains all of history. It's essentially the root language of every other language that's come after it. It's almost like a phonetic sort of language. It has elements of evolution weaved into it. It's got all sorts of historical elements that try to explain the vast separation of cultures and people and everything you can imagine about the world is somewhat summarized in this box saga. And again, I hope everyone's ready because this is going to be a 20 year series. Uh, so hopefully you've, you've taken off from work. Uh, you're not allowed to ask any questions. Don't post any comments, uh, because if you are, it means that you're not truly receiving what we have to offer today. And what we have to offer is what Bio, Eeyore Bach offered everyone. And he was essentially this tour guide, actor, mythologist and eccentric. And my understanding was that he was kind of like homeschooled and raised. And I take his word for it. I actually believe everything that he claims happened to him as a kid and all the things that he was taught. All of it? I do think, I think, yeah, I think Even this the, stuff probably happened. That he was uh, a a byproduct of an, do you believe that part too? A hundred percent. How could he not be? All right. That's not a hard feat, man. I mean, people are doing that every day. It doesn't take <laughs> uh, an alchemical degree in order to bang your sister, right? Okay. I'm just saying. It's pretty... So so my intro anyway to Euro Bach was, okay, I want to look into the Bach saga. I'm interested in etymology. I'm interested in phonetic mm-hmm. language and the spread of cultures and religion and yada, yada, yada. And I started on this Eeyore Bach and I came and was like, what is this weird 
thing again, uh, time code, uh, if you want to write it down. Uh, I didn't put that image there. It's just there. But even if you go auto wiki article page at the very bottom. Oh, my God. There was a Bill Hicks quote in here. This is awesome. What? Okay. Anyways. Yeah, dude. This Bill Wait. Hicks is quoted. Larry David, Will Ferrell on the wiki page. Nice. David Cross. But look at this. See also. That's purple because I had to click on that too. Let's Wait, go ahead and what? get that one out of the way. Uh, let me see that picture real quick. What the? Well, they weren't doing research had, purposes. They were using the the straw. Let me write this time. Well, down. I you might be wrong there, my friend, because I read the this book three or four times, seriously, and it's not a straw; it's a thimble. But we're gonna have to get into that as we get to it. I never right. came across the straw. That's an interesting picture, there, bro. That's so wow. the the page on oh yeah uh, on auto references Eeyore Bach. It's a it's a cross referenced article here. So this alone was like okay i guess there's something to this whatever and i still hadn't read any of the box saga only the official website and i'd seen all of the different conspiracy videos about it and they always mention like oh don't get into that icky stuff uh so i guess today we're gonna just straight up get into the icky part and into assume everything. that well into everything but there is there is no everything without the icky part the icky part is the glue that binds it all yeah it's the sticky icky yeah no I, and we're gonna be deep into the bowels and and guts of this of this story and really quick i sent you a link to the box saga website so people can see this is actually legitimately coming from sources <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> okay here's the extraordinary claims Whew, okay the first Fred and Freja, Frey and Freya, yeah, Free and Freya, Frey and Freya came from an ape copulating with a goat. Now, now again, this is the official page, right? Are you sure this is not like a parody or a. some sort of like we're going to try and discredit with icky stuff? Box Saga dot info. That's that's okay. where. It, again, we're not making this up. This is directly from, and that's fine. We can read it directly from the Box Saga and introduction. Which were you ever able to find the original Thomas? Because we we wanted the original and finished, and we were going to translate it. Well, again, there is there is no original, from my understanding, and maybe I'm wrong, but there's is no original because Eeyore Box said a he couldn't communicate the whole thing to anyone, and mm. b it would take twenty years. So the combination of a book that would take not twenty years to like sit down and plan out, but literally if you were to just transcribe it from your voice into text, you would have to talk for twenty years, which also means that you would have to what read it for twenty years. Wow. So the ability for anyone to truly have the the original Bach saga ended with Eeyore Bach, right? Because he was the final person in his entire lineage that was able to consume this knowledge in the way that he did. Mm, convenient okay so ape and a goat so adam so let's just say adam and eve instead of being created out of sand or whatever it actually came from copulation of an ape and a goat nice. so let's just assume this one as true just to get into the rest of it and honestly after that part i think the, the rest of it is doesn't require huge leaps of like science and like trying to rechange how evolution works so as long as you can just suspend your disbelief of an ape banging a goat um which i'm sh i i did another internet search and there's some purple links i'm not proud of but that, it's happened but there was no there was no like yeah. god that came out of it it yeah it was just kind of a sad thing wait but anyways, really it came up with something though <clears throat> yeah I, I, there was a youtube video of an ape having its way with a goat uh and the goat wasn't happy and i don't think anything was created from that uh, except for knowledge was spread true yeah knowledge and and the, and the the birthing of humanity itself okay nice so let's let's assume and i also want to stress that many times in the book that we read here this box saga carl borgen it stresses this is not um metaphorical these are not similes these are not stories that all of this is is a hundred percent literal and true and to stop like don't try and weave it into like oh well maybe they mean this uh it's it's very specific that way which i like because it leaves very little to interpret the box saga comes from frey and freya passed down generation to generation orally uh em emphasis yeah quite literally apart from frey and freya 
all human beings are born from an egg and all animals from embla and egg. Okay. And this is, again, this emphasis on an egg is going to be the crux of everything that every becoming years of age became a daily right of drinking their own and sap with, uh, Oh, and here's another list of words is probably going to be, um, I, right. Poop. Guzzle. All right. Don't guess. Don't, don't start embellishing them, bro. And what do you say? Okay. I don't think I'm embellishing. I'm just, I'm listing them out now. So we've got an yeah. easy way to like, okay. So drinking your own sap at the age of now, mm. let's just take a, a step back really quick. So I don't have to get into it later. Imagine you get invited over to your friend's house, you know, or your, or your kid, your kid comes home and he's like, Hey, I went over to, you know, a uh, little Juan's Juan junior's house, or it's no. your neighbor's friend. Like <laughs> Not my your house. kid comes home and he's like, I went over to little Billy's house down the street. And the craziest thing was happening. They said it was time to study for math or whatever. The offering. And yeah, every, yeah it, it, it was time for the offering. And everyone in the family just took off their clothes and they just started, you know, drinking themselves. That feels like it would be reported as. And I'm not saying that you need to start going through every culture in the world and see what adheres to the current American purity test. But. This is objectively sort of off-putting uh, that a lot of the people that say, don't talk about this icky stuff, right? That if this really were the way to teach everybody, this is a dramatic change in what is currently seen as acceptable in almost any camp, any even like weird niche community outside of some, I'm not even going to get into it, but this is a really, I don't know, specific niche and you can't skip over this part mm -hmm. because if you skip over this part you don't get the knowledge like this is literally what everything's about that every day that you go after you've reached the age of which is like a weird ancient puberty age i suppose but after this every time that you don't drink your own or you don't drink your own you are losing knowledge out into the world that you will never ever get back and even more than that it doesn't say this, but if you don't drink all the in the of your friends and family and neighbors, the military, you're being the selfish. government, yeah, you're being you're being so. Yeah, let's say, let's save it. Let's you know, we want to just blow but the whole here, load right up front. Listen, Thomas, well, why do I have to drink it? Why can't I just do retention and just leave it inside and I don't have to do anything with it? Because it's kind of icky to to to. Is it if you put your own in your it to to climax is that i actually heard an even better objection to this that if you don't do that then that just means you're always full of and doesn't that make you then if you're not always oh, you don't dude. wow if you don't yourself off and eat it so that it it dissolves essentially and it goes into your bloodstream and into your brain so it's no longer at that point so for small moments in time you are completely empty of so for those moments, you're less than the times that you're completely full of, even though it means that it has to go through your mouth at some point yeah. so that you're drinking. But once the once you've drank the and it's dissolved and you've absorbed it, you are now the least person on the planet, assuming that you brushed your teeth. And then up until the point your body starts going through, I think it's called oh, what's the the site the cremister cycle. I believe it's called the cremister cycle, and that's when your body starts developing more to restore what was in it so up until that moment you are less than you were before if that's what you're true if you're really concerned about being then you need to stick yourself off and get that out of your so that you're not full of that's that's a lot of gaslighting there bro i don't know if i can commit to that every day well i'm not saying i'm again i'm i'm speaking through the box saga as i understand it and i'm open to talk oh, okay. about this at okay. length with anyone else that yeah. wants to come and correct and come. get into the weeds here. They want to come so, on the show. The men and women were offering and collecting and sap. Again, this is not just teaching your to do this. It's you doing it to the friends, the family, the, the entire structure of society. And I'm, it sounds like we're making fun and I swear to God, I am not making fun and I am not 
over embellishing this. The entire structure of society, including military and captains and the, the soldiers, everything was all oriented around going around and collecting from people and feeding it to other people for yep. the spread of knowledge. What, so and if you don't believe us, just we'll get into it. Yeah, and, and the whole right to 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 nip that on the butt, it, it's in this saga, there are no bloodlines. It is all about lines. Okay, it's all about and and sap lines. And is there sap lines too? Yeah. Oh because wow. Because the well, look at this very next line. It says the the original procreative system. It took at least twenty two thousand people to create one child, and that the reason very, is because very sustainable. It doesn't sound sustainable, does it? This. We're going to get into all the problems. Uh, again, if we skip over the ape and the goat banging and creating the original people, you can get this over that. Part, <laughs> this part seems very uh, illogical that this would happen. And this also is only going to be if, like, none of the poor people go and bang in an alley in the middle of the night at some point. Like, this assumes that nobody bangs anyone else and it only happens through the people that everyone off the most whatever chick drinks the most and whatever guys the most and drinks the most they both bang each other and therefore that one child represents these twenty-two thousand people and that's supposed to be like this ultimate moon child i guess that's got Ooh, all the knowledge nice. of all the and all the and that all forms their brain uh almost literally right like that's the components that they're made out of so therefore this is this ultimate supreme air blue-eyed blonde-haired like perfect specimen right and that's the only reason that we have declined over the years is because poor people started banging and cutting in line and you know each other and not themselves off and and just being hedonists and then all of a sudden it only took two people to make one child um, but apparently we were not designed like that. Like that, that one ape was allowed to bang that one goat. Uh, I don't think it was 20. That would have been an even interesting backstory if it was like an ape off 10,000 apes and then the goat drank the 20,000 goats and then they came together. But that, that only happens once humans are created that we then go into this cycle. And, and I want to correct you there, dude, on, on one thing, the, you know, when you're talking about them other on the shield there was actually a tip so the military there was actually a tip so you wouldn't come into contact yeah. with the other dude's tip so it wasn't as okay so i'm just gonna have to correct you on right. that. they they weren't all in the actual itself they did have a mechanism so that they would just collect a, that's the, the jackpot and then we'll get into that later and and that had a tip <laughs> of it so almost like a straw so it's it's not as as you give it some a little bit more respect thomas all right this is this is serious stuff dude I feel like I've got egg on my face. I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. We'll get, no, we'll get to just the come. special tools. Just on your face. Not, they, it's not egg. <laughs> it's a good point. They literally have military, what we would think is weapons, like military weaponry, were actually devices created to manipulate in order to more efficiently get to the so that you can drink it without being... Make love, not war type of thing. Did you ever, did you and your bros in the military each other off and into a, a, a uh, bowl or something not be honest not to that extent oh, not to that extent. In boot camp stays in boot camp not to extent but i will <laughs> say unequivocally that being in the military was the experience i've ever had in my entire life uh and i have been to key west and went to like a drag club or whatever like not on stage but like had a drink there um and that was far less than just one day in the military with a bunch of bros and i swear <laughs> to you i'm not even kidding about that all right, let's get through this because so, we got to still jump into the book. We haven't even well, started. Well, speaking of the military, the original military system was a procreative and not a destructive organization. This one is a really hard to understand, but I guess me just admitting that the military was the thing that I've ever done in my life almost gives credence to this claim of the box saga that the military truly was originally created to just go around and collect dudes and feed it to the superiors until it gets all the way up to the king. We'll get into that. Yeah. Human it, beings on our planet. Go ahead. And it would make sense that all of history that we've been told is a lie because all military powers throughout all of history have been destructive. 
have been about overtaking, overcoming other people and in, inserting themselves into their society and infiltrating, you know what I'm saying? Like penetrating their society and really getting there, getting in deep and taking over, you know, Bravo. I'm trying my best here, Thomas. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm trying my best, bro. This is, this is heavy stuff. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't get, don't get icky. We've got so much. We haven't even started the book yet. The human beings on the planet were one tropical race and spoke one language. Again, this is at the, the core of everything, the van language, bond language, and had one global information system before ice time. Uh, because you always have to, you have to come up with, cool names like ice time the root is the name of the first natural language and what all so-called germanic languages of today directly come from root language is an anatomical language this part is is probably the part that is the most important to understand but we'll probably get into the least only because yes there's so much of this this is my biggest criticism about the entire box saga it has nothing to do with all the in the, the eating that part i actually can understand from a historical point of view all these agricultural rights and is that any crazier than offering up your children to like a flaming bull god and like watching it consume it and it turns into fire and you think that it's going to rain like i feel like if someone gave you the option kill your or anyways or box, your own box, team box saga all day if those are literally the two options is is worship to moloch or worship well, that, yourself that's that and that's the argument bro that's the argument about why the box saga is so important because during the paradise times the white magicians ruled and during the these times now the the dark magicians rule and that's why they they were sacred to them their lines and they cared enough that you know if, if you didn't your own and if you're not down with the box saga you're essentially pro you're part of a satanic death global satanic death cult or flat earth sat well according to the box saga it's round so again that's just from research I've done and things that I've heard that I'm saying, if you're not down with the box saga, you like killing babies. If you, if you like the box saga, you have to love. And if you're, <laughs> if you're anti ball, you're anti Bach. So Oof. there's no real two ways about that. I love that dude. Love that. And again, yeah, the original system was procreative, not destructive. So that, that applies to everything. So again, the, the language part is going to be, I'll have some criticisms of it as we get deeper and deeper uh, into this box saga. And I think that this is where there's like the science breaks down and this is where all the subjectivity comes in. And I'll, I'll point it out as we go. The van language today is now Finnish, which is the first language created out of natural root and is the root of all other languages. It's kind of, it's similar to my criticism of this root language. We'll do that. The alphabet and the root language, there is meaning and a mark for every sound. And let's just go ahead and start with the letter I is also the sound E, like a like a hard E. And anytime you hear the the sound E as anyone talks, they are literally referring ejaculating and that the, the lowercase I is a little and the little dot above the I is the that's squirting out of the and that this this cannot be understated, especially by someone named Eeyore Bach, where his, his name literally starts with the letter I. He probably uh, took this to heart. Like he really, you know, took this one deep. And this became the premise for a lot of this semantic and phonetic building of everything around this E. Yeah, Stories related o. to the saga were kept secret. And the O as well, too, right? Did the O also play or, or am I getting that wrong? Well, every letter turns into a or a at some point, yeah, but so the, the, e the I is the most important one, and it's the most obvious. Yeah, yeah. All right. And, and if you think about it, the most used uh, letter in the English language is the letter E, but because E is pronounced the way that the box saga I is pronounced, and therefore the box saga gets to own anything that uses the letter I and anything that sounds like their letter I, which is E. So that means that anything that has the true letter E, like the fifth letter in the alphabet, or the letter Y, that all becomes the box saga's E, and they get to claim ownership of that, just like the word family. Now there's two P, there's two coming inside of this one word because you've got the I, which is the little with the, the 
coming out. And then you've got the, the phonetic sound E, which also translates to another little I. Whoa. So there's in this one word, there's two little that are both squirting. Wow, that's directly from the saga. That's a, is that like a, I, I, it sounds like we're like making a, stuff up. Like and a family we're not, and we're type show. of thing. Wow, okay. All right. The shapes of the root alphabet and astrological symbols are not created by humans, but come from a mathematical system based on the one and zero, the pole and ring, or the stave and circle. So yeah, just like you're saying the O, right? The O is the circle. Yeah. It's the ring. It's the zero. Um, so everything else, is, yeah, everything's going to boil down to being phallic or feminine, which this isn't, in my opinion, Box Saga didn't invent this. Like this is just all of human history. No, it's the but oldest they, saga. It's the oldest saga. Oldest saga. They've, and, and they've been doing it the longest. If you've noticed a, so that, that 22,000 figure at the beginning that we talked about, the where where the figure where the christ figure comes in because i think that anything that's anti-christ anti-christian that's not cool because this is all heathen i think that's propped up more and the reason why they hate christ is because he brought forth marriage and in obviously marriage is one per two people versus twenty two thousand, so they couldn't their own anymore and their friends off anymore so they they were angry about that and they hung him up on a stick and they threw tomatoes at him so again that that's part of that and and if, if we even go further freya and and Frey, Frey, whatever their name was those were the first two gods there are no gods in this story it's all about human beings and human human beings you know like it's all about people it's about the power that we hold within ourselves being that sap or the and that's what really this is all about so with that said you can continue it's again anti-gods anti-christian it's all about human history and how we evolved from a ape a goat so that's our true and history with a capital t thomas and to like at the risk of oprah simplifying the whole box saga that was my takeaway too was that the ultimate decline of society is this right here is that it used to take 22,000 people to create one child and the second that like Christ or anyone else basically said oh I, we can just take two people and make one child that's when it all went to hell because now all of a sudden you know we're longer we're separating society and we'll get into the details but separating them by how much of an uggo you were like if you were a super uggo then you would be on the very bottom What's rung. An and if you were like a super hot body, then you got oh, to go and, yeah. and drink all the cum and drink all the... Nice. And if you were an uggo, then you only had other people drinking your cum and your... It's a, it's, yeah. It'll make more sense as we get into the math behind nice. it. So here we go. The box saga explains all mythological symbols on the planet. Okay. These are, these are the claims that the original Old North Pole was was were <laughs> uh, was in helsinki is today with the earth's axis perpendicular to sun so again this is describing helsinki as the actual either hell or perhaps the original garden of eden or the original heaven it, uh, that's it, where you get, we'll get into the, that's where you get hell froze over that's real right real hell cool. hell sinky it it sinkied well did it um, sink or did it freeze over because again we can get into that whole thing where like it, all land is ice, alt Atlantis, right? All land. Well, there is you ice. go. That that around the North Pole, known as Hell, was the first ring land called Odin Ma, mm -hmm. uh, meaning the the mother of Odin, uh, as they explain in the the Bach, with a diameter of it. So apparently they have actual measurements, which they trust me, bro, is the source of oh, nice. every number you see in this. Figured so. it'd just be one big on the on the Earth. <laughs> it all just <laughs> into it. <laughs> The, the box saga I, i'm on board for this one the box saga offers material proof uh spoiler alert it doesn't actually do that where is it um <laughs> because because again the box saga by definition is a 20-year oral history so the, the material proof is like hey turn around real quick <laughs> yeah yeah it's like bro come on dude it's all do you want to learn the secrets of the secret do you think <laughs> yeah. is that that's what crowley told people like do you think he knew about the box well he didn't know about the box because it, it didn't show up until 1984 but 
Yeah, again, I, it would have been funny if Crowley did know about this, and that's how he was able to get people on board. Well, maybe board. he did. Maybe he, he tapped into this, and he just inherently started himself off and was like i've i've seen the true word no and no no this is it. he didn't because he was the part of the black magician the the shot black magicians where they just spray their seed everywhere and then you get into the left hand path right hand path stuff so who are you with thomas are you with the guzzler white magicians your own <laughs> are you with the <laughs> shot black magicians spraying their seed everywhere type of thing what where, where, where are you at well I'm a brother, so I actually I get to dance upon the checkerboard floor. It's all just a big of gray. Like there's a little bit of black in there, and there's a little bit of white in there. It's very all right. It's all just kind of melded together. I that, can that's the best that. thing about being a oh, is that is what, you don't have to pick. Is that what travel lightly means with you guys? Like it's 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 not like actual equipment. It's making sure that your are empty. You guys are each other off. Is that what <laughs> it's all about? <laughs> hey, dude, I'm just. I, the language, okay? The language. And I want to see if we can play Eeyore Bach reciting the their their alphabet, which we'll get into later, and hopefully it doesn't get flagged on, on YouTube from the channel that it's on. But if we can maybe in post we can pull that clip and and put in him I don't know if you can distort it or something, him saying the I think it's the Asner alphabet. Because again, all jokes, jokes, jokes what all these jokes aside one thing that i do enjoy about the 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 gawk saga i haven't sorry i have to get those out of my system the the saga is that the the root language aspect the etymological aspect of it that's really interesting to me okay the root languages all that is super interesting to me yep. now it's like how you said i don't know enough about it so i can't get into it and we're this is the occult book club so we're gonna this is going to be about an hour intro. <laughs> so maybe we could put time stance. And I, I know this is going to be useless for, for YouTube because we've said. Oh, I can't and, think of a reason they would want to censor this. And, so they, and they don't artists. want knowledge out in the world? No, no. It's about the suppression and keeping your own. Those right. warmongers. Yeah, those warmongers. And I'm just thinking, bro, the, the, the Taoists, they had it all wrong. It wasn't about keeping the, the homunculus is dude. It's about keeping the, the, retention inside your own self to create that golden little man that's his f now that now that i look at it like the homunculus has been since the very beginning well no but don't you put don't you put this into like a cow uh which which means that it's not right yeah i guess and it's and it's creating and not destroying i don't know I, that that's going to be a separate episode we'll yeah. have to talk about our homunculi and speaking of that, I, I guess time code wherever we're at now, forty minutes in. Um, but that the box saga doesn't get into a whole lot. Like, does that count? Like, if 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 your military general goes and and his commander up the ass and he's and he of them, does that knowledge lost because it comes back out, or oh, wow. is there does that get absorbed through like the mucous membrane into the rest of the body? Because it seems like the box saga complete i i brought glossed over any part that ever mentions like homosexuality whatsoever like there was no people that existed during box saga times just like there were no poor people banging in dark alleys it was there were there only were, there were all that, that was the problem dude it's it's been all mm, okay. al, so the first the first organism was the the algae all all so it's been oh all God, you're right it's you're been all right. i'm not making this up dude this is directly from this is jim chesner okay this is directly from him if you guys want to go and and do your research and and read it's been all since the beginning all the all g from the beginning dude I, well until an ape banged a goat and that was the first non thing that happened in human history <laughs> I'm, i want to break down the 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 words on the on the in the back if we have time at the end and I want to see if we can construct the etymology of or sodomy to see if we can relate it to the box saga in some sort of way. So anyways, continue. We're getting lost in the sauce here, dude. I don't want to get, you know, we're, we're, it's, we're it's easy. And if, even if you notice, these are getting longer and longer uh, as we go. Like they started out short, right? Quick little like, like um, quotes, but now it's like, okay, over eons. Oh man, actually. Okay. Directly under the North pole during the big bang. Uh, and this is okay 
our planet Earth was due to the centrifugal force of a huge cone space uh, shaped space formed inside the expanding magma. So you've got the magma, magma. And, and through it spinning, the centrifugal force creates this globe, a big ball, right? This is part of the reason this whole concept of a centrifugal force creating the planet makes the box saga incompatible with flat earth theories i believe i'm sure people can bend themselves over backwards to make it fit no um, no it's but oh, I, it's you don't have to bend yourself backwards you bend yourself in and to the to the front well maybe the way you do it but i've i've learned from my family line how to bend backwards oh. and that's actually more knowledge <laughs> okay all right, bro. Over eons, this big hole was transformed into a storehouse and filled with precious artifacts like decks that were offered up in appreciation to hell by the people of the earth. And that is, in fact, the museum of the history of the human being made from gold and precious stones. And this is one of the other big aspects of the box saga that throughout all of time, everyone was finding all these precious golds and minerals and putting it into this hole. And that Eeyore Bach was the sole benefactor to this hole full of riches, this huge jackpot that was been waiting for him for tens of thousands of years. And when he died, uh, I think a bunch of it, like before he died even, a bunch of his friends went and they tried taking explosives yeah. and they tried blowing the jackpot out of this hole. They used so much force and effort to keep trying to, to just blast off everywhere and nothing was working. They weren't finding the hole. They weren't finding the jackpot. They kept coming up empty. <laughs> this is one of the other parts of the box saga that I enjoy. The Treasure of Oak Island version of the box saga is this. I think this is really interesting. Th this part here, right? I mean, I know it's all interesting, but this part here where there now there is a physical mystery to it. And it's like how you said, everything is meant to be taken literal up until this point, right? Literally, everything is literal. And it's funny because I was on the phone yesterday with, with Mark. We were talking about a whole bunch of different things. And we brought up like the whole fact, like the homunculus, you know, the dog. Is it a real dog? You know, because Mark was like, oh, that, that's symbolic. And then I was kind of signing. He goes, right? And I was like, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. We don't know, man. Is it symbolic? I mean, I think, and, and the beautiful part about alchemy is that you're, a, in my opinion, you're able to extract a, you're able to extract something from both the physical and the metaphysical operation. So the dog is symbolic of X, Y, Z, but also if you had the real dog in reality, you beat the cow carcass with the, with the dog. You're still going to get a homunculus, but also if you were to do the operation that it's symbolically implying, you'd also get something on another realm of existence. If you, if, if you, if you, if you see where I'm coming from, Thomas, you, you get where I'm coming from, bro. You, I think I, they're both the same, like whether you're using the dog or not, but even if you were using the actual dog, the, the act of it is sympathetic magic. So if it were metaphorical for something, oh, then that would already wow. be implied. It would, it would come along with the regular beating of the dog like uh, yeah. the metaphorical part would also come with it you just blew my mind dude just blew it all over the place so inside this cone-shaped space there's a golden spiral road descending many kilometers to the bottom again trust me bro this part you'll have it'll take 20 years uh skip we'll bring up pictures this, like, of the expect speed it'll only take 10 we'll bring up pictures too of this place the the the, the cave Within the walls of this golden spiral road should be many rooms with three chambers. This is all talking about how Eeyore can get to his big jackpot, the soul back in Balder breeding lifetime, about 50 years. A full-size golden statue of him should stand in front of its door. To the entrance to these Bach family treasure chambers, also the Lemonikinen, I'm going to get all of these pronunciation wrong, which is it's probably fine, because matter. I haven't... I haven't in, I haven't really consumed this knowledge the way that I should yet. Saulbach and Baldur's Temple, situated 23 kilometers east of Helsinki. Two golden statues, buck goats, three crystal. Uh, I think that they even got an original uh, Charizard 9.8 <laughs> uh, CGC graded card in there. There's a third golden statue of a buck. 
50 million and 10,000 years before 1984 AD. Now this part, I really like it when they put out numbers because I always assume that there's going to be some sort of a calculation as to where these numbers were derived from. Nope. But again, uh, it, we'll get to it, but it's going to be in 20 years from now if you keep listening. 50 million year period was known as the Altlandis, all land ice. And now I love Jordan Maxwell, and I think Jordan Maxwell is one of the masters of language, especially finding all these cool little like ways you can rephrase stuff. And one of the things that I'll skip ahead to now is one of my criticisms is that Eeyore Bach coming out in 1984, this is the first time that he came publicly uh, with the Bach saga, was he had thousands of years of retrospect of other people's discoveries to kind of build on top of and then just say oh by the way you know like i've i discovered that my family discovered this thousand years before you know anyone else discovered this and part of this is this whole like alt landis meaning all land ice um they all the box saga has this convenient ability to say like they know every word that's ever existed since 1984 and before and then they can in retroactively say like, oh, well, actually, Altlandis means all land ice. And this is this ancient word from 50 million years ago. So like I, I was here first, you know, I, I won. I got the first comment. That's sort of a, this part of the box saga that irritates me just a little bit is your bot going around to every YouTube video and just writing first and all the comments and then bouncing. And I want I want to correct you also a little bit earlier. You said that there wasn't. Well, we'll get into it, bro. You know this is this is really crazy. And also, Eeyore Bach was a a tour guide at his local museum place over in I forget the name of the place. And he had conflicts with his employer because can you imagine Eeyore Bach giving you a guide? and teaching you the pseudo history of the creation <laughs> of the whole humanity and how he is the holder of that knowledge, that key. He is the last Bach to hold this knowledge and it was passed down to him sitting for 20, uh, for 20 years, two hours a day from his mom and his aunt and teaching this to people who just wanted to get the mainstream history of the place, of the castles and all that. Here he is telling you all the that we've been talking about this entire time that could make that that could cause some conflicts with the employer at the time and I, I think he was fired if i'm not mistaken well imagine the parents coming up to the employer and just being like look this dude's offering my girl the vip like tour <laughs> and i'm not about it like i saw what the guy was talking about no all arctic kings descended from this new pale-skinned race emerging from odin ma Again, this this truly is like this air race, this like perfect breed of people with perfect blonde hair and blue eyes, and they're tall and they're hot bodies, and they've got no imperfections. And in fact, very specifically, uggos are not allowed to reproduce. Only the, the hot bodies are allowed to reproduce, and they have to go through physical challenges. You have to basically like win at double dare in order to bang your sister at the end of it, um, which is really weird version of double dare but again this is box saga world people in finland lived according to this old pagan system up until 1050 ad so this claim that everyone in finland um 22 000 or 10 sorry 11 000 people roughly were all drinking each other's and then 11 000 women were all drinking each other's up until 1050 and that's when the catholics ruined it for everybody yeah those catholic they ruined Sorry. we were just each other's just minding our own business and here they here they came and they really f***ed us in the ass right with with this whole system that they had and also that well, tech, no, correction they didn't f*** you in the ass and also right. i know that you've got a high opinion of yourself i as do i self-esteem is good for mental health but let's not kid ourselves we're both in lower class so we're the ones each other off but the higher class, they get the special shields and the special little oh. tips to make it so it's not. But so like when you go, people, is this why we have these tips when we go do hookah? So we don't, you know, like the tips you get. You ever done hookah? I mean, according yeah, according to the box saga, it's all related. 
Oh yeah, so okay, that makes sense. Why why they put the little plastic tip on the hookah tip there, so you're not touching the, you're not making skin to skin con the lips to the tip, lips to tip. That's not it's not good unless you're the lower class. The uggos, because <laughs> there's no money. It really is just about like how how hot you are and how much other people want to drink your. That is what dictates. <laughs> yeah. how high you go on the, dictates oh and God. dictates yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah all right so it ends it, it's it's going to be better to just get into the book at this point for further explanation of these claims please enter the website and read the book well you know what we're going to do that we're going to read the freaking book man oh man as i've done about three or four times now with meticulous notes 55 minutes in this is just the tip of the box saga this is just the introduction so we'll have to put the timestamps down below and again this is gonna be i'm gonna debate where i'm i'm gonna master debate to where i'm gonna put this one and where i'm gonna where i'm gonna fire this video off at and if i'm even gonna put this on the feed the rss feed because it might get flagged by even spotify i think we're, we're a little bit too filthy on that i don't know dude we're gonna have to figure it out but if you're not subscribed already, make sure to subscribe to Paranoid American's YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube. There's only stuff that you're going to find. I do live streams every now and again, impromptu. They're only going to be found on there. And also check out the Rumble. Rumble is fully uncensored where you're going to get this entire thing uncensored where you can hear us say drinking magician. Uh, goats and all that stuff. You're going to hear all that uncensored. Okay, so if you just heard a blank, head over to the Rumble. Paranoid American. Do you have a Rumble, Paranoid American? I do have a Rumble. I actually streamed on it successfully last night for the first time. Nice. So, we're, so we're coming up in the world. Rumble, Paranoid American, Juan on Juan. Links all down in the description. I don't know where this is going to where it's going to exist, but it's again, this is the most controversial saga to ever exist. The oldest saga in existence, and it is 50 our 50 million years. Our true history. All right. So buckle up, hold on to your to your asses and all right thomas let's do this i i just want to ask and i guess there's not going to be any end to these but thanks to eeyore bach for sharing his knowledge with us and when when i read this now in retrospect of oh, having wow. read this many times and understanding an honest question here does like are these dudes drinking eeyore box because it it almost seems that would be the logical culmination of you sitting down and listening to him talk about this for a year at some point late at night around the campfire and he's starting to, to nod out a little bit you're like hey hey eeyore can i can i get a little knowledge and i feel like this would be a natural succession of events right like that wouldn't be out of hand because if he Listen, said no that's keeping you in ignorance do not slander the saga thomas okay and also I made an observation by watching all these documentaries. And I'll just say this. I'll just say this. Everyone that was interacting with him, Eor Bach, and going to his house and, and hearing these stories from him, we're all young men. And that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not in we're not saying that Carl Borg and Eeyore Bach. Okay. We're just taking and processing from the saga what has been told to us okay so take that for so, what yeah, you keep that in mind i would definitely say keep that in mind as we go over all this from what what the information is saying here does it make sense that someone would want to drink your box because of what he wrote here so here we go i'm just gonna i'm gonna just go through my my best highlights and we'll see how far we can make it Eeyore Bach told us from the age to the age he was educated on the Bach saga by his mother and his sister. They would sit for two hours every day listening to his mother and aunt. An emphasis, he was not allowed to say a single word. He could only listen. Now, I went to public education and even I was allowed to ask questions and they barely made a dent in my head. Um, maybe that's, maybe this is the difference. Maybe public education really should just be, you send your to school and they set themselves off two hours a day and they just listen to people and they don't say anything, but it feels like they would develop a really strange, uh, social, 
aspect of their life. Like they might act a little bit weird when you bring them to Publix and like, you know, get a sandwich. Which those public sandwiches are excellent, by the way. I'm going to say that. They're really great. So this is where the information comes. And this is also why we, I believe, we can never receive it. We will never, ever, no person on the entire planet is ever going to be able to truly be an authority in the box saga because you're not going to be able to listen to someone that has the information for 20 years. Specifically, again, the age of that number is not arbitrary there's this implication that you're not just sitting on the couch, <laughs> right? You're not like, you're not dressed up in your school clothes, uh, like patiently sitting at a desk and taking notes. Like you are probably disrobed, bent over for two hours, I'm going to assume, and listening as you're consuming, I guess. I, again, that it's not fully explained the exact technique, but they mention it more than a few times. Well, and then it also says, go ahead. Eeyore Bach also said that he couldn't reveal the entire saga either. I mean, this has been stated very, it's stated various times throughout the this book that he's not able to say the full thing. So, and also on, before On you, top of the fact that it would take him 20 years, even if he were able to tell you the whole thing, which he isn't, it would take him 20 years to do that. And I want to read- And the, you'd have to start when you were- I want to read the description of the box saga and introduction. The box saga is nothing less than the story of mankind. This is the, the description of this book. An alternative creation myth closely guarded and passed down through the generations by the Bach family, Bach family, finally revealed to the world by Finnish mystic Eeyore Bach, the last of his line and the appointed keeper of this ancient oral tradition. It's oral, right? The saga is encyclopedic in detail and sheds new light on the heathen culture of Finland its history and perhaps the origins of humanity itself. And I want to also preface, there's this part on his website where he talks about it not even being, you're not supposed to take this literal. So anyways, I'll find it. But Carl Borden was born 1916 to a wealthy aristocrat family without money with the task of restoring their empire. What? A wealthy aristocratic Family without money. That doesn't make any sense. Right. Unless they were a wealth of knowledge. Right here. At the first opportunity, he fled without further ambitions to fulfill this fate. On his particular trip around the world, he stumbled upon the Bach saga, the family story of Eeyore Bach that goes back to the first humans on earth and thus tells the story of mankind. This story was too good not to write down. Because you weren't supposed to write it down. That was part of the of the the box saga fight club. You're not supposed to talk about the and you're not supposed to write it down. They're not supposed to talk about the and you're not supposed to write it down. So well drinking. It's not always you're again, you're talking I'm from like a sorry. poor person perspective. Sorry. You gotta think like a captain. You gotta think like a king. Uh they're just drinking the they're not the Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry, and, dude. And Carl Borgen has more than just this one book on the box saga. He's got the end of paradise. He's got the Squatters Gang, which I already, I love the title. I'm already in. <laughs> He's got Temporarily Insane. And then this is the D-Box Saga. This is basically the German version of what I believe we're reading a, a dumbed-down American summary of. But it doesn't matter because you could read all the books in the world. And yeah. unless that book takes you 20 years to read and you're setting yourself off from the age of as you're reading it, you're never going to get the full... The full story of the box. Pull saga. my screen up but real quick. This is the last close. thing I want to show that really stood out to me. So the box saga should not be seen as the sole property of its followers and academics. All right, you hear that? Should not be seen as the sole property of its followers and academics. For all the people that like to really stroke the box saga off. In its essence, it makes for an interesting read to anyone open to exploring completely new thoughts and insights into our shared humanity and this is the kicker right here it might even be true well what, what's the next headline the human origin story passed down through the millennia again in retrospect the way this story is passed down orally um is very literal if this is not just telling your kids about it like you're pat you're passing down the knowledge from your ancestors through and through like this nice. is not verbal. 
All right, so let's get yeah, into it, to Thomas. Get to give. Then we'll we'll saga that, and this is the the quote that the book starts out on is it breaks down that definition of sa and ga means to give and to get, and it's it's literally talking about Jews and so he's not allowed to say, and then here's the other part that I didn't even highlight, but if for some reason a day was skipped, the listening time would be doubled on the following day. So if there was ever like a sick day, I guess if you're like, I'm not feeling good. I don't know if it was something I ate, but I've got a tummy ache. Uh, they're like, okay, you can take today off, but tomorrow we're going twice as hard uh, to make up for it, I guess. So it's it's kind of like having a snow day or a hurricane day here. Uh, like you don't just get that day for free. You're going to have to come back to school and twice as hard. Yeah. So no, no cutting corners is- around th- these parts, dude. Or this was passed for over the course of 20 years. And then it, it claims here, Rhea and Rachel in turn heard it from their father and their father's sister who got it from their parents and so on. So so quite literally, based on the box saga, for 50 million years up until the year 1050 when the Catholics came and ruined everything, this is what was happening. That every single time a child was born, you'd wait until the age... Then from the age t- uh, to... You were explaining this whole entire backstory. So I guess the the the, the core ages, right? So you're not doing anything except for learning this box saga. And you know and then they were probably mad that the Catholics took over and instead of making the their own they made the the Catholic priests and that's probably what really angered them because then the the their own type of thing ended. So well, it's an inversion because originally it was yeah. supposed to be the priests that were the off, and I'm sure that still happens today. But 100%. It's, it's not, but it's no longer for truth. Now, now those are the black the, magicians, the shot magicians. I like, I like to call them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got a note here. It just says disagree. So let me just see what this. One of the implications <laughs> of the sound system being the matrix of the box saga is that it is and always be primarily a story transferred orally an analogy to this can be found in music which is best passed on from ear to ear instead of through written notes that's the part that i disagree with this analogy that they give i don't agree with that whatsoever that music being passed from ear to ear so that means that if you hear a song then it's better for you to try and replay that song for me to communicate it than it would be if you understood how to write musical notation and write it all down. I feel like if you could write musical notation and and give that to me and let me replay it and I'm competent, that would be a far better way of transferring music, no. not just like, hey, it sounded like this. That sounds like a nightmare. That's not pro box saga, bro. Who are you with? Thomas, whose side are you on? <laughs> all right. The white well, magicians. A, I was raised Catholic, so. Oh, they, well, there you go. You've exposed yourself, bro. There you go, dude. There you go. Go ahead. <laughs> Truth or pig, you. Okay. All right, and and just so we're not literally reading this entire book start to end, um, which would probably take twenty years, uh, we're gonna cherry pick a little bit. Feel free to criticize. I'm happy to go as deep into this topic as many times as we want to. 20 years, let's do it. Let's become the new Eeyore box. And it says, somewhere in our story, the Earth's axis shifted. Now, I just want to say, yeah, I've got a quote here. Somewhere. At no other point do we find out when or where uh, this somewhere is. It's just somewhere this happens. The location of the North Pole changed to where it is now. At the beginning of our story, the exact North Pole is located on top of the planet on a small island in front of what is now called Helsinki. The name of the island is Odin's O, the land of Odin, situated in the province of Odinma. And again, this means Odin's mother or the mother of Odin or the place where Odin comes from. Uh, this is the core story. And it, again, it starts like they, they're happy to tell you 50 million years. Exactly the year 1050 is when this all uh, came to an end. 1984 was the exact year that Eeyore Bach was allowed to communicate the story all these exact numbers and figures, but then somewhere in our story, the Earth's axis shifted. Who found that? Where's the math? Where's the writing? Again, it was all orally communicated. No, no. Trust and me. And was bro. this was did Eor Bach hear this part when he was, or did he hear this part when he was twenty? Because that makes a difference to me. If you tell me 
that you're reciting information that you learned when you were and you haven't heard since then versus something you heard when you were 20. I would give more credit to the thing that you heard when you were 20 than the thing you heard you were tw when you were. But none of that's detailed here. Don't worry about it, dude. Just this is the true history. All right, just continue. So, so here's the start. This is the beginning of the story. It starts at the North Pole. Then we've got the time when this all happens is called Paradise or Paradiset, Paradiset. And apparently this word makes all the sense. Paradise time is everything you would expect from such an idyllic concept that suggests a perfect world when a balmy subtropical climate all year round and food in abundance. Now, I just want to point out this like perfect world with the perfect tropical climate. Like I don't like living in Florida. It's muggy and it's humid and it's hot and there's like wasps and stuff. Um, and there's climates that I enjoy more, but my parents didn't like those climates. They didn't like living up North. They didn't like it when it got cold and snowed. I did. We're like completely opposite here, but this, Vox saga, just like it assumes that poor people don't bang in the dark, this assumes that everyone is okay with leaving the thermostat at, at 78 and not touching it. You know damn well there's people out there that want the thermostat at like 68, right? And not mm -hmm. 78. Mm -hmm. So the Vox saga just assumes that it, nobody touched the thermostat, just like nobody banged in the dark. Yeah, and the, the, where the sun never rises nor sets. Therefore, it is one big paradise. Paradise. Paradise nuts. That's box. So we're, right we're, we're skipping ahead a little bit, but we're still just talking about the start. And it says first and foremost about heathendom. So before there was any form of religion on the planet, people were guided by mythological beliefs. All right, I'm on board. In a similar vein, haha, all heathen mythology, the box saga hinges on the power of nature. And that first power is that of hell. And it forms around the center of Odin Ma. So I do want to say this whole inversion, like being anti-Christian and anti-Catholic. Um, again, they are worshiping hell. They're saying hell is actually heaven. Hell is the good place. This is where all the riches are. Um, so there's there's a there's an interesting thread here about Satanism or Luciferianism, or at least the inversion of Christianity in being like all in on box saga because mm -hmm. you're quite literally worshiping hell in a way, no? Yeah, and th that's the thing, Thomas. You're not you're not wise enough or smart enough to be able to extract this knowledge from the saga. So it's all right if you don't understand it. You know, just don't even worry about it, bro. That you're just too immature to to really understand and, and, and grasp these concepts. Well, the good the good news though is that you don't just like Eeyore Bach. Uh, it it, it cites in this book that his education kind of suffered because he didn't go to like an actual school at any point. He was literally sitting at home himself off, listening to his mom and his aunt, you know, yell at him for two hours a day. And because of that, he might have not been the, like the smartest academic person. He, he might probably had more street smarts than anything else. But it also means that anybody on this planet can be as smart as Eeyore Bach if you just drink for 20 years. And there's not like a special school that you have to go to like there's i mean you have to you have to get some oral transmission but that's pretty much it you don't have to do finals or phds or none of that yeah i think that maybe you know using knowledge to get your i mean sure that'll work in yoga studios if you go in and i have stories of people who listen to the podcast who have gotten laid through the i don't know if they're gonna get laid through the box saga knowledge but or maybe they will by some dudes who knows but this is all really pointing towards, in my opinion, bro. So we're talking about satanic worship and all this craziness. And I don't know if you've ever heard of, I'm sure you have, Frankism, right? And the, the, the you have uh, Zabatai Zevi and the idea of redemption through sin, right? So you can do all the most up that you could possibly think of. And it doesn't matter because you're still going to, if you do bad enough stuff you're still gonna get and this is why i think a lot of the stuff like this is a sort of psyop trying to push that sort of line of thinking you know what i'm saying like hey it doesn't matter if you <laughs> if you fuck your sister or your mom or your aunt or you all your bros it's all right bro because this is the true oral history this is the true where right? we worship hell around here and hell doesn't mean what you've always been taught it means it means clear and light 
and loving and and all that stuff. So again, who, who do you stand with, bro? Stop, stop being so and worship uh, hell with us and drink a bunch of and and you mentioned too that people get uh, I guess laid off of some of this knowledge. Imagine imagine the pickup line for box saga where you just you you spot the at the bar or the guy whoever you're at and you just walk up and you're like hey i got eleven thousand dudes inside of me right now <laughs> you ready you ready to get out of here <laughs> One hundred and ten thousand, i think is what it was what you needed to get so no i think it's eleven thousand. no one guy was ten thousand. Uh, bro let's we'll pull it up here as, as you go we're gonna, we're gonna get into the math that's the ironically enough out of all the numbers and the math that's not presented in this book, this book does go into meticulous detail about exactly how many dudes are drinking the, the of how many other dudes uh, and how far they travel to do it. It those numbers are actually in here. So okay, Hell got its name from Clippa Hall, a bedrock formation with a slope and a steep incline. This kind of bedrock formation is found in many places around the world. And it's situated next to the exact North Pole. So they're they're going really hard into, again, this is not metaphorical. It's not like, oh, you can sort of relate it. They're saying that these the, the word came from this actual observable rock formation and that everything spawns from this and that this is all self-referential proof that the Bach saga is accurate historically and that the second power is Bach, which stands for the Bach family imagine that the guy behind the box saga is like i'm like my family is the original essence of the that universe that wasn't even his real name was it he changed his name didn't he well his aunt's name was like box boxinger or box boxer and they've got boxing day we're gonna get into that but but if his last name's not Bach, it ruins his entire story so we have to assume that his are you saying that you're you're okay with the ape and the goat thing, but now you're going to question if this guy changed his name? <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to be a, a skeptic, bro. I'm just I'm just questioning what we've been taught, dude. I don't know. Stay, keep it in your pants. We've got plenty. We got plenty to splurge that on. Yeah, I'll keep it in the you know in the so in the metaphor. Your Bach, this this Bach, this energy, this family. But let's say let's every time we hear Bach, just think about that face of Eeyore smiling at you, whose function it is to procreate and keep the wheel of life spinning represents the sun on earth. Eeyore Bach is the holy grail. Like he is the modern day Jesus, the like the final lineage of these gods, the original Adam and Eve, right? This is this is the premise that Bach represents that initial Christ energy in to put it in context of Christianity, which I know Bach saga is, is anti-Christ. And it says, still today at Christmas time in Scandinavia, many houses have Bach made of twisted straws decorations. So this all goes in the saying Can that we reach out to a Scandinavian and and ask them if first all Finnish people, right, were each other's until the crusades 10 foot can we can we hear well, here's the conundrum is that the only person that can claim to be an expert is going to tell you that they've been themselves off uh for the last 20 years in front of their mom and their aunt so if that's the only source of truth that we can find to speak on this i feel like there it's going to be biased okay you may i'm in i'm in if we can find uh that would be a great pro and con find one dude that's been himself for 20 years and find one that hasn't yeah and have them debate and see we can see equivocally who's got more knowledge you'll see would what that change of... your it, let's say that the guy that's like i've never been to school in my life i've just been doing this for 20 years if he won <laughs> in a trivia game against a guy that's got a harvard degree would that change everything you know it would bro it'd be it'd be it'd prove the box i go right it'd be like this dude you know i've gotten all my knowledge from my own versus i don't have to hit the books I don't have to hit the box. Maybe that's where books box come from. I don't know. Who knows? We can make the connection there somehow. All right. Now here's where I'm gonna I'm gonna vindicate myself a little bit. For anyone that that thought we were like joking around about the the letter I and the sound of E and it being the little here it is. This is the third power of the universe is E. The equivalent phonetic pronunciation in English is E. E is the prick of the particular member of the Bach family whose task it was to procreate. Now, that word prick uh, is not used uh, flippantly. Like, this is the actual term for the person that's been 
designated as the conveyor to pass on this box saga. So I would postulate right now and right here that anyone out there that is pushing the box saga is a prick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has a prick in the middle and two box horns on either side. Mm. Interesting. And the symbol of the E and I'm saying E because that's how you pronounce it, but it's the lower case I, is a trident. In root language, the trisol, the tree sun, or the three sun, it has a prick in the middle and two buck horns on either side, just like you said. And again, this is the worship of the pitchfork, the worship of the two horns, right? The two horns with a little in the middle. That's Baphomet. The, this, you could make a very strong argument that box saga might have been like it might have been bach Fomet, and it was just a mistranslation oh dude that's gonna that's we have too many rabbit holes to go down here we need to keep focused on just the one hole yeah, yeah let's, let's stay to trying to come up with a the next program. power is odin odin is everything the symbol of a snake the snake biting its own tail this is the ouroboros the, the symbol of cycle life yeah this this is where the concept of yourself off comes from is the Ouroboros it is a it is a literal practice this whole time in the occult book club and all the things I've been reading all the Manly Palmer Hall I've all always wrong. assumed you think you think Manly P. Was, Hall was his own dude I don't I don't think so oh oh man I I hate that you asked that question and made me think about it because he did find all these sugar mamas and there was that one case where it was the it was the mom and her daughter that were yeah. bankrolling him what if and that I was, was Rhea and Rhea bro and what if that was what, well what are they what are they getting out of it to fund Manly Palmer Hall but imagine that they show up and he's like you guys can watch me study for the next two hours study. and now all of a sudden yeah dude like he had the first OnlyFans account going on for a while yeah bro until his death I mean Again, dude, it's too much to handle right now, bro. I think he might have gotten a little too fat in later life to keep um, <laughs> reciting the box saga in its traditional fashion. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the fifth power is Ra. Ra is associated with a transportation of energy in all kinds of real and symbolic ways, symbolized by the moon reflecting the rays of the sun. Um, and that Ra or Ray symbol are the rose and the horseshoe respectively now the the reason that i even mentioned this one was that does this mean that the bach family also invented the horseshoe and i guess that they would have because they are the source of all humanity on the planet but again this this is a hard one for me to uh that the box basically invented everything ever every word every observation every mathematical formula everything has always been invented by the box so when they say that Ra's symbol is the horseshoe yeah the box invented horseshoes too not just the symbol of it like they literally invented the actual horseshoe yeah i'll take their word for the it six, dude. they're 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 reliable people the it leaves a bad taste in my mouth to just accept the information like that the sixth power is tour pronounced tour tour is the heart and the heart friend every man and women had a heart from women had a heart friends and this this part is really um easy to gloss over but it's very important another aspect of christianity which has destroyed the box saga is that when you grow up you didn't have necessarily like the wife the same way or like a husband the way that we look at it now where it's your partner for life and you share everything with them and they become your best friend in opposition to that you had an actual best friend that was the same as you and that you did this totally non homeschooling study sessions with that your your girlfriends would drink each other's with the thimbles that we'll get into and that all the dudes are doing this constantly like not like non-stop this is all you're doing there's no military there's no war there's nothing going on except for this particular process constantly so part of that is that you've got your best friends are the ones that you essentially do what we now do with our wives and husbands, right? That was reserved for your buddies, not for your, your partner because you weren't allowed to bang your partner. You weren't allowed to have your own kids. Thanks bro. What are friends for man? And also the and then, heart friends, right? The tip of the, of your 
because allegedly looks like a like a heart. So that what they say every through every man's stomach is the way to their heart or whatever. It was like no no. It's like they literally go no no. Our heart is our. All right, so and we'll be happy, and that's it. Like that that's essentially what they're trying to get at. Like the way through anyone's heart is through their 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 I don't know whatever. Well, if, if someone that's really into box socket tells you they wear their heart on their sleeve, they're probably being literal and they've got their <laughs> out and it's like touching their shirt. Free and Freya are the seventh and eighth powers. They were the first two human beings on the planet that came from the ape and the goat. And the symbol of free is the moon sickle and which symbolizes fertility. And the symbol of Freya is the harp or lyra. Again, all invented by the box or these people. Could This part is weird, right? That the symbol of Freya is the harp or the lyre. Does that mean that when the first two people were born, right, when the the goat and the ape made these two people, did they also make the harp? Or, like, how, how long after they came out of the goats did they invent the harp? None of that we get into. Um, the book doesn't get into it. You have to listen to Bach for 20 years to get to that. But it does, it does reiterate the parents were an apa, a male ape, and a Vardget, a nanny goat. The nanny goat was impregnated by the ape and produced twins, free a and free a At age freeze started to develop in his testicles in the same way every still experiences today. With this, his voice changed. He discovered... Well, I'm going to stop after I get to the end of this one because this is where we're going to start talking. He discovered that by putting his legs around his neck, he could drink his own... Free was the first being to have all animals have embla. When he drank in this yoga position, the entered his stomach from where the essence of the, the raw went into his blood and reached his heart, which circulated it to every cell in his body. When it reached his brain, he had a revelation. He understood that within his nature was an alphabet or the rhyme of the all father. Now, this is very specific, right? He drinks his when the reaches his brain, he immediately understands the alphabet. This this discounts every story about how the the language of humanity has like a slowly evolved from pictograms into like phonetic. All of that goes out the window, and it's literally a year old drank his own and invented the alphabet. That it that's A B C. The alpha, alpha nasbet, the alpha, alpha nasbet. That's the alpha, alpha nasbet. I don't. Do, does now? Um. On um, this is a real question too. If we can't pronounce this accurately, does this just mean that we're never gonna yeah. get the box pretty saga? Much, pretty much. I mean, we've okay. we've been do, doomed from the from the get go, bro. We're not. We've been shunned from entering the. the I will never of forgive my parents for keeping me in ignorance for my entire life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is our true history, bro. Right here, this is this is it, dude. This is. But, but what do you what do you think about somebody inventing? Let's let's say that it wasn't. Let's say they went out and they they ate a mushroom or something, right? And they came back and they were like, "Here's the alphabet. Here's every letter. Here's the noises they make. Here's how to pronounce them. Uh, here's here's all of it." on the first try and I got it all just from this one thing that I did and again in this case they hit their head or they ate a mushroom or whatever to me it doesn't matter what you did this alphabet doesn't just automatically show up as this self evident uh, truth of nature but in the box saga as I understand it the, the alphabet and language isn't a human invention they, they specifically cited that it is just a natural part of our world and that there's no way around it well, it would make sense, right? Again, I know we're supposed to take it literally, but the first mushroom stamp, uh, you could make a mushroom with the tip of your... So think about that. Again, I know we're supposed to take it literal and there's no symbolic interpretation of this, again, because this is the box saga. But think about that, consuming the first mushroom. So what if that's symbolic of your own type of thing, right? Like you're supposed to put your legs around your neck... I'm just thinking of like the one-legged man type of thing, but still you got both legs up and and you're dragging your ass across the ground. Like it's like, it's a weird picture, you know what I'm saying? Like, But think about that. The first mushroom 
because that's the whole stoned ape theory type of thing where they discovered psychedelics or something and then they had all these breakthroughs their brain grew it's like no again i don't i don't know dude i don't think it's inherent from the get-go to right to understand language right and on the topic of language in the box saga is the tower of babel just a huge is that like what what that is just a huge instead of a tower yeah. just, is that what that's indicative of but can we twist around in, bab in what the story indicative? of indicative yeah there you go dude can we can babble bay bal bay babel what we can all, all uh, Sack. Like, yeah. yeah yeah we can i'm sure we can twist it around there and stretch it out to to fit our narrative well the the box dog is all about contorting things so that they fit into places that yeah. they normally seem like they wouldn't but with enough practice and enough stretching you can make anything fit into any other thing that's maybe, that's essentially the whole knowledge here maybe that was also the training that that your own was about stretching out your to be able to uh, you know what I'm saying? Like all the noises and everything. I don't know. So the the next note here, it says, after he transferred the language to his sister. Now, again, I'm not being like intentionally icky here. How did he transfer the language to his sister? Because nobody sat down and explained it to him, right? He got this because he absorbed the that went to his brain and and just that hitting his brain was the information that he needed to understand. So when it says he transferred the language to his sister, I feel like it's not crude to imply that his his sister drank his... And yeah. that was how she learned how to do the alphabet. I just had a whole breakthrough just now. So if we're talking about the consumption of... Then, you know, stars are at the top of the hierarchy. And is that exactly. why when you do a shot you do it on their face like their head because that's where the knowledge is supposed to be right and that's that whole thing like am i re am i reaching am i stretching too far am i being icky by saying that dude no i mean i think that this means that any star that's actually drinking all of the is pro like we need to get them iq tests because that could be one way to prove the box saga as being accurate or not yeah. and and maybe maybe we've strayed so far, right? Because now so many ugly people have been banging for so many millions of years that all of it's gone. The knowledge is lost forever. Eeyore Bach was the last perfect specimen of a human being. He was the last good-looking, hot-body, you know, perfection. And now that Eeyore Bach's gone and nobody offered to s*** him off, like, I don't... I think that humanity is going to be on a forever decline. And the best that we have are stars that are drinking as much as possible they're going to be the only way that we can get back to whatever knowledge we lost with your bach as a paraplegic can you still get a boner is that possible uh, i think so i mean again we, we can find a scandinavian paraplegic and and knock all this out in one interview well i mean because again bach was a paraplegic after i think 1990 or something like that after he was stabbed in an attack and then he had two young indian caregivers that were taking care of him and then one went insane at the end of his life and essentially bog and stabbed him to death at the end of his life in 2000 and whoa, whoa, whoa. you're gonna you're gonna get us demonetized talking about murder here <laughs> go ahead and mark that down so we can beep that out I, we apologize to anyone listening we didn't mean for this to go off the rails so quickly sorry stabbed Too so deep. yeah so his sister's drinking his and that's how she understands the alphabet so no, we can't I, say that she was we're implying that that's how the the okay okay Crew. let's get it right dude i don't want to spread any fake news here I'm, i want i want to so directly... i would i would actually love if there was a box saga expert to go into this one particular topic how, i don't know if they'll come exactly... on after this i don't know if they'll come on the show after this particular episode like once they check us i mean out, like, i can reach out this is an open i'm reaching out with both both hands here and i want to just say that juan and i are offering to share our knowledge with anyone that's willing to receive it um and i hope you would do the same 
Although I we I think we're both trying to attain and get to the next level. I'm strictly so that, a giver, though, dude. I'm not trying to accept. Well, you any can other... leave it in the shield. Okay. We're gonna leave the we'll leave the jackpot out front, and you can decide if you want to make an offering or not. Yeah, you're right. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, but yeah, if anyone wants to come on and and really debate us, you know, hand to hand combat type of thing, and and shed some more light or on the box saga then just feel feel free to reach out and let us know don't you have, it just happens now you don't even have to to force it in anymore sorry dude it's just part of our language and our in our in our nature dude well and again like we're not inventing these words these words are coming naturally because he transfers it to his sister and they could speak with each other in this anatomical and natural language. Again, I, like what are they doing to speak with each other? Is At this point, after he drinks his for the first time, does he start speaking the language and now he's forming words and she inherently knows what all of those words mean as well? Even before they sat down and he was like, okay, every time I make this noise, e, you're going to think of my... Um, like they didn't even get that far. It was just like he sets himself off he transfers the knowledge to her. Now they're both talking in this language. Uh, yeah, they don't get into the details, so I'm just going to assume what happens here. Yeah, you're gonna have to trust us. And again, we're not ma we're not trying to be crude here. Even the the Garden of Eden biblical story, you can imply that there's in that too. That's another word right there. That there's in that because again, their children, their offspring, were doing it with each other. So no one's safe here from the. And we're just trying to really understand the the box saga a little bit more because it, it's i found it really interesting bro and here's that number again which m makes it feel like it's not arbitrary when free became 10 years of age he started having children with his sister now they don't again questions abound here i'm not going to get too much on a tangent but who told him that that was the year to do it how did he even know what to do like if you've been doing this to yourself or 20 years do you just look over at sis and you're like hey i got a different idea today we're gonna try something a little new well it makes and sense why why do it you does it does make a lot of sense no 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 do you think that adam was his own and that's why they took the rib out because god was like hey dude i'm tired of you doing that you know like when you have a dog who's licking his own right like a dog's like licking his own it's like you think god got tired of him doing that I was like you know what i'm just gonna make eve from and then he just took the the rib out and that way he was still able to bend over no it's the it's the opposite it's like marilyn manson took his rib out so that he could suck himself off easier i think that, that what proven, happened though? is that or is that a, a, con God, a conspiracy that's it's a conspiracy um i don't i from what i understand there's no medical procedure you could necessarily have that would make it any easier and in fact on that article of auto uh if yeah this is actually a really great time to bring this part up all right, hold on. Let me the take this auto palatio, time. right here. Uh, so first of all, Eeyore Bach was a master yogi. Oh wow, uh, yeah, I, I just popped up. Front I don't know bend. what I covered over. What but, is that front uh, bend? It's called front bend. What's uh, a front bend? Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, so length. length has yeah front. Let's see, front bend. What's a, a front bend is a contortion position where the body is curved towards. Yeah, forward but at you the can't do it backwards. Spine. You gotta do it. You gotta go into the into the. This, this is where the the masonic secrets come into play i can't say too much but oh. we know how to bend over backwards so we do we do back bends not give just the a little lick too huh while you're back there <laughs> we can't i i don't want i don't want to die over revealing these secrets to you oh, but look at this okay uh so it's big in yoga gymnastics contortion um and it says here American biologists reported that fewer than 1%. Crap, I always lose it when I try and zoom. Oh, here's, here you go. Here's the, the <laughs> circumference. Um, that what is this? Fewer than 1% of males can successfully orally contact their own. So that, that's the first group. This is going to happen in phases. So the very first group is that less than 1% of all men on the planet can even make contact between the lip and their. Like that, they can't even make contact for over ninety nine percent of people, right? Yeah. And now within yeah. the one percent of people, only two or three men in a thousand can perform a full auto. So that means that just because you can kiss the very tip doesn't mean 
like that. Sorry, excuse my language. That doesn't mean a whole lot <laughs> that you can kiss the tip of your own. In order to truly be auto, you have to fit the entire in your, and you have to make enough contact to do the suction and the friction, like to actually complete the entire thing. So this is a complete statistical anomaly. You are in quite literally the top 1% wow. if you can do this. That would make sense, right? The chosen race, the chosen one, the, the chosen ones, <laughs> the chosen. We're going uh, uh, to, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to get too much into your family history. I've because, actually done some, some digging. Think about it. Think about it, dude. Think about it. This would be a tangible I know that the, the box socket doesn't really emphasize on proof as much, but let's take it into, into consideration here when it's like, hey, can you prove that you're part of this lineage? Yeah, dude, dude give me a second. Yep. And then you just like start, it's like, oh, this is, the, okay, that, I've seen enough. Maybe keep going for a little bit longer. And then like he, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that, that would be indicative can of- Can you repeat that, that last part? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I'm sorry, Thomas. You're on to something, man. I I really do think that there's... Maybe that's why Crowley was into ways. yoga. Okay, this is another occulted truth about yoga. It's not about stretching your body. It's about your own... Okay? And and doing all that. So, I'm just... Dude, we're just doing the research. This is coming directly... This is coming directly from the box saga here. An introduction by Carl Borg. And so... Don't shoot Here's the next part. Don't shoot the messenger, if you will, with or anything. All right. The Asser, the people from Odin Ma who live near the axis of the planet, were divided into two castes. Here's here's where the criticism starts. All right. This is where the things start sounding a little bit strange. The first was the Pirue family, pronounced Piruet, I guess. Piruet consisting of a grandfather and grandmother. Their 12th son was the Saul Bakken Balder. Um, and somehow that translates into like all the off, uh, like literally. But here's the part too, is that it's the 12th son. Now this, if you already thought it sounded unlikely that it would take 22,000 people to make one person and that you could propagate a species that way, it sounds implausible. Not only that, but you would also have to only allow the 12th son in order to do this. Um, so if anything were to happen to that 12th son, you're kind of screwed. Like you're not allowed to participate in the next big offering, uh, the offer dash ring, which we'll get into. So this very important there are all these, and this number doesn't necessarily come out as like, here's why it's the 12th son and not the 11th son and all that. Maybe it's astrological. I'm not sure. That's an interesting part that the specifically the 12. And then here we go. According to the plan within the root language, a second cast known as the Rosette family was created. The head of this family was the uh, same of the Pirouette family. They had a harem of women called the Disa or Desor. The first Desor were the daughters who came after the first daughters of Freya and Freya. Can we, can we relate the Rosetta Stone to that? In some Absolutely. Sense? Because the Rosetta Stone is the source for where we found all language. There you go. Right? So it was and, actually about, do you think that they were coming on it too? Well, and, and Freya, her symbol was the horseshoe and the rose. So this family of roses, like it, this is a reference, again, to these original two people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the Rosetta so, Stone is uh, the version of the decree, da, 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 the top middle, scripts, the decree has only minor. So you said it was what? It was the... The orc. Rosetta Stone is the key to language. That's the, the way that we were able to actually start deciphering different languages, especially historical. I think Napoleon found the rosetta stone Oof. i might be i might just be making that up yeah it's fine though we're talking about the box saga so okay so here so here we go let's assume that all this is going on the 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 ape bangs the goat they create brother and sister the brother bangs the sister they have 12 kids at least the 12th is the son that's going to go on and bang his sisters that are after the first sisters there's lots of math here I don't get all the formulas. We'll have to do that in a separate edition. But let's assume all that happens. And it says, after that happens, if they have a 
And if he possessed the physical attributes of a child maker, which is what we were just talking about, there you go. He was given the title of I'm gonna call it a rabbi. I don't know if that's <laughs> is that why the rabbi the, the little baby when they them. Oh, that's the offer um, ring, right? The ring that they cut off the tip of the. So circumcision is anti Bach, I'm guessing. I'm I'm, I'm connecting is it a lot because of because you're you're revealing the mushroom at that point. I don't know. Is Bach Saga pro or anti circumcision? Would that not help you get to? Is that like cheating? Like. <laughs> right like i couldn't make contact or i like, think does the f count like if you can fit the f in your and they're like oh you're a rabbi but then they cut the f off and now you can't make contact anymore they're like whoop you're no longer a rabbi you're an so then the rabbis go around trying to get another ring so they actually take it into their but they keep it in their and then when they get back home they spit it back out and they who sew it on to the top so they can make contact. Who was the guy in the Bible that collected all the? F was that was that David? No, right. You know what you know which story I'm talking about. Bible one. Collecting. That was Saint Juan, was it not? No, the, the, Saul. The saint of the foreskin. Saul's plan was to have David fall by the hands of the Philistines. David and his men went out and killed 200 Philistines. He brought their foreskins and presented the phone number. So. Then he this, Saul gave no. his daughter My Michael or Michael in marriage. Wow. Let's let's just assume that in the context of Bach Saga, him taking all those basically removes the physical attributes of anyone that was able to be a child maker. Anyone that was able to set themselves off, he took that ability away from them. Sort of like how what is it like Irish royalty? They would have to nipples in order to show that they were subservient to you you've never heard this before that they have found cadavers oh. in bogs with the nipples cut off and the the reason that they've i've heard about those that, that the, the reason they cut the nipples off is because when you were to become a king the way that people would show that they were worshiping you was they would suck on your nipples so that if someone cut your nipples off that means that you could never be a king since no one could ever truly worship you and that also extended to heaven so if you died and I cut your nipples off up in heaven. No one's allowed to suck your nipples anymore. So you can't even be a king in heaven. Wow, bro. What? And that might just be a bastardization of the box saga. The box like they might have yeah. just, they might have said, that's a little bit icky, guys. Let's oh, change it makes you this, think this word to say nipple. Why they went out and write St. Patrick's Day and what that's indicative of, right? Killing off all Beat the a bunch of snakes. The, and the snakes eat their own tail. So what if again the St. Patrick's Day and killing off of the Druids was actually killing off of the the people who could their own dicks? That that might actually be why uh, white people hate black people too, because that they have a better <laughs> chance what? of being able to sh like share ancestral knowledge, like the cultural knowledge that we we've lost. So we send our kids to private school, we send our kids to public school, they get tutors because they are no longer capable. They no longer have the physical attributes of being a child maker. So they can't be a rabbi. And I apologize if it's called rabbi or something, but I, I assume it's rabbi. We'll just call it rabbi. So or if you become a rabbi, he would become assigned a ringland outside of Odinma where he would hold court and be an all father. A ringland is one of the many territories outside Odinma and the same size of where the rabbi and brother and sister would hold court. Now, again, brother and sister holding court. I can't tell like when they're jumping in and out of like colloquialisms. Like what does brother and sister hold court mean? Is it literally mean they just show up into the, the courtyard and they, you know, like say things to people or are they doing something here? <sighs> Man, this is this if is. The turns out to be unsuitable meaning he can't suck his own he had three options he could become a nar which in the case he was sent to the ringland and as each court also had a nar the next possibilities was for the to become a tour or a tire and i'm saying tire because that's how the word like tire and uh like canon i think was isn't pronounced. that your, your guys your main guy hiram abiff of tire or something Maybe. my main yeah that's my main guy was he was he his own was Hiram a Biff? Uh, no, apparently his own not. Dick? Apparently, he wasn't able to. He was the third, this third class. That's why the Masons are so angry, then, dude. That's why you guys are so angry because you guys lost the ability to suck your own because <laughs> you guys pushed the Crusades because the Knights Templar were part of the Crusades and they were the ones that eliminated 
the the twenty two thousand number. So that's why that's why we have. It's all making sense, dude. This is all making sense. This is all co- this is all coming together. It's, it's all. <laughs> and again, I don't dis like none of this makes it seem like the information presented is less uh, accurate. The the part that makes the information seem less accurate is the lack of the proof. It has nothing to do with like, oh, you know, they made a really great point, but there's this this part about them their own. So now I'm not going to believe all the good points they were making. Like I can, I believe I can fully remove myself from all this icky stuff and then focus on just the facts. And then the facts standing by themselves still don't hold up very well. They need some kind of glue to bind it together. They need it. Yeah, no, and that's the dude. So 11 older brothers, sisters, they never left their home uh, while they were fulfilling their respective roles. Again, one big happy family, kind of like the Partridge family, but just uh, later night. And then it says, if during paradise times you happen to be a trill or... Um, and this, these are the lower castes. We're talking about these lower castes now. It said that the, the this fifth caste... Your father would be a Carl belonging to the Carlette cast. So shout out to all the Carls out there. You guys were too uggo um, to, to Borgen, drink bro. any cum. Don't f- disrespect Carl. He wrote the book. <laughs> That's true. Bitch. What if he's reading? He's like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> your, your grandfather would be Jarl belonging to the Jarlet cast. The father of this Jarl would be the rabbi of your ringland. The father of this rabbi is the lemming. The all father in hell who be their great great grandfather. So the family tree in itself is also a big Ouroboros in a way. Like it's it's all all the way down. That's not hidden here. Like it literally starts out with free bang bang Freya. Like that's how humanity started after the, the goat and the ape did their thing. Thus, all the people on the planet were related to each other and direct descendants. The line that was passed down through different castes is the river of eternal life flowing southwards from hell again all life flows out of hell hell is this big pit of that is just spreading out across the rest of the world no but no it's not i it, i made that up no it literally it lit the line was passed down as a river of eternal oh, life shit. flowing southwards from hell. Sorry, I, hell I, is a huge pit of and the in hell is spreading throughout the earth, but this is a good thing. I and made that a joke. Christians, I made that a uh, that was a joke I made at the beginning. I didn't know it was an actual That's the problem with Box Saga, my friend. I've Even myself. when I sorry, 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 sorry. I you've exposed yourself. Sorry. And sorry. I made a funny little video called the the Box Saga Wet Back. I guess I'll just play it at the end of this anyways, because uh yeah. What I so think we should Thomas, 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 Thomas. Well again, well well just continue, please. This is blowing my mind right now i'm, I'm just well, again, so... you, you you start out everyone starts out and you're like i'm gonna make a couple jokes ha 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 and you think you're being clever and you read the box saga and you're like damn they beat me to it bro they <laughs> beat me to every single joke these guys are the masters of beating you to it like you'll never be able to beat them the way they can beat themselves that, and that's so, why nobody can just... my how i can my own all right i'm gonna I'm show you guys <laughs> and then they just go down <laughs> <laughs> I've got we've got some some quality Dude, content coming. That, I oh my god, that's that's in scary movie too. When the guy's like, where, where he denies the chick is like, no, back up, and then he goes down and starts his own. <laughs> he was actually the purveyor of of knowledge. Again, uh, th- th- they sound like jokes, but they're going to start writing themselves here. God, for sperma. <laughs> I'm sorry. To the go. second cast, the Rosen. Here's an example of this root language, which we we probably won't get into as much as we should because it is so nebulous. But the root language, the word sperma breaks down. So the letter S represents the sun or the creative force. The word per represents the all father and ma, mother earth. So therefore, those three words combined basically mean the the creative force of the all father and mother earth sperma together is just like everything to all people so this again the, this is the crux of the box saga this is not the icky part that you're supposed to skip over 
Well, and this is the part that I like, though, Thomas, because if you think about this, I know, I, and again, I know it's supposed to be all taken literal, but when you start to really break down the root language and, and how it works, there's going to be a lot of things hidden within our own language that we can then start to decipher, but you're still supposed to take it lit literal. So, well, again, the Bach saga here, uh, Eeyore Bach had the convenience of thousands of years of of the entire human race's knowledge to then say retroactively, oh, well, this word sperma actually means this, and this letter stands for this, and this phrase stands for this. But when you've got every word ever created to then sit and then like kind of cherry pick all this, and there is a there's a part I quoted towards the very end of the book where they kind of address this, and he's asking Eeyore about well, what about this word? What about this word? And Eeyore Bach is essentially paraphrasing. He's like, this this culture has 800 words for this particular concept. Mm -hmm. So so at this point, Eeyore Bach gets to pick from 800 words and find the one that matches every letter and every syllable exactly that fits in the place for his theory. And he can keep doing that with every language. So when, when you've got 800 options on every multiple choice test, um, it almost feels like you can always get a right answer somehow. So, like so here's the, the sperma at the root of everything. Here we go. In a nutshell, all of the people inside Odin Ma, this original place of Odin, the Ringland, the axis of the planet are called Aser, and there's these two families. So here's this title Svan or the Swan, the healthiest and the most beautiful woman on the planet. Um, so, so this is the bay. This is like whoever your your ultimate you know dream is. That's this swan or spawn, and it says she will spend her life producing children. So she gets the title of sunbird swan, and her twelfth son is destined to become the all father. So first of all, you're the the hottest woman on the planet. Objectively, everyone has voted you into this position. You become this all mother. And you just spend your entire life producing children. They don't put an end on this. They don't say when this starts or when this ends. Um, but yeah, this again, this is paradise times. This is when life is perfect for everybody on the planet. No one has any complaints. There's no suffering. There's no pain. The temperature is perfect. No one touches the thermostat. So I'm just wondering, is there has there ever been a point when one of these swans was like, I'm not into this. Like, I don't really want that for myself. Well, think about it. Let's take it even a little bit step, a step further. Are there any women who are talking about the box saga at all? Or is it all dudes? I mean, I know, again, I know that a lot of the topics we talk about, it's just a bunch of dudes. So are there any, again, if you're a woman who talks about the box saga, reach out because I like to hear this from. We need a, we need a female Scandinavian quadriplegic that drinks her own to get onto this show with us you think blavatsky was drinking her own bro i don't think she was that flexible bro she was a little hefty yeah she was i think she stunk. was in the fifth cast she was a she was a trail for sure yeah dude, i wouldn't want i wouldn't want to drink from that fountain of youth if you get what i mean and then this 12th son is destined to become the all father i assume that this means in a practical and obvious sense like just the fact that he was a 12th son means everybody knows he's going to become the all father but what if your 12th son can't reach his tick? Like what if the lips like just barely get there and he can like kiss it, but he can't do the full thing. What happens to the kid there? Again, this is another thing that never gets explained, but these are where my mind goes as an engineer. I don't always hear the, what this is what you would call the happy path, right? The happy path in engineering is when everything goes exactly as described and you follow the manual and all the things fall into place, but very rarely does the happy path occur. More often than not, you've got all these weird little edge cases where like, oh, well, a screw fell off or the temperature was three degrees lower, so this part didn't expand the way it should. So here's one of those edge cases. What if you've got your 12th sun pops out and he's got, you know, like a curved dick or something. And now he can't reach it. Or he's got a cleft palate. So he can't get the chicken like it reaches. But the cleft palate prevents. There's all these things that could happen. And I guess the answer here is that that people were perfect to this point. So they were incapable of producing anyone with cleft palates. They were incapable of producing a with tiny little wiener that he couldn't put in his own. Well, this is par paradise times, right? This is paradise time. So it would make sense that it was all all perfect paradise. You know, that's that's the paradise and and again part of the box saga is these cataclysms which i'm sure we'll get into that have restarted 
humanity and civilization over and over again. Here's a really good one. This one might be a little bit contentious. Do we have dinosaurs in the box saga at all? Is that a thing? No, no uh, dinosaurs? Uh, uh, I don't remember highlighting it. If, if it's in here, we'll get to it because I guarantee you I would have highlighted it. I, yeah. don't, I don't think so. Probably not. So they're, so they're talking about this root language and the van language. It's a little bit hard to wrap your head around. They try and summarize it here. So the van language is Finnish, whereas the root language is Finnish-Swedish, meaning that like the van language was kind of like the one that was morphed to be a little bit more usable by the masses, whereas the root is like the true original tongue. And it says, these two languages seem so vastly different but they have the same underlying sound system. They're talking about phonetics here. So it says, as an illiterate person who is capable of understanding both languages could grasp this concept more easily. Let me restate this in how I read it. The way that this sounds like to me is you got to be dumb to get it. Like if you're educated and if you've spent any time learning about semantics and phonetics and the evolution of language and all that, you're going to be so weighed down by all that fancy book learning that you're not going to understand that if you were just an illiterate bumpkin that was just taught to suck his own for 20 years and you weren't allowed to go to school and you weren't allowed to ask questions and everything you've ever gotten came from your mom and her inbred aunt, then you're probably better suited to receive true information than some idiot that went and sent their kids off to school or tried to teach them out of books. Thomas, you also weren't your own from and we're past that time limit, so I don't think we're ever going to be able to grasp the knowledge of the box saga to begin with. So again, who knows? Maybe it's that what they were talking. Maybe that does something to you. But again, I'm not here. To, I, I, I haven't tested it out, nor do I know anybody who tested it out. And unfortunately, the person that was testing it out passed away in 2010. So we're not able to ask him either. And so it's just a, a very, very interesting case. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate it that is. the humanity is going to be in decline forever, apparently. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Okay, so so far we've been very straightforward. The things have sound a little bit weird, but they haven't gotten like woo-woo magical yet. Again, we've accepted that an ape bangs a goat and they produce kids. If you accept that part up until here, everything else has somewhat been straightforward. Like we haven't said that anything magical happens, right? Here's where magic kind of happens, in my opinion. In order to have a child, a woman needed to have a particular dream on the 13th of December. That's actually my, my girlfriend's birthday, which is kind of weird. In this dream, Lucia, who symbolizes the role of the swan, would appear in a white dress with a blue belt, wearing a crown of candles in her hair. Now, I'm wondering, does this mean that Freya the first woman that banged her her brother free, did she have a dream on the 13th of December wearing a crown of candles in her hair? And if so, who made her the blue belt? And who made her the dress? And who created the candles? And where did the wax from the candle? Anyways, that's not, not answered. It's a question I have in my mind. But it says the dream would indicate this particular woman wanted to become a woman, uh, a mother in her coming year. She would go to the elder woman of her caste and tell them about the dream. So you've got a dream and you immediately go to your grandma and you're like, I had this dream. <laughs> and it says she would go to the elder woman. If she didn't want a child, she could claim that she hadn't had the dream. So you would just lie, but you wouldn't do, you wouldn't lie in paradise times because everything's perfect and you don't touch the thermostat. So there's no reason to lie. And it says all ladies who pass through the light, don't you dare talk about masonry on Lucia day gathered on December 24th which was festival day. And in root, the meaning of festival breaks down as fest means feast. I or E is a and vow means to elect. Therefore, festival means the feast where the is chosen. The, the word festival is never going to be the same for me anymore, the same way that the word jackpot is never going to be the same anymore. Going to these, now going to a, a casino is going to be it's, if you get a jackpot, so you're never going to want to win. But uh, what's with the, with the light? Is there something about that? The, that you said Freemasonry revolves around that? Can you well, shed a little well, bit of said, light? Don't you dare mention Freemasonry is what I said. When it comes to that, bro, because I'm, I'm not grasping it. Can you just put it in the private chat? That way I can read it. <laughs> so it says, all ladies who have passed through the light, 
um, which I assume means they have this dream about the the perfect. But also, if if it's ruined the word festival for you, right? The Seinfeld Fest of Us for the rest of us. This also takes on an incredibly new meaning because in Seinfeld Fest of Us is supposed to be a celebration for people that don't get into the Christmas spirit, and they also maybe don't get into Kwanzaa or into Hanukkah. They don't care they about don't have the, dream. the traditional religions, right? Well, no, no, no. But this is saying, like, why should this chick, why should Lucia dream about the perfect and then go and find the perfect as part of this big show? Like, we should be able to do that for ourselves. We should have a fest of us for the rest of us. So now it's not just Lucia that gets to have. It's everybody that wants to participate in fest of us, which also feels like fest of us is closer to Christianity, right? Because that's, it's taking the power away from Lucia to select the best from 11,000 and just saying she gets one. I hope my, I hope the math is adding up here. Uh, yeah, I'm not even going to comment on that. Just go ahead, bro. But anyway, what was the light? Tell me about the light in Freemasonry. You guys do something with light? We'll, we'll do a private chat. We can't, I don't want to get my, my next light here. Can I Google it? Sure. Yeah. What do I Google? Freemasonry and the light. And then it says, so here's the woman. The troll woman would go to the festival to choose the man who would impregnate them. Oh, the carl men would stand in front on a pedestal hoping they would be chosen. So they just go up there, drop trowel. Fucking rock hard, bro. And it says, a statue of the Greek god Pan standing with an erect member playing his flute and looking his best comes to mind here. Now, I hate this last part. Come. This comes to mind here, crap. Like, either you're either you're citing this as an example of proof, or you're not. But when you just like, oh, I just kind of like flop this thing out on the table, and I'm just gonna leave it there. Oh, hey, there's something on the table. So like, like, tell me why it's on the table. Like, why like did that you flop Drake, this thing out? That Drake hog, bro. You think Drake can do? He's got a hog on him, bro. That dude is just like. Boom. He's he can do all. The I mean, all you show. have to do is is say, do you think that there's a woman that on December thirteenth had a dream about Drake? And if so, then there's a chance that yeah, Drake might be uh, this guy that the festival might be around because there's somebody that's looking to feast on his. Hold on, dude. Give me a second. Hold on. Hold on. Is there there's a Drake festival, bro? Well, is that is this not the like the duck, <laughs> not the the person? Because a dr a Drake is also a duck, is it not? A Drake is a dragon, a Drake, like a like a like a dragon. Oh my god, this is this is gonna get deeper than I was expecting. <laughs> yeah. So again, well, I mean the Ouroboros, right? It's essentially the dragon or the snake that's consuming itself. So. I don't know. Has Drake ever released an album with an Ouroboros on it? If so, I think he's exposed himself. What if, dude, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. What if the homunculus is indicative of the of your own, but yet it's just put in a way to where it's like, no, it's another person that we created. No, no, no. It's symbolic of the auto the whole entire time because we know that the alchemists were the first to ever, well, not according to the box saga, but if, if mainstream history says that the oldest sign, which is the Ouroboros, was introduced by the alchemist in Egypt. Like that was the first ever, the, the first people to ever introduce the Ouroboros. And I think you're on to something, man, because what did what did people traditionally keep their homunculi in? In little glass vessels with little like caps on the top, right? Little jars. Hermetically sealed. I'm, dude, I'm just saying, when you put your dick in your own, you're kind of, well, I mean, you got the nose, so you're not hermetically sealed. Your ass still open. I don't know. I don't know, dude. This is all really well, blowing my mind. You're not amazing, so you don't know all the tricks. There you go. Well, there you go, bro. <laughs> yeah, the light of the masons. I see what you're saying there, bro. You guys be laying in the, in the, in the coffins and everyone's just all over you. I see it. Yeah, I see. You. <laughs> that that's actually skull and bones. I'm not there yet. Okay, all right, so, bro. If a man was chosen, it doesn't automatically mean that you're qualified to have children. Just because the like the women go up to you on the pedestal. So on the 26th of December, and here's where th this is where it all starts to come to a head. 
after two days after the festival day, they have something called Boxing Day. Sing for the Bach, as in, you know, sing for the... The chosen men would have to pass certain physical tests by competing in various sports. This served as a guarantee that the chosen ones were physically fit enough to produce strong and healthy children. I actually agree and believe this part, and I think this is historically accurate for probably some cultures. Um, this is the story of Robin Hood, where the outsider has to come and they do the archery contest and whoever wins the archery contest gets the hand of the maiden. We have a very similar aspect today, right? In a boxing ring, when two boxers go at it, usually they've got the, um, the, the in the middle, right? And he holds up the thing, the same thing in, in racing. When after the, the race car driver wins, they get the picture with the hot and they spray uh, the champagne all over themselves, right? All of these different Whoa. things. This is equating to being selected by the hottest woman to now procreate with. You've won, so now you get to bang the chick. That, I mean, boxing is a very literal example of that. Why else is there this like uh, scantily clad woman walking around holding the the signs up and then like congratulating you when you win? There's no other reason for that to be there unless it's a remnant of this boxing day. Whoa, dude! All right, all right, all right. this is crazy so it's all been is since the beginning so two dudes boxing it out is it's in it's in a, it's in a square too so it's in a box as well right you're in a box and Correct. also think about the i learned about this on the latest mine unveiled video where again this could be relating to the tartaria movement where there was a boxer rebellion also known as the Boxer Uprising, the Boxer Insurrection, or the Yuhen Tuan Movement, was an anti-foreign, anti-imperialist, and anti-Christian uprising in North China between 1899 and 1901 towards the end of the Qing Dynasty by the Society of Righteous and Harmonious Fists. So the group was known as the Boxers in English because many of its members practiced Chinese martial arts, which at the time was referred to as Chinese boxing. It was defeated by the eight nation alliance of foreign powers. Well, and and you can't say insurrection without erection. So I think that's proof that the box saga is the source of this as well. The insurrection, stand erect, soldier. You know, we're gonna uh, get into the military here because it's uh, again you're you're making jokes that are gonna turn into not jokes very quickly. I love it the says, box saga, dude. So again. This is Double Dare, right? If you win Double Dare, you get to bang your sister. That's what this equates to. For example, if one of these uh, one of these sports featured a horizontal spar cut from a pine tree, which two men would have to straddle. Totally. Men had sacks of grain tied to their wrist and would try to box each other off the pole. This hilarious game was called sparring. I like that. The, he's like, this sounds silly. Like these two dudes... He doesn't use the word hilarious, I think, any other time in this entire book. So out of everything that comes up, uh, these two guys, this is the only funny part the, yeah, that I yeah. think you're allowed to laugh at. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't whip their down just like did sword fighting. Maybe that's what sparring actually meant, taking your dick out and you and your bro just like beating each other's together. I mean, again, you're, you're making a joke that's going to end up being not a joke pretty soon. <laughs> Every day of the month. And this, so this part is actually interesting to me, man. This concept, which I'm just, I'll paraphrase quickly and I'll read this. But Can, the, one, one thing, Thomas, because you mentioned December 26th earlier. Are, 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 do, did we have a calendar in December and all this stuff during Paradise Times? Like, are we just gonna like pass that and just act like that? Where, where, the, where the f did that come from? Like, I don't. You're gonna have to. Today, uh, my mom and my aunt are coming over. If you want, you can hang out in the study session. I'm good, You'll, bro. We learned that at like years. I think. I'm good, dude. I'm good. Okay. So Appreciate in that the case, invite, Justin, though, bro. Appreciate the invite. So, so the, the premise here I find is fascinating that the concept of the honeymoon essentially, and they, they talk literally this period called the honeymoon is that your wife, your new wife is supposed to suck your for a month straight and, and eat the every single time. And what this is doing, it's preparing her body and saying like, you're about to get the mother load. So here's a little taste. <laughs> here's a little tiny bit of just the tip. And after 30 days, her body's become accustomed to everything that you're about to have to offer. And through that process, it ensures that her body's able to receive this and then create 
this like perfect specimen that if you don't do that, her body might inherently reject it or it might just not know like which is the best little wiggly to pick out of all the selections. So giving her this honeymoon and here's where I'll read it because again, it sounds like I'm being flippant or, or simplifying here. Every day of the month, the man would offer his lady his rose, which she would take in her and drink from him. The, ro the rose is the purpose of this ritual was to acquaint her body with his and therefore make her more likely to fall pregnant. This period was known as the honeymoon or the hun, which means female, like hey hun, the e, which is again is the with a dot of on top. That is a direct quote from this book. And the moon, meaning or month. Therefore, the word hun e moon means a female with a and a dot of on top in her. The word honeymoon literally translates to your wife is supposed to drink your for a month. I got a couple of visuals that I want you to pull up here, Thomas. And this is no, again, don't bring up your honeymoon pictures. No, we're not bringing up the honeymoon pictures. But again, I think Scary Movie 2 was trying to really tell us something, dude. So you have the Scary Movie 2. And then now this scene makes a lot of sense to me. So again, we're going to have to censor this. But is this why this is why this is where reality is making sense to me? Because, right, the mother load. And then you have these memes, these mimetic magicians talking about. Can I get a Oh, yeah, like that. Is that where that comes from? Is that where that comes from? Jesus, man. I, let me just say this really quick because I'm not, I'm not going to mention, I'll mention one name, um, but there was an interview that a popular podcaster had about the box saga recently, and the guy interviewing it was Owen Benjamin, right? I think that was the, the show that they were talking about the box saga. Who was in Scary Movie? Was that not one of Owen Benjamin's main movies? Wait, Owen what? Ben Scary Movie and no, the Box no, Saga no, 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 no. seem they seem linked now because of these two examples you brought up. They were both Scary Movie examples, which seemed completely arbitrary, right? Was he in Scary Movie, yes or no? Thomas. Owen Benjamin. Maybe uh, maybe I'm making this up. I thought I could have sworn he was in Scary Movie. Bro. Okay, maybe okay, I might be making that up. Yeah, okay, cuz I'll have to say you just I was about to go, hop off this podcast right now. Cuz okay, I, I apologize for for implying that Owen Benjamin was in Scary Movie. He was in The House Bunny which starred the same that was in Scary Movie. So maybe okay. that's where the disconnect was. Kind of same thing. Whatever. We'll clump it in all all well, together. In bo in, in Bachland you know, three degrees and and the word degree has a little in it and the word three has the in it. So it, it makes sense. Well, again, I'm just making connections that ha hadn't come to me before. And I'm just it's blown my, my mind right now. Where 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 we're going. So, OK, so that that's the honeymoon. Um, You know, your your wife drinks your for a month straight so that she her body understands what's about to happen. A month later, 24th of June, Johannes dog, which means you have intercourse. So this is when it's like, okay, you're ready. You've been prepped. It's game time. And it says all the Carl men would make a bonfire. They would run around the fire with flaming torches, singing and dancing. Meanwhile, the lady who had the honey inside of her went into a meadow where she would pick kinds of wildflowers, proceed to make a bed of the flowers and lay down on her pilu or pillow where she would wait for her chosen man to literally a pillow is a isn't it isn't that the first pillow uh, well they call it a, a pillow but the word pillow has the little in it with the little dot on it so yeah, yeah if whatever. you ever if you ever if you have a my pillow so you actually sleeping is, is, is what you're trying to say so don't sleep in because you're being by sleeping on your pillow the okay. word sleep has a little inside of it so you're you're screwed on the child's naming day on the almanac the child's father returned to baptize the baby he gave the baby a spoonful of the same substance his child was created with again if you try to do this in catholic mass these days it's like a, a whole freaking big deal but you're like you idiots ruined this in the year 1050 before 1050 this was cool 
The box saga explains this custom was to ensure the newborn child would grow up to be wise. How smart are your kids, Juan? Don't answer that. Thus, a child was made with two shots of... The first was the life water that made the mother pregnant, and the second was the wisdom water. So if you're not if you're not splurging on your head when they're a baby, then you're depriving them of any sort of information that they're going to be going to get. So so not only if you're not teaching your kids at the age of to set themselves off for 20 years, if you didn't off on your face when they were just a baby, they're I don't even know if the that next 20 years of themselves off are ever going to come to fruition. I don't think that like it's just going to be a 20 year session of blue it's not a good look right now, Thomas. I'm gonna be honest with you right now, dude. It's not. This is not looking good, at all. Now, I just want to say, are you saying that just because you're trying to take away from all of the importance of the knowledge here? Are you just focusing on the icky part? And you know, and and actually, a better question. Up until this point, how would you explain the the premise of this story? But don't talk about the icky part. So the premise would be they valued enough to where... No, that's icky. Say it without talking about an ape banging a goat. No, 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 uh, none of that. You're not allowed to say any of it. What you can say is that there's a festival on the 24th, right? That you have a honeymoon. Like you can say the words, but you're not allowed to say what the words actually mean. And I think this is sort of like the box saga is a cult is man, because no, again, no, 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 sorry for my language. We'll, so... we'll, we'll bleep that out, That's all right, bro. That's but it's right. incredibly a cult because so many people talk about it and nobody mentions what they're talking about. Right. Like they say the words, like they'll say the word honeymoon. But if you ask someone, Hey, tell me what the word honeymoon means. If they say up oh, jackpot and you say, Hey, what does the word jackpot actually mean? Like, can we talk about, like, can we break down the etymology of the word jackpot and discuss it as adult human beings and really come to some kind of a conclusion? Don't be a pig, Thomas. All right. Well, we're going to, I am, I'm a, I'm a Masonic pig. This tradition was kept alive until the last Bach named Eeyore was baptized in this way by his father. So here you go. Eeyore told everyone which means his dad told him, right? What if your dad told you that? Hey, by the way, hey, Juan, you're old enough to know now. <laughs> I gave you some wisdom when you were born. I mean, because he's not going to remember that, I don't think. He wouldn't remember that happening. So this is something that your dad tells you in the ultimate power move. But it only happens and he once, the last right? One to do it. At the very beginning? It only happens At the very once. beginning. Yep. All right. You going to give your dad a pass for that one time, or what are you going to do, Thomas? My I've found through the box like my parents have failed me since I was okay. All right, all right. So we're we're, we're skipping around here. Go ahead, yeah. No, the turn, friends turn and around. relatives of Grandma find a single file behind her, and the two strongest individuals interlock their hands to make a golden chair. Since everyone comes in into and leaves this world, all present would be. So now oh, you've got a this human is, chair. This is weird, bro. Can you pull up where you're at on the uh, on the file so I can follow along? Because this is this is this part really got weird, and it reminded me of something else again. I'm seeing all these these nods to the box saga in Hollywood, and yep, on page thirty two. Th okay, almost thirty three. All right, thirty two. The friends, relatives, the Goom Gooman Ella formed a single file. Be all right, go ahead. So they form this golden chair. Uh, and then they they form this procession. It says, once the two strong men carried grandma reached the bottom of the scarp, they would turn towards the group of people standing in a semicircle. She held her beloved for one last time in her eyes. Next to this is a clock stone with a sundial. When the shadow of the sun indicated the right time, the two men with grandma sitting on their hands walked backwards up the slope while everybody watched. They set grandma on her feet and gave her a walking stick. At this point, it's very important she could stand with the stick. If not, it meant she had put the ceremony off for too long. She was no longer able to stand on the stick. However, this was rarely the case. The two men rejoined the group at the bottom. 
their grandma would lift her stick up towards Odin. Everyone looked into Odin and was blinded by its light. When everyone looked once more, she was gone. Grandma had let herself fall backwards. This meant the Atastupa, the family oak to fall. Now this, you said, do they bring up dinosaurs? Well, actually, there's an episode of Disney's Dinosaurs when this is the actual culture of the dinosaurs is that when grandma gets too old to contribute to the family anymore and now she's essentially going to hold them back or attract a predator or just become a hindrance then the the, the stepson Gotta would get rid bring of the bitch. mom up yeah. to a cliff and push her off the cliff and that was how they solved everything this is the exact same thing except that she would do it willingly she would get at the edge of the cliff and just fall off backwards have you seen midsummer of course like, i'm a mason they make us watch that oh well we, i did midsummer <laughs> Well, when they jump off the cliff and that whole thing, and then when, if they're not dead, what do they do? Well, they would. the two men would check if she died, and if not, give her a mercy blow with a strong club. Now, again, man, I, a little bit being a little bit cute, a little bit funny, but also being very serious, what is a mercy blow? What is a club? Are these literal? Are oh, these metaphorical? Oh, man. I really, I really grandma, truly dude. again these two strong guys they go and they find grandma she's twitching she she's like oh. not completely dead she's they're everybody is they they specifically said that this had to be done because you enter the world so you leave the world so these two strong guys the club find is their your grandma remember in the military they oh they God. mercy blow her to death with their I forgot about in the paradise club time in paradise time people's death was brought about by falling now I I love self-contradicting statements that are so short like that so again in paradise times you would die by falling off a cliff now Everyone has different definitions of words, but if you're if we're sitting down and having an open discussion about paradise, my paradise does not involve grandmas falling off cliffs. <laughs> um, it doesn't involve me falling off. It doesn't involve anybody falling off of cliffs. But in paradise times, you weren't allowed to question things. I assume, um, or it was. I don't know. This is this is one of the things that I I can't get over. This is one of those hills that I feel like I would die on. Uh, pun not intended that like what part of paradise <laughs> involves me dying I, I don't get it I don't get it yeah and then after the fact they put her in in, in, a, in an ox's ball which is interesting yep, this is the ox pung a made from the of an ox and this is where they put her ashes containing her soul into Um, so here this part right here the ashes containing her soul this part, I scratched my head a little bit because when Box Saga came up the first few times, before I even knew about any of this crap, right? It kept coming up as like, Box Saga is this non-woo-woo explanation for how the world works. Forget about the ape and the goat. We'll get to that math later. But if you accept that an ape and a goat banged and they created the human race, everything after that, there's no more woo-woo. There's no weird gods and miracles and like all this stuff this is the original religion, but now we're talking about the ashes containing the soul. And at this point, I thought the soul was the and, and as long as you can drink and then like that, that was how you convey knowledge and everything. And now all of a sudden, the dead ash has the soul in it. I It doesn't compute. It, it doesn't explain this. And it seems to me to be counterintuitive to a lot of um, people that bring this up now is like, oh, this gets rid of all the sky daddies, right? Like you don't have to worry about these stupid miracle sky daddies. What is this then? What is the ashes containing the soul? Where does the soul come from? Where does it go? This feels like sky daddy material. You're exposing yourself right now, dude. I, I think that you're just not smart enough to understand oh, this material. Dude. Move my camera up a little bit. I didn't mean to show that. Yeah, it's all right. And, and, and the, you're just exposing yourself cause you're not, you know, you're not fully grasping the, the, and, and all these stories, dude, are, <laughs> I can't, I can't reach it, bro i can't grasp it <laughs> they're they're indicative of you know the the i don't know what i was gonna say but 
Whatever, dude. It's just, no, so these stories are meant to put people off, and it's putting you off, so therefore you can't extract the knowledge, and, and you just expose yourself, dude. So let's go ahead and it's, put Grandma on a, in an ox's and carry her up to the, <laughs> to the family tree. So let, let's let's take a record here. I've um our family line, at least mine, is screwed because my dad didn't in my head. I didn't screw myself off at the age of, and we didn't put my I didn't push my grandma off a cliff. Have two dudes bang her to death and then put her ashes into the nuts of a ox. Again, we don't and know if they I banged her. This, I'm screwed. We don't know if they banged her. It's an ate ate kluba. Okay, so we don't know if they banged her or not. We're assuming that they did. Okay, sorry. They they mercy blew her to death with their clubs. And I'll, I'll okay. I'm gonna just retract that. I'm being silly. I don't think that they banged her. I think that they took in a physical club. Let's and they stay true. Hit her in the head and they killed her with let's it. stay true because again, you're supposed to take it literal. So let's stay true to the saga and say that they. Point. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just to show it some respect. The respect. The, the tree of paradise. Yggdrasil was the oldest tree in the world at the time. It was cut down in 1993 by the gardener of the churchyard where it stood. Trust me, bro. This particular gardener didn't like the many visitors the box saga attracted to the quiet garden in the churchyard of Snappertuna. He also removed the weather vane that the Bach family donated 200 years before from the roof of the church it was pointed out to him that the shape of a Bach or devil. So again, the hell, hell is a big pit of that flows out, that the devil, that they're anti-Christian. I think that the, the this isn't them like romanticizing the idea of the devil. I think what they're doing in this book is saying anytime someone's told you about hell or the devil, it's been to try and steer you away from this original way that people were living in paradise. Uh, where, you know, one out of 11,000 got to do anything and everyone else just, I guess, participated somehow. Yeah, I don't, um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words right now, bro. Words. On the feminine side, we have a... The stands for cli, meaning tickle, tor, meaning heart. The most sense of the part of the body is, or the sun inside. And this one, again, like the I-S, uh, the S means the sun, right? But in this case, the little lowercase I, I guess, no longer means... Um, or if it does, it's saying like the, the, the sun... I'm not sure. They don't, they don't always translate the letters exactly the same every time they break it down, right? Because before, when it had the letter I and the letter S, the S stand for sun, the I stood for... You put those together. But in this one, I-S is just the sun inside and the is gone uh, what happened to the is this this alpha ranzabet is this the the how you say it so e b c d e k f j h e inside i is everyone has i the dot represents the north star the symbol of knowledge E is still the international symbol of information, information, the formation of inner knowledge. J, J, G, K, L, log, M. Is this how, am I saying that right? I mean, I think that if you haven't gone through the 20 years of training, you're not going to be able to pronounce these All words right, correctly. True. You're right. All right. Let's go ahead and skip that then. You have, you have to like shape your mouth into like a certain way that takes 20 years to learn. So I actually, I looked this up just because this one claim of, of meaning tickle heart inside. So the conventional knowledge, the knowledge that the Catholics brought in 1050 and ruined this whole party, oh, they bucks. said that the Greeks had a word for, which translated to a little hill, but it also meant to rub, which indicates that the Greeks word for the was a pun like it was built in as a joke it literally translated into a little hill that you rub um and that was the <laughs> word for the which to me is way cooler than the box saga version which is like to tickle well, the, the greeks inside. stole it from the box saga so it doesn't matter they probably perverted it too so it's not this is our true history so so let's okay let's give this this topic the respect it deserves yes. with the root language lies the concept of how 
the heavenly bodies and different castes in society are interdependent, this relationship can be calculated mathematically. I got so freaking excited when it said that. I was like, all right, I'm going to turn the page and there's going to be like a trigonometry chart and it's going to show you the sine and the cosine and the tangents and it's going to have the Pythagorean theorem and here's uh, part of Euclid's work that lines up with this. That never came. I think that this they might have accidentally not printed that one page that calculated this mathematically, as it said. Um, so, yeah, and actually, even when I first read this, I made a note to myself. It said, something tells me this math won't be provided. And uh, I was <laughs> I was correct because I had myself off before I read this. So I already had the knowledge that was provided. Now... A metaphysical concept expressed mathematically in the original language of the human race is the underlying matrix of Bach saga. Can you explain what any of that actually means in English to me? Yeah, yeah. Because this sounds like word salad. The fact that this matrix and the root language are so intertwined gives the Bach saga its strength. So this is what really makes this whole story a, a really undeniable fact of our true history with a capital T. It ensures that the saga cannot be altered without causing widespread disharmony within it. The fact that the saga could survive so many generations of storytelling is owed to this intertwining characteristic. Now, they don't actually say what this matrix is other than that it's mathematical in nature and that it keeps the box saga together, but you're going to have to trust that that it's I was excited to see numbers at some point. The the numbers are coming, but none of it adds up to this particular... <laughs> There's no matrices and no matrix math that's ever brought up. It is Let's, only when in history the relation, the relation between meaning and sound was lost through the use of written language that our common heritage could be lost to humanity. The information presented here was preserved only within the Bach family, of course. And in 1984, only Eeyore Bach was left to share it with the world. And Lucky us. Yeah, lucky, lucky us. They left, uh, yeah. There you go. Listening to the saga will shed light on the reasons why the winner of a sporting event receives a cup and what Santa Claus represents. This is true. We're going to get into that. A word of caution. Although after hearing the box saga in its entirety and thereby the history of mankind, the world might seem to make more sense. It is still inevitably a bizarre story. I agree. Now, I, I agree. He's bringing this up because we haven't even gotten into the weird part yet. Like, this is literally, like, this is page 43. We did the intro. We did the very, the most basic premise of all of this. So if you haven't left yet and you're reading the book and you haven't gone yet, now he's saying, like, all right, guys, this is where it's going to get Hold weird. Hold on to your asses because it's about to go we're, down we're two and a half hours in and now it's gonna just start to get weird so yeah hold on here we go the first ragnarok so people are living in paradise they're each other off everything that we've described has been going on and this is paradise everything we've described up until this moment all the way down to the dudes pushing your grandma off the cliff has been paradise this is where everyone is in perfect harmony there's no conflicts there's no starving. There's no unintended death. There's no because the twelfth kid has to be born, and like nothing goes wrong ever is my understanding so far. Because again, paradise times. It's not like paradise with an asterisk. It's for some people. It's paradise. It's for everybody well, in a good way. Well, oh, well okay. Go ahead. After this initial period during which people populated the planet, nothing much changed. I love this part. Uh, what a history lesson. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 million years ago, uh, a, an ape a goat and the human race was created and then the brother, the sister, and they populated the earth. And then a bunch of stuff happened, but like nothing changed. Like, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> how long did it take for the ape to the goat and create the kids? And how long did it take for them to each other and create the human race? Well, that, that... And now you're just going to be like, and then a bunch of stuff happened. Now you're just being icky, bro. So I'm, I'm going to break okay. down the timeline for people, the box saga. So we have the beginning of time, which to them, it existed all time. It doesn't need any gods or anything like that. It doesn't need the, the great architect of the universe because it, it's already going to fall in line. You had the algae, which evolved into a fish, which evolved. Eventually the fish was like, hey, I'm tired of this 
water. I'm going to crawl out. He crawled out, grew legs, then turned into a monkey at one point to go. Then we came out. So we have the beginning of time. And then, you know, 50 million years, 50 million, 10,000 years, whatever. Then we have, boom, 984. Okay. Which we'll get into later. 984. And then 1984. And that's well, when 1050. You're... 10, they also mentioned 1050 well, 10 earlier 50. is when the Catholics came and ruined it for everybody. Yeah. Ruined everything for everybody. And then, uh, yeah, then 1050 and then 1984 and, and then 2010. And here we are in 2024 talking about this to be fair this sounds like a much easier history test than i remember in school all the the dates and years you had to remember imagine if they were just like here's the dates 50 million 1050 1984 have at it like i i feel like i could pass and you see where you know somebody pushing this and saying that it is true and it is right and it is the one where it's still literally the epitome of trust source trust me bro like just trust me I am linked to the lineage of the family that came up with this stuff. All right. Well, here, here's some non-flipping questions. Where did the, the goat come from? Where did the ape come from? Where did the alphabet come from? Like, where did all of these... Anyways, the box saga does not speak of actual events and individual people during this period. It merely describes a way of living, a system of procreation in a stable society living in a stable natural environment again in other words no specific dates times names or any proof are going to be offered whatsoever of any of these claims so from the year negative 50 million (laughs) right all the way up until the year what 1050 or 984 I love how they uh, use just, 1050 AD, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> Christ is <laughs> after, <death. laughs> after yeah. One really must have had the impression being at the center of it all, a true paradise. Again, I'm just trying to imagine, right? I'm 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 time traveling back in my mind 50 million years ago. I'm I see grandma up on the cliff. She's everyone's my brothers and sisters are all each other off my dad's coming on my my baby brother's head and i'm i'm looking around right i'm i'm in the impression at the center of all of this and i'm just thinking this is true paradise like this god this is what i was put here for (laughs) oh my god Uh, can you imagine bro like you know, being in high school or even middle school and picking the box saga to do your history project on how that would go. Like, all right, little Jimmy. So Thomas, uh, Mr. Gorns, how, what would you like to talk about today? I'm going to talk about our true history. Can you imagine? <laughs> walk- <Me>? I? <laughs> do you think that, that they have a group on for that museum that you or Bach worked at and was like, or, or even yellow pages or something and, and yellow pages being a again type of thing later on which we'll get into but then him just you know you just on the tour guy with him and he's like listen dude all this stuff that we're gonna, all these signs you're seeing this all dude, i'm gonna tell you the true history of our people here okay and then he just breaks down the box saga and i'm gonna go and read the the reviews for this company that he was at you know you know what too i don't have it at the top of my head uh, it's it's right at the, the tip, but I feel like there's a Eeyore Bach tour guide book, like manual, that should be published. Or like, I got a tour from Eeyore Bach and all I got was a something shirt. We'll, we'll figure it out. If we figure it out, maybe we'll link it in the comments below. But I feel like an Eeyore Bach tour pamphlet would be a really interesting, like perhaps something that he would have slipped your kid when you weren't looking and you were out on this tour for extra credit. Yeah, no, I agree. One one really must have had quite the impression being at the center of all of this. So that's the intro. Now we're going to get specific. This all came to an abrupt end when disaster struck 50 million, 10,034 years ago. Now we're being incredibly specific now, aren't we? We're getting down to the exact day Within the scope of 50 million years, they're getting down to the exact year within there on the 24th of July. Now, they don't provide the calculations or the calendar or any of the notes for this, but I'm just going to assume it's true. And this is calculated from the year 2018. So when this book was written, he did the math. You don't have to do the math. You don't have to check it. He did it for you. 
50 million, 10,034 years. Real guy's guy. This is called the first Ragnarok. The Earth and the galactic axis tilted in a matter of three months. Now, they don't provide when they started recording these observations and when they stopped to show you is that three months of 28 days? Was there a leap year? None of that. Just three months. Resulting in the Earth starting to revolve around another point about 23 degrees from the previous one in hell. Um, and I'm also wondering... Where was this math taught to Eeyore? What, how old is Eeyore, and how much has he consumed when his mom and his aunt say the phrase 23 degrees to him? Like, has he already, does he know what degrees are? Have they taught him trigonometry at this point? Or do you just understand trigonometry after, like, the first three gallons? Pretty much. Do you weigh your measurements? The first 33 like, gallons. How do you get graded? Are there levels? Are there grades? Like what are is it is it like first second third is it A through F is it measured in how much you consume It feels like it could be like oh you're in another eight gallons you'll understand algebra in another twenty gallons then we'll understand like quantum physics liters I liters know. I guess the first thir thirty three liters <laughs> yeah right. gallons. it wouldn't have been on the imperial system. maybe that's, that's why me. yeah those it's Catholic metric. you know that took over maybe that's why they changed <laughs> everything up the inch system the the <laughs> metrics all that. It's been perverted since the very beginning of time, bro. All right. Just so you won't know how much uh, to guzzle. That's actually what the entire imperial system, which actually makes sense because the king is the one that would have to drink the most. We're going to get to that. But I feel like if you were the king and someone's telling you, hey, by the way, congratulations on being king and everything. Here's the chair. Here's a scepter. Here's your court. Oh, one other thing. In case no one told you, when you're about you're going to have to travel around the country and drink just liters and liters, tens of thousands of liters of... And that king was like, I got to do something about this. Like, we're going to have to change the way this world works. So that's how the Catholic uh, Church came into being, I believe. Here we go. They they claim Africa uh, is somehow related to the Bach saga. Um I'm not going to get too much into the etymology of this one. I just thought it was interesting that if you look into the word Africa, it's, it, it's about. Yeah. And my, here we go. My favorite part of the box saga is that it doesn't talk about, right. If we're talking about truths here and the truth is that the world is flat, it just completely ignores that it talks about space and all that stuff. So the earth and the galactic axis turn into, I don't know. It's not a good look, guys. If we're talking about the truth here and we if we want the full unfiltered truth, I don't think if if it's, you know, the box saga, the true history, and then he's pushing a round earth and he was an actor. Isn't that kind of weird that he was an actor? Who was he acting for? He's acting for the CIA? Mossad? FBI? Who are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? Answer the answer the question, or, Thomas. Or actors just really good at themselves off and that's what makes them inherently smarter than the rest of us this degrees of bacon isn't that the whole thing is that what that stands? i think it's six degrees but, which, six, but sure i mean there's same all good go ahead in the beginning the union of an ape and a goat led to the creation of the human race again we're going to accept that part through a complex breeding system and i'm thinking right away more complex than Apes banging goats. Okay, it's so I guess it started really easy and then it immediately got complicated. Like first, ape bangs goat done, but after that, it's like okay, now we got to sit down and do some trigonometry together. It says that they became a stable race that had brown skin and black hair. Then it splits into ten kingdoms and develops into the various races we have today on our planet. This this one little I wouldn't even call this a paragraph. These uh like two and a half sentences worth. This was like the entire system of biology and anthropology and human evolution and everything boiled into two and a half sentences. And this is my understanding of how succinct a lot of the information in Bach Saga is conveyed. Like, unless you sat down with Eeyore Bach for mm -hmm. years and heard him tell you the Bach Saga from his own or his, his own third eye. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be crude. Yeah, I saw that. You. I don't mean to be ignorant. this book this book that we're talking about right now is the only true source and documentaries derived from this book and others that are based on the same teachings so 
here it is the entire human race the whole story 50 million years eight bangs go humans create a complex system they create black people and then from there white people get created over time right <laughs> again this is the benefit of having retrospect this is someone in 1984 learning about a uh, man out of africa theory and being like i did that i'm gonna go ahead and say that my family knew about that 50 million years ago and if you don't believe me pull up a chair and i'll explain it to you over the next 20 years come on an empty stomach well, and that's the thing. So from my understanding, there was 13 original races. The subtropical was 10. And then the the other one was three, which was the white races. So again, that that's the way I understood it and the way I've heard it explained before. And th when three means tree and tree has a dick in it. So yeah, and, tr and tree is Trey and Trey was, was one of the fourth cast. So it's just all the way down every time. I don't, I don't know. Explain that. Thomas, you I can't because you're a coward. Yeah, yeah, I've exposed myself. The Roman Empire evolved. So, yeah, we're going to jump all, all the way to the Roman Empire from Razul with a mythological all father figure, Jupiter. The Pope still today resides at St. Saint, Saint Peter's Basilica, albeit missing the initial symbol, Jew, and representing a very different mythology. No, I think the Jews so, did well in history. I think that they they were, you know, there was a couple, couple of stumblings that they had all throughout history. You know, we have the things that happened since the very beginning. Then we had that one guy during World War II, Hitler, and all that stuff, you know, the Holocaust. And it's interesting, right? It's been about since the very beginning. St. Peter's Basilica, the rock in which the church was built on, or perhaps the... And Peter is another word for, right? And isn't was prick also another word for for too? So no, a prick is someone that um that pushes the box saga. That's a prick. Okay, okay. So a prick. So is it just the 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 etymology again? I'm getting real box saga. I'm a bockist here. So again, I'm gonna be a prick from here on out because I think that there is some nuggets of truth or in the box saga. There's a lot of semantics. It, it sometimes it's a mouthful. It says here that cow, sheep, and pigs evolved from goats, and the chicken evolved from the. Now, here's another part where I was like, "Oh, great! I'm going to turn the page, and they're going to explain to us how all this happened and why." Um, I guess conventional knowledge explains that the ancestors of pigs appeared first out of any of these animals that they just mentioned um, between cows sheep and pigs right the pigs actually evolved first dating to 40 million years ago and then all those other ones the the cows sheep and goats they originated 20 million years ago so either someone's wrong i guess we're just going to assume the box saga is right because they got their information from eating their own whereas all this other information in books comes from fancy people reading their fancy books i think you're being a little bit biased thomas and i think may maybe we we entered this a little bit too you know on edge because we've been attacked so much for talking about against the truth but uh, you missed an important part meanwhile at the old north pole the north and south of the planet were covered with ice indeed not a very paradise like situation in alt land is all the land was frozen there was one exception, however. So again, while this is going on, north, south, Pangea, that never existed. That's all fake. But we can talk about the Big Bang, which, it, correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't that created by some either Catholic or Jesuit priests, the Big Bang Theory? No, they stole that from your Bach. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot. It's about stolen history. It's about the truth. Okay, sure. All right. Over time, animals adapted and evolved. Their fur and feathers turned white and their eyes blue. The aster people changed physically in a similar way. So they're basically saying that all animals came from one animal and over time they got bleached and that happened to people too. That The original man was black and that over time his skin became paler and his eyes became blue. And the source for this isn't necessary ever doesn't matter. or ever will be. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Don't... Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and try and pick apart all the things like, oh, you've made this grand claim that seems to refute conventional knowledge. Where's your proof? I'm not going to be that guy. Like, we don't do that here. Nobody likes those kind of people, dude. If, if you do that, you're you're grifting, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> exposed 
satanic pig truther yeah no and then here we go it says they grew oats barley wheat rye to feed themselves and their their animals they started to eat meat and fish um something unheard of during paradise time it was a big change from their carefree lifestyle having the plan ahead for the next season now this part of like they were eating other meat lifestyle yeah they were eating other meat. this doesn't it doesn't seem like yeah well yeah the beyond beef yeah but carefree lifestyle again i feel like this doesn't make sense to me this feels like uh like a like a fake concept that never existed it never if you are the 11th son right and then you see the 12th son and you're like he gets to do all this like what do i get oh i have to do that i feel like there's not a carefree aspect of this unless Again, it was only the Catholics in 1050 that ruined it for everybody. And then people started being jealous of each other and started comparing themselves and having these literal measuring contests. And before the Catholics did that in 1050, everyone was just happy to play their role, I guess. And no one complained. No one was hungry. No one ever had a preference for no one ever wanted seconds at the dinner table. Right. Because it was perfect communism. <laughs> I, I don't I can't explain it, so we're not going to. Fifty-four. The time inside was passed by playing board games or board games, because they were bored, right? There was nothing to do, so they were bored. So they created board games, and that proves that the box saga is real, such as chess, playing cards, and backgammon. So here again, what's backgammon? We've got the Bach family. Backgammon is the boring one that if you flip over the chess board, oh, that there's the other plays. board that has the triangles. <laughs> That's backgammon, the one that no one plays. You know how to play that? I do. I've played it before, yeah. They they play that in uh, Squid Games, actually. It's one of the oh, games really? that kills people. So this this was what I was thinking is, okay, so the Bach family created the game of chess. They created playing cards. Therefore, they also created tarot cards. They created backgammon. But they don't mention Monopoly or Sorry in here. They don't even mention Nintendo. And, and I'm going to assume the Bach family. They mm. Yeah, dude, the Bach family invented all games. What else? This period, which brought so many technical advances, lasted an enormous a length of time, and the Bach saga describes it in detail. Well, guess what? You know what doesn't describe it in detail? The book about the Bach saga. The book about the Bach saga doesn't <laughs> describe it in detail. The real Bach saga does, but I'm wondering too, does this mean that that Carl heard Eeyore Bach tell him all this detail, or did Eeyore Bach say, and... I also know all this other great detail, but didn't tell him the great detail. It's not clear here. It just says that the box sagas got all the detail, but it's not in the book. Yeah, they also invented alchemy somewhere in here. It talks about the metallurgy and blacksmithing and all that at one point. So, again, I guess they created alchemy right, let's, too. Let's keep getting weird. We're still, this is still mundane. The old Astra lived through the Ice Age. They were almost wiped out during a second Ragnarok when a continental glacier from Scandinavia moved south over their land. Only 30 people made a narrow escape in boats carrying plants and animals. This is supposed to be that prototypical, I guess, like Noah's Ark sort of story where people in boats get all of their plants and animals to save themselves and reprocreate. Um, only 30 people. Do we have a list of genders? Was it tw was it 31? Was it 29? How old were the people? What kind of boat did they go on? None of that is described in here. Those are important to me because if you use the word 30, if you don't just say a group of people, if you say 30, then that means it's not 50. It means it's not 10. So who kept that number? Anyways, trust me, bro. Another source. Here's a matter of clarity. In case, in case anyone's getting off track, gods and goddesses who came from the North Pole were people of flesh and blood. Their only claim to godliness was at the top of the hierarchic procreation system, which led to the creation of all new people on the planet. They were God, which in the root language only means they were good. So again, there is no woo-woo, there's no sky daddies, except for the soul that's in your grandma's uh, ox ball. That has some sort of weird sky daddy essence to it, but forget about the, the icky sky daddy stuff this is people of blood and flesh and no weird woo woo stuff 
Oh, check Except it out. The goat and the ape. Well, here, the sons of the gods were the demigods who had children with humans. In the box saga, they were called rabbi. Ra is, or rabbi, whatever. Ra is dynamic energy, as in the word ray. The rabbi were dynamic in the sense that they traveled all the way from hell to the ringlands. Bi, pronounced as B. So, Ra B, so kind of rabbi. We could, yeah, fuck it. We could, we could rabbi. They're rabbis. Pronounced as B is, of course, the strippy, stripy little insect that goes from flower to flower, poll pollinating them. So even bees, which is a Masonic uh, insect, right, with the beehives and all that, is, from my understanding, the bees are just all over the the flowers, dude. The bees are are faking. The bees are. The bees well, that's, that's the exoteric. You're not a Mason, so you don't know. Yeah, that's, that's what they want day. you to think. Yeah, yeah. So I get, I'm going to call it Rabbi now, because I guess it is B, as in like B I. The little bees have a little. Um, it makes sense. They're just so it's all the flowers. Oh, take this, baby. Asser, <laughs> <laughs> the the roses. Asser had the best system of transferring knowledge and information. It was the oldest system, and therefore the most embedded. In the human mind. Now again, is this literal? Is this metaphorical? Because when you said they had the best system of transferring knowledge, this is right. We're talking about drinking. We're not talking about sitting down in a classroom and writing things or doing tutorials and giving you a calculator and a protractor, right? Like the how did again this comes up? How did Free give Freya the alphabet? That's the crux of all of this. So, because if he was able to teach it to her verbally, that's different. We're, and we're talking about the Ten Kingdoms here to just like preface and give some information. At the end of the yes. Paris Paradiset, Paradiset, the Earth's axis shifted. It was not perpendicular to the sun anymore. And the climate changed from subtropical all year round to the ice age with seasons. The ice sheets spread from north to the Pyrenees, the Alps, and further along that latitude south of the ice glaciers, the so-called Ten Kingdoms were situated. And so the Twelve Kingdoms had an information system or storytelling structure used only internally. The mysterious, yeah, internally, all right, the mysterious Bach family who ruled and gave life from the beginning of time, but who no one had ever seen were best equipped for the streaming of information. So streaming. Next time you're streaming a video on YouTube or the Y, which is also indicative of the coming and all that it's stuff, just know that you're being, it's, that's all I'm going to tell you. Cause you're streaming information. Well, it's probably not. It's well, no, I mean, again, dude, like you're, we're, we're, you think you're being funny and making a joke, but this is true. The Y in YouTube is a, the you in YouTube, the way that you say it phonetically, because again, Bach is supposed to be heard phonetically. You, you ear to ear, right? That's how you're supposed to, to convey this information. So the you is the horseshoe, the horseshoe. And that's what, that's the cup. That's the shield. That's the receptacle that gets all the streaming information. So when Can you're I using, think, think about this, that, that, I want to be clear that I'm. it's funny, but it's not a joke funny, right? YouTube, the U. The U is the receptacle that, that gets the, right? That's where you collect the, is in the U in the horseshoe. A tube. What's a tube? The tube's the, what is, what out of the, and fills up the horseshoe. Yeah. It's a stream of information. Oh my YouTube. God. You, you are receiving the tube of the streaming information. Every time you log on the YouTube and you watch it, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, you are literally drinking our Like you are, the words coming out of my mouth, the vibration is literally turning into and you're guzzling it. How many people do you think so, dropped off after you saying that? Uh, just our, our two biggest fans because we weren't taking it seriously. <laughs> and then look, wisdom of the dna now i don't know if you know anything about lamarckian uh theory i, I think it was yeah, opposed to like, arwinian theory this this memory right so this this is where i think some of the box saga and the tartarian stuff kind of like coalesces where people really get a hard on for both of those because lamarckian theory of that this 
memory can be passed around. A, it means that you don't have to go to school. B, it means that it vindicates anyone that didn't pay attention in math class. But C, it also means that you can just drink a whole bunch of stuff and you don't have to pay attention. You don't have to do your homework because if wisdom is transferred through DNA, then as long as your dad on your head when you're a baby, you don't have to go to school. And every other instance of going to school, this is the Rockefeller system. This is academia. This is the Rockefeller medicine system. Shot black magicians. Dude, the magicians don't want you coming on your head. <laughs> and that's why a rabbi or a rabbi own, bro. And that's why this is, I don't know if it's good or bad anymore, dude. I mean, I don't, I don't know because if it's about the spread of information or maybe it's about the loss of information and maybe that's what disinformation is all about, about spreading wrong information. The I right is the coming. So disinformation information has, so this has shattered but my entire view of reality, dude. Well, no information is bad unless it comes from an uggo. Because if you're an uggo, you would have been in the lower caste system. So, I, it's it's hard. The the math it's somewhere in the box saga, and and unfortunately, Eeyore took all the math with him on his way out. It'll come but to I you feel eventually. That this is it. I mean, the original person was the best looking person. So everyone that wasn't the best looking person didn't have information worth it. But what they did have was that they could give the information to someone hotter than they were. So actually, the hot people would go around off all the, the ugly people, and they would somehow convert their ugly into good looking when they copulated with the other really good looking person. So it like this is the ultimate purification ritual. This is the ultimate alchemy that that whoever would drank the most back in the day was this perfect alchemist, the the philosopher's stone was the ability to drink 11,000 dudes and turn that into this perfect alchemical gold, which you would then turn into honey, literally honey that you would give to your wife and she would eat the of these 11,000 dudes that you set off for a month straight just so that you could create the perfect human being. And this makes sense. I don't know why people think that this is icky <laughs> or that it doesn't make sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, bro. I love it, dude. Let's I love keep the going. Saga. Uh, they spoke of inventions in the field of agricultural animal husbandry of all the technologies they developed. They informed the Ten Kings about new tools they had made, technology to boil metal out of stone, the art of mixing metals in such there a way go. they would no longer rust. Here's the alchemy, right? This is them inventing everything. Um, now, they don't give any sources necessarily of what inventions oh, or all that. how they... It, let's, let's not dwell on the stupid little minutia north africa was left without a breeding system uh, the people of that area turned to the Asser for help and the bach family sent them one of the sons born of the first 12 he set up a new procreation system in order for the southern mediterranean people to maintain a wheel of life from this gesture of the bach family what we now <laughs> know as egyptian culture originated this one, I just, I just want to sit here and and kind of let it like ferment. And you want just to switch around in my. Mouth I a think we bit. should. Let's just give a moment of silence, please. So, so all of hieroglyphics, all of Egyptian everything, and I guess by proxy Freemasonry, esotericism, the emerald tablets, um, the code of Hammurabi, like every single development that we give any sort of credit as originating through ancient Egyptian and Mesopotamian culture really was from the box sending this kid to Africa and like his pretty much yeah exactly so I don't know why the pantheon is there or any of that maybe it was after the fact that I got perverted I don't I got zero idea bro this feels a little offensive too because this this turns the whole like we was kings uh statement into like we this white dudes the we the we was or yeah time. yeah yeah all right if one is not he was the box saga he was he was boxing he was boxing this one, if one is knowledgeable of the box saga, let me just stop. Is that on why that, blacks that, are such that, great boxers? Like Mike Tyson, 
and all these other well, great again, black. They, they might be the only ones that can and then I could actually reach, man. I think that there's something to oh, that and why oh my that's what I was trying to get God, at before. That's dude. the animosity between the white people and black people. Right? And that's and that's why the educational Bruh. system seems to to do a disservice to certain groups versus other groups. Because because knowledge is not meant to come from the Rockefeller source. It's not meant to come from books. It's meant to come from your dad's. No, well, not not your dad. My dad. Well, who, whoever's dad. Box dad. <laughs> if 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 one is knowledgeable of the box saga, and there's only one way you can truly be knowledgeable, uh, and that's that you have to spend a lot of time with a prick, um, and you got to go on a honeymoon and. If one is able to identify the very different meanings and stories than those identified by Egyptologists over the last hundred years, one would have a better understanding of why the entrances of the pyramids face north, the function of the Ankh within the offering, and many other mysteries encoded in hieroglyphics. Now, they don't specify what those many other mysteries are or what the answers to those mysteries are. This is another one of those, like, Oh, uh, the the Pope wears a hat that kind of looks like a fish. What about that? You know what I mean? Like not getting into the specifics. It's just them flapping it on the table. But it does say the reason people's corpses were mummified and not burnt is that they were not sure anymore whether the centrifugal forces would send their soul through the leaves of the trees back to the ancient North Pole like in paradise times. So again... We just recently saw about how gods are, are flesh and blood and that everything is mundane and everything can be described in these very mundane terms from the people that came from the goat and the ape. But now they're talking about centrifugal force sending your soul out into beyond the sphere back home to hell where the big pit of, you know, is that I guess when you die to return back to paradise, your soul goes back into that pit. Of I'm not sure. I'm, I'm I'm grasping. Is that purgatory? I'm stretching. Is that what maybe purgatory? purgatory. Pur well, purgatory would be on your your way back to heaven, but in box saga, heaven is hell, right? Isn't that? I don't yeah. know. I, this is where I get a little bit lost in the sauce. Or yeah. Um. So okay. So so we've got Egyptology all BS. Any any sort of interpretation of Egypt has all been wrong. It was just about. Um, the box sent their kid to Africa and everyone worshiped them. Here we go. The big attraction from a new way of life was that all men and women could live like a king or queen. Th this right here is the big change when people were like, we don't got to screw this white bread that they sent us from freaking Finland. Like we can just bang each other and have our own kids and decide that we want to be our own kings and queens. And this is the moment that the box saga postulates that humankind be begins on this like infinite decline and we're never going to get back to it unless we return to this original system when it created one person for every 22,000 that math is in here but it says that they could be like their idols normal you know uggos people they admired and only knew from fairy tales every girl was now a swan and she dressed accordingly for that most special of days her wedding in a radiant white and beautiful as a princess and as mentioned Men and women had a tour or tour of the same gender who was their heart friend. This was your, your buddy, essentially, during the heathen times. But according to the new marriage system, the role of the tour tour was taken over by the husband or wife. The fact that from now on, one's heart friend, right? The heart is the tip of your, the tip of your friend was no longer the same gender. It was the beginning of endless misunderstandings within households. I think most people who live in a presumed monogamous relationship do not need any further clarification. And I see Carl and his homies like high five and like, you made a great point, bro. I don't get along with my wife. <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend fuck that bitch, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, hey, you want to go and study? Carl <laughs> said the, 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 what is it? The silent part out loud. Like he let the intrusive thoughts when you just hate that. <laughs> me and my homies are just gonna go and practice our abcs real quick yeah she didn't let me go back out to study with you guys for for two <laughs> hours yesterday so she's being a real 
right now, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. People now considered themselves civilized in quotes. Now, again, to put this into perspective, Carl is making fun of modern civilized people for being monogamous in relationships and not having heart friends. And that that people that do that consider themselves civilized, which means one expected to adhere to the thought patterns recorded in religious books instead of acting or thinking according to one's own instincts or natured principles. Now, this almost seems to imply, and I guess if if you believe in Lamarckian uh, theory, then that means that that information maybe this disproves what I'm what I'm going to try and say, but. It almost seems that if this were so inherent that if you had a kid, like a feral child, and you just sent them out into the woods, at the age they would just start themselves off and and learn the alphabet without any outside forces whatsoever. Now, I guess if his dad and his dad's dad and his dad's dad's dad, none of them were their own and drinking the of their grandpas, then I guess that Lamarckian thing broke down yeah. in the year 1050, thanks to the Catholics. Yeah, fuck and, uh, and the priests were the... And maybe that... Oh my God, man. Maybe that is how the religious thinking got out, right? The priests are like, you're not allowed to suck your dad's dick anymore. You're going to suck my dick instead. So now instead and of learning the from There's the replication of the science and the, the data exactly. and the religion, and that's how it spread. God, and that's... That's why it sticks around for so long, too, man. The dominant role in of men in society today has more to do with who makes children and whom with whom we share our household than which of the two genders has the biggest biceps. This just feels like a red pill uh, men's rights sort of thing. Read like that Carl's, again slowly. Carl's starting to, Carl, what he's the starting fuck to put are you saying? Info. No, I just want to say he had the time to put this little rant about his him not getting along with his wife and that like dudes can't compare biceps anymore. He put my this wife's in here and boyfriend has bigger biceps than me <laughs> and she doesn't let me hang out with the bros. All right, Alex Stein. But I mean, this is interesting that he had the time to write this part, but he didn't have the time to write about the 50 million years or the inventions or any of the other stuff where he's like, nobody got anyways. time for that. Thomas, the do we got time? We got we got to talk about this. Whether the situation was really better than before for the lower caste, or whether the entire human race benefited from having no hierarchical procreation structure, and the consequential enormous increase in population is not judged by the box saga. I don't know. I think it kind of is. I think they're kind of saying that that we used to be doing it the right way and that's when the Bach family was at the top of this and the second Uggo started banging each other in the dark that's when everything went to sh that does feel judgmental to me now I, I'm putting some of that in my own words only because this guy took 20 years of information and put it into a 200 page book and then threw crap in there like I don't have time but let's talk about my wife well that's the thing and this is reading more and more like a manifesto so let, let's throw out the Bach saga all that sh all that f garbage and let's just let's say that they never existed and this dude put this out as a manifesto how do you think it would hit if it was put out as some sort of manifesto for like a new communist era there's so uh socialist because this is real so you, know, you got the top of the top and then the you know it trickles down no pun intended to the bottom those are the people that just get the 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 garbage of society and then just like the not the good kind. I mean, if, if if we're allowed to be metaphorical for just a second, I know the box office. Oh wait, did I get that backwards? Literal. Doesn't doesn't the king get all the so like they're all jizzing and it's going uphill? I guess. Yeah, the, the yeah the king. Well, it's it's I think it's different, and this is where an expert in box saga can probably help us out. But yeah. I understand it is that the men follow one flow where it's the poor. It's basically the lower castes don't get all off into cups, and then the king at the top. He drinks all this, right? Oh, it's because he's but getting all the information. The, right. But the opposite happens with the female, I think. Um, so there, there's the, like this this full Ouroboros, even within society. That that actually is going to be described in detail. Ironically, one of the only things that they describe in absolute detail is exactly who drinks who's and how much of it they drink. Those are where the numbers come in. Now, this is the the interesting part for me because is this why the dragon hoards all the gold? Is the gold the 
when the dragon is the part of the oil. Come. The gold is absolutely the that's it's the honey. And that's the honey that goes inside the the honeymoon, right? Oh my god. Gold is gold is the honey, the honeymoon. You have to inject it's it's gonna get a little bit crazier as we go. Oh this is okay. This is the one joke that I'm the most proud of, which means it's not gonna be funny. No one else is gonna like it, but I'm just gonna point it out and explain it because the all the funniest jokes are explained. This heralded the beginning of an era in which the great spiritual men did not have any children. These ascetics who lived their lives were now characterized by abstinence from bodily and material pleasures for the purpose of searching for individual spiritual contact with the gods, turned their backs on society, and lived as hermits. Yeah, f these guys that don't let me s their all right? Those guys are f selfish for wanting well, to they make contact with the gods and not give us any of their s those f selfish f this is the joke that I'm so proud of, but this is the box saga Atlas Shrugged. The whole <laughs> premise of Atlas Shrugged is that all the rich people get together and they're like, you guys keep taxing us. We're going to take our money and our toys and our ingenuity and we're going to leave and you're going to just, you're going to turn into just absolute cavemen because you don't have us smart people. This is Atlas Shrugged box saga style, but instead of we're not going to share our money with you, they're not going to share their... Like, the, say bye. This is the last chance you had to this, and we're taking our and we're going home. And that was the last <laughs> chance you had. And now you're never going to be a genius. If anyone's going to my, it's going to be me because ain't nobody my better than me, bro. So they're talking about Krishna, which they also relate to as Jesus. I'm not going to get too much into that. This is a Christian show. When he returned to the Middle <laughs> East as a grown man, this is Krishna. He decided to share the knowledge he had acquired over the years, I assume through practical ways. Yeah. These course. teachings did not receive a very warm welcome by the ruling powers. Imagine this dude just showing up and he's just like, where's the king at? <laughs> These teachings did not receive a warm welcome, which the highest power was that of the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. So apparently Pontius Pilate actually kills Jesus because Jesus was like, yo, <laughs> He was put on a shame mm -hmm. pole so people could throw eggs at him and spit in his face. After three torturous days, his friends took him down from the shame pole when he returned to them to Hindistan. He went on to settle the providence of Kashmir, where he lived in a houseboat, the lake, blah, 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 blah. According to the Bach Saga, this story chronicles the history of Jesus Christ, who was a follower of Krishna. The new religion he proposed would make a big imprint on societies in Europe. So this is what you were there talking you about before. Mm -hmm. Jesus ruins it all. Yeah. He ruins it for everybody. Mm -hmm. He shows uggos how to bang each other in the dark. And before that, no one knew how to do that. All right. So imagine a conversation between two people. And this Jesus guy comes in. He's like, hey, listen, you guys don't got to each other's anymore. And come to the jackpot. You can actually just marry one person and procreate and make a family with that. person. Who the f does this guy think he is coming into our town? coming into our town telling us all that garbage so we put him up on a pole throw a few eggs at him for three days spin his spin in his face then we took him down and sent his ass back to hindustan so he can go and do that with his friends over there <laughs> and I, I do like that they just throw eggs at him and they spit on him and then they, they take him down after three days like yeah. nothing too serious yeah no, nothing uh, too like crazy God forbid no they one kill killed a guy. anyone back then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and we are going to get into why there weren't weapons for the longest time. Weapons were something else. For people in Europe, it meant they no longer lived according to the laws of nature, but had to follow the teachings of the Bible. And of course, to Christians, the box saga might be perceived as a rather bizarre story. Now, I'm sitting here and wondering, do you think there's anyone other than Christians that might read this and think it's bizarre? Or do you think it's, it is specifically Christians that think that box saga is weird specifically christians bro specifically of course okay christians yeah the scandinavians have a lot to offer they were equipped with a knowledge of all new technologies and skills that were developed during the ice age such as agricultural animal husbandry metalworking boat building construction and mathematics and i'm just wondering does this mean that nobody else on the planet had these skills unless they off a of scandinavian 
I don't, it doesn't answer. Like that's a no. rhetorical question because there's no answer provided. Here's just a random one: Bjorn Jarnside and his marauding so men. So talking about the, the Vikings. We're talking about yes, the Vikings. This is, a, here. this is one of the, the original Vikings. 1855, to, AD. To reach Africa, where he acquires what is referred to as blue men, sub-Saharan Africans used to row the boats. Oh yeah, so um, I, I was listening to a an interview with Chesner and the guy's like, yeah, and if you look at black people, they're actually their skin is not actually black; it's actually blue. It's a shade of yeah. blue, and I'm just like, all right, bro. <laughs> That's an interesting observation. My my question had nothing to do with the color of their skin. I immediately thought, do you think he blew the blue men? Possibly. Possibly, because they had the giant, they had the giant slongs. They got that Drake thing on them, you know. Does Drake count as? Or, I don't he's think he's blue. Half, he's half black. Yeah, he's light blue. Yeah, he's light blue. <laughs> <laughs> um. So they they form. Okay. So here's this one's going to be hard uh, to to point out, but Bjorn arrives in the Mediterranean with a large enemy fleet waiting for him. He forms a Gatlop, a spear-pointed formation in which ships and breaks the line of the enemy ships. A battle ensues. He survives, but loses half of his ship and his men. So this is a Norse legend. This isn't necessarily Bach saga. This is like all of this information so far. You can go on Wikipedia on Bjorn Yarnside and find all this. So I'm I'm a little bit curious as to why this got worked into the Bach saga. As opposed, it feels like it was a way to introduce like quote unquote real history in the midst of all this other stuff. It's like, Hey, by the way, Jesus was actually this guy that told Punch's pilot about this thing. Yada, yada, yada. Oh yeah. There's this guy Bjorn, yada, yada, yada. But it's kind of like intertwining, you know, something that someone just went and read in a history book and then they plop it in the middle of the box saga and then say, now, because of that, this means this. Trust me, bro. You got it, bro. You got it. There, that next, that next thing there. Uh, here we go. It says the Kremlin uh, means the line, meaning the family line determined by the. What's the? This is again a nod to the the Russians have got it all right. The Russians are probably out there, each other off still, and that's why they're so good at chess, right? <laughs> And it's funny that the the Tartaria stuff isn't that from like Russian propaganda or something like that. It is the the that's where a lot of the Tartarian uh, theories came from. Not just because it's it references Tartaria, meaning um, like ancient versions of Russia or older versions of Russia, but Russians love disinformation, so it so, kind of uh, it's it's self serving. All the teachings and moral imperatives were spread through the. Cyrillic script in the only book allowed to circulate the Holy Bible. The Christians then systematically started uprooting the heathen way of thinking and living, as was their custom everywhere. Hey, let's they let's ventured give this, the, this the seriousness it deserves. Those f Christians, how dare they so, stop me from my friends? Well, unless you move to Russia, and then if you move to Russia, okay. then it's acceptable again. All right. So here we go. The the here's the temple entrance, and it says, "Here's the storehouse where the beginning of mankind gifts were brought in appreciation to gods, the bringers of life, the Bach, the Bach family. You bring them all the gold, you put it into this big pit. It was shut. The entrances were hidden with a huge granite rock, and the interior of the castle was hidden in the offerland. The plan was to leave them for a thousand years. More information on these places can be found in this chapter. Well, it doesn't." I go to that <laughs> chapter. It doesn't yeah. really do that. Never gets in the 1980s it. and 90s. Several attempts were made by Ewer Bach and his friends. They basically tried to get access to this area. Again, this is not metaphorical. There's an actual location on the planet today that people are still talking about. As far as I'm aware, they've done all sorts of different tests to see if there's this huge collection of gold that's been amassed for 50 million years. And they can't seem to find traces of it, but they might just be, you know, hiding it from us because it's our true ancestry. No, well, the way he made it seem is like they were so close, but they didn't know how far in. Plus, it's flooded. Last I heard, the property was sold and the government doesn't acknowledge it, says it's a, a natural formation. 
of rock and they opened it up and there's like steps going down but it's too flooded so they can't get to it but i mean dude if anything if i was a bacchus and i was like i want people to believe this i would make it my life's journey to crowdfund i mean it's got what they said that era bach had millions so it says here his eccentric philosophical and mythological theories gain an outstandingly large international following well let's say you had at least what five hundred thousand people all right a hundred thousand people following you donate two dollars three dollars five dollars whatever it is and fund the excavation of this temple that's gonna prove you right the entire time bro it's gonna prove you your your theory is gonna prove it's gonna be the 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 smoking gun i'm sure that's a reference in the box and it'll pay for itself if, if you find this reservoir of gold and gems that have been amassed for millions of years, like that's, if you donated 20 bucks, you'll get like 20 million back out of it. So there's, it's really a win-win. Yeah. And, and I'm just thinking it was the gold hoard, just a bunch of old that they just stored there. And that was like the, and just jugs and that's the gold. Maybe, although they, it implies that it was actual gold and actual gems. So I'll, I'll tend to believe that aspect of it. Yeah. I just wonder I guess if I'm your Bach and I'm going to the, the government and I'm saying, hey, let me dig here. I've got, you know, all the like all these here. years. I haven't my own all these years just for you to tell me no. OK, well, and when they tell him no, he's like, sir, clearly your dad on your forehead <laughs> and he just walks out like with indignance. Right. Like, you know, oh, anyways, man. this line here. It's a known fact that prehistoric people were able to move heaven and earth. Um, they don't get into the details on that, on exactly who the prehistoric people were, um, how it's a known fact, what they mean by moving heaven. How do you move heaven? What is heaven? Are you talking about Helsinki again? Are we talking about, I don't know, that one of the examples of why it was hard to take this particular text all the way to heart. Um, I don't know if I was able to fully digest and consume all the information they had to offer because of little phrases like this. It's a known fact. Prehistoric people can move heaven and earth. What does that mean? I don't know. It's right there, dude. The it's in the language. Of global procreation. Yourself off one person per 22,000 people. This is what the box saga refers to as the pinnacle of global procreation. So again, any prick out there that's pushing the box saga on you is essentially saying that we have fallen from grace because there's not a guy out there that's drinking 11,000 dudes and then having sex with a woman that 10, drank 000. the 11,000 people. It's 10. 11. All right. We're going to we're going to get into the math. All right. You're going to feel like a real idiot when you don't know how much to drink. <laughs> um so th this is talking about they the outside world comes and they start destroying everything. They they knock down the castles. They take out the Rose family. So now no one's going to have the information. It says, during the icy winter, all was transported to the Baltic Sea. When the ice melted, everything sank to the bottom, never to be seen again. The Helvetian army burnt the, the family trees along with everything else that could be destroyed by fire. Miraculously, though, the Bach family was able to escape. So they're able to erase everything the Bach family had ever put together, sink it to the bottom of the sea. But the family themselves miraculously were able to escape. They've never feel they were never seen. Real. Remember, the Bach family had never been seen as well. So they were like this metaphysical, but they birthed everybody into existence. But they weren't they were never seen. So and right, like they were also flesh and blood. Yeah, when right there at the bottom, when they were finally done with their destruction, the wasteland resembled the hell spoken of in the Bible. So again, in ten fifty, they and there's a it coming for dick in Bible too. By the way, there's the eye there. So wow, now you're just being crude for the hell I'm of sorry, it. Sorry, dude. Sorry. The late eighteen eighties and nineties, your Bach didn't find anything. Um, yeah, that's that would have been the lead if if you know Oak a Island treasure theme. was found, we'd lead with that. It's a reoccurring theme in the Bach saga, not finding just so here here where it gets a little bit woo woo <laughs> in my opinion. There was continuous daylight in hell. So they had a a crystal ball, and they described this crystal ball as a as a Burgett crystal, I I assume which contains a prism found in the mountains. 
These mountain crystals were used since paradise times for astronomy and astrology. They don't explain how. They don't explain how the ancient peoples had a delineation between astronomy and astrology because modern day, it's almost assumed that astrology predated astronomy and it kind of evolved into that. Here, it's just like in paradise, they had both. It all worked. Don't worry about it. And they had a magical crystal ball that made, quote, optical observations. They don't describe what that means. Does that just mean I look at it? The light of the candle shone through a crystal ball and the prism and onto the dark room dome ceiling projected a celestial star map used for the astrologic, which means asser to think and logic. So they had these magical, I'm going to say magical, they don't call it that, but a ma like a crystal prism that if you shined a candlelight through it, it would project the universe onto the cave. How does that work? I want to know. Do they still exist? Can you show me one? Can I buy one on eBay it's on right the, now? It's in that cave, dude, and we haven't been able to get in. So as soon as we get in, you'll be my first call, dude. I appreciate, I appreciate that. <laughs> Olko, the Allfather, traveled around Odin Ma in a carriage pulled by eight box, uh, was now getting carried around in a sled pulled by eight reindeer. The Catholics destroyed hell and burnt the rest of Odin Ma to the ground, and the legend of Father Christmas was very hard to uproot. So the Christians came, they destroy everything, but they're like, man, we can't shake this story about these eight dudes running around to like drink. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to turn them into Santa Claus. And that's where Santa Claus came from. Remember when this started out, it was like, we're going to explain to you where Father Christmas came from. This is it. This is the explanation of Father Christmas. And it says, that's why he has a <laughs> with all the gifts. It's all just what <laughs> it's not, bro. Well, they, they are in boxes. This is Boxing Day. This is like you're gonna open the box. Can I get a? Oh, yeah. You think Santa Claus was screaming that throughout? Like, and well, he wasn't flying around. He was just traveling around in a carriage. <laughs> that was he was actually just orga. Ho ho ho! <laughs> <laughs> this should serve to explain why Father Christmas likes children and gives them oh, presents. The children God. of the world are his children, his grandchildren, great grandchildren, and great 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 grandchildren. The term Christmas refers to the root word crisis, which means large and rapid change like revolution. Christ, Krishna, Krishna are all examples of people at the center of a crisis. Um, now, this doesn't make sense to me, not for the obvious reason, but because there's plenty of families that hate their own family members. Are you telling me that in a family that has great, great grandchildren, so let's just, let's just assume that every one of those had 12 kids, right? So great great grandchildren is what four different um four different generations. So at the very least, we're talking 50 different people. So if you got 50 people in your family together in one room, everyone's copacetic, no one's fighting with each other, everyone loves each other, that doesn't check out at all. So I'm I'm not gonna focus on nitpicking. This a, is a month ago I had somebody comment and I was talking about Christmas and Santa Claus. They said if you don't know a box saga, you don't know about Santa. There you go. Santa is <laughs> They were right. Yeah, they were right. <laughs> I know whose dad's off on whose head in that conversation. There's wannabes who become emperor, and this is the actual word in this book about the box saga. He calls them wannabes. There are powerful wannabes who became emperors instead of kings because they did not descend from one of the three royal families and therefore were not accepted as kings. And they, they cite the Pope as one of those examples. Um, and here's how it actually worked. So the 12 older men and the 12 older women, which are quite literal translations, like the old men and the old women of the village, would watch ring dances and decided which of the young men and women would make children. The Swedish king and the Russian czar felt so confident that they allowed the Bach family to return to Odin Ma on a strict condition they would not speak about heathen times yes. for 10,000 years. Tell me, this is... Imagine Putin being like, you know what? We're going to let you go as long as you promise that you're not going to talk about this information for 10,000 years. I trust you, and I trust that you'll pass this information down to the next, you know, hundreds of generations so that 10,000 years will elapse and we'll hold this. It, this seems like the most 
irrational aspect of this. It gets wilder and wilder as we go. But yeah. So, so a, a Russian czar was like, I'll take your word on a $10,000. Listen, a 10, I, know you, year agreement. I know your people are the ones, but we took over. So f you guys we will let you exist, but you got to promise to not say anything. Okay. Not Pinky say promise. Anything. So then that's when they decided to split into two as a precautionary measure Lyman Cannon and Swan, Swan, whatever, adopted the name Bockstrom, which stream of Bach. The stream is, of course, the stream that flows through each generation, creating another and is symbolized by the sun. And I had a note here, the 12 older men and the 12 older women, right? They're watching a bunch of teens dance. So just imagine, this is like your, your great grandparents are like, I f all the in the village and they're like we should watch those two bang go get that go get sally and go get billy we're gonna watch them bang they they look like they would be the most entertaining bang that's that's literally what we were saying here right the 12 these 24 old people are watching the young people and deciding who's gonna bang who it's not creepy dude it makes sense it's it makes creepy. sense the deal and here here's where we got at 10 50 right in 2050 AD, 200 years after the destruction of Odin Ma. So this was something that started in 1050. It said they had to leave behind a golden box statue that was used in rituals since they moved there. The deal was not to speak about heathen rituals, not perform rituals with the golden box. So they decided it was safe to hide it. They hid the golden box with the regalia from Raisenborg at the bottom of a castle's well in a lead box. This is what they're looking for. This is the actual Holy Grail, right? This is the Ark of the Covenant I was about to in say, terms of box saga. Yeah, I was about to say, like, what if that's the secret that the Templars found and they were guarding, right? And you have the Holy Grail, which is a cup, which they're probably coming into as well and doing all Correct. that stuff. And maybe that's why the, the Templars were doing all that freaky deaky stuff, butt stuff with their friends. And I got another sink here too. I don't know if you've seen uh, Indiana Jones, um, but there's that scene where they open the Ark of the Covenant, right? And when he mm -hmm. opens the Ark of the Covenant and he looks at it, what happens? His face fills up with, starts dripping with, right? It, they make it look like his face is melting, but that's not what happens. He opens up the box. He opens up the golden box and he's bestowed with all of this information. And he can't handle it. It all just it covers him. This is the 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 father, right? Anointing him with the knowledge. So I feel like it, in Indiana Jones, the Nazi's face doesn't melt. I didn't mean to say uh, crap. We're gonna have to censor all that. Yeah, we're gonna have to censor that out. Sorry, dude. So is this what holy water signifies, bro? When they throw the holy Absolutely. water on the demons, like oh, it's just like the of Jesus. That, and that's actually why I used to drink the holy water when I would go into <laughs> church. You can't if it's holy. There's no way you could get sick from it. That's that was what I believed as I was a, a young kid. Oh man! All Passing right. on the box saga is a big enough burden. Just look. Just sit on that one for a second. Wait, say that again. I was reading something. Passing on the box saga is a big burden. Yeah. It takes twenty years of learning. It's a real big two load. hours of attentive listening every day from until to absorb the enormous amount of information that needs to be transferred from generation to generation. Now, I highlighted this because, again, what is absorbing information in this context? Am I supposed to read into this in that he's absorbing it through the lining of his stomach? Or is this absorbing it through the words coming into the ears, even though... This needs to be transferred orally, and the original person learned everything he needed to know by drinking. So where did the aunt and the mom come in here? I don't, I don't know where the line is between the metaphorical and the literal at this point. That's an interesting observation there, Thomas. To absorb the enormous amount of information. You think he was okay. drinking let's, let's, from, their, from his mom and aunt? I think so, but let's assume that it's not icky. Let's, let's not... Let's not play that game. Let's not muddy up the waters here anymore. That they're they're already they're already pretty cloudy. If you get what so I mean. If you're wondering when the Illuminati was going to come up, right now, 
because of the Bokstrom family's role servicing the diplomatic and trade traffic. Again, servicing is such a loaded word here. It's covered in symbolism. They, they serve the diplomatic and trade traffic between the Swedish and Russian courts. They were privy to information concerning global matters. This knowledge was used to secure good positions in both countries, which in turn reflected their business and bureaucratic status. So once again, the family managed to adapt and change their role in society. This is the Illuminati. This is the, the first international intelligence network that they're all keeping this information to themselves because they share this profane knowledge they're not allowed to tell anyone else about, but they're still doing it. They're still each other off. They're still coming on their heads but the russians aren't allowed to know that they're still doing this and because they're doing it they become the illuminati they've got insider information well, think insider about trading. It. think about the illuminati how many eyes that has in it i mean that would make a lot of sense it starts with the an eye seeing eye it, it stops with an eye so yeah dude and it, quite literally the end the illuminati starts with what letter exactly what so i'm it saying ends with what letter uh the, the illuminati day. starts and ends with a and I mean, the the more you you like try to make it sound funny, the more it makes sense, and the and the more it, it proves the box saga. And securing okay, that good so position, you think that was like doggy style missionary? Like, what kind of position do you think that they were securing? In the well, we're gonna get into that. It actually involved little stools that you would stand on. Oh, nice. Um, couples were not selected anymore for their health and beauty, but for reasons of material and heritable importance. Uh, the reason that I'm really want to emphasize this: this is the absolute culmination of that horrible Christ figure that ruins everything for everyone in the Catholic church. And they come in and they say, Hey, don't, uh, don't create a big circle of 11,000 people. And then like the hottest guy drinks the most. Don't do that anymore. Now we're just going to like pair people up based on, I don't know, your ability to raise a family or how well you're compatible with each other. That was the real, you know, downfall of humanity. Land of the Roses, better known as Russia. Here they're making this little reference that Russia was not named after Russ, but it was named after the word Rose because Rose is one of the original Bach family members, and Rose actually means so therefore Russia means the um, trust so, me, bro, is some of the source. Is this so if there's there, you know, you, you talked about the the great circle, you know, Sweden, Finland. Helsinki, they're all kind of sort of in the same area there. Is that why there's that huge circle, which is the large hard-on collider by CERN? And they're still kind of doing the circle with the Ouroboros type of thing, and they're trying to clash atoms together. I mean, that's kind of sort of like the same thing with the... It the, is. that That is the, the largest uh, self facility collider. on the planet, yeah. right? And it's the hardest and the fastest out of anything that we've come across. <laughs> The next see of the Knights Templar was Malta until Napoleon, who was not a supporter of the ancient feudal aristocratic system, kicked them out in 1801. Um, so I, I'm just mentioning these because it's interesting how the Box Saga, uh, they know the last 50 million years, but they really get into the, the details once their information seems to align with a breadth of information available to the outside world in 1984. Yeah, uh, just a coincidence. Napoleon that got was the same information. Napoleon wasn't down with the sickness. He wasn't down with the. He's like, nah, bro. I'm not anybody's. So here we go. I cannot tell you the whole box saga. It is too much to know, but I can give you the key understanding of it. This this is why we can't understand. It says, so let me read the whole paragraph here. It says, many but not all of the important facts can be found in history books. The reason to include them here is to show them from a box saga perspective. The innumerable amount of facts in our common history can be put in perspective. As Eeyore Bach told us, I cannot tell you the whole box saga. It's too much to know, but I can give you the key understanding to it. Dot, dot, dot. Now just open up your Yeah, I was thinking where in the context as told us on many an occasion. Open is it, wide. Is it Tuesday again. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna this have to wait. Run. It's gonna have to wait till next week, Thomas. All right, you're gonna have to just wait. Okay, here we go. 
we're getting into the offering this in my opinion this is the peak weird part of the box saga through uh almost four hours in we're there should we take a break and it's gonna a, be a bathroom break before we do this? no no there's no dude you think your Bach took a break when he was doing all this <laughs> go 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 it is difficult to digest the box saga i agree for some, it serves as enough reason to dismiss the whole saga as a hodgepodge of perverted ideas garbled together by a sick mind. This is the part where it's like, Juan, don't focus on the icky parts. Don't you're exposing yourself by trying to focus on these weird aspects. Ignore the weird part. Ignore <laughs> everything that we've read up until now and just focus on the parts of truth that have nothing to do with eating. I bet you can't even do that because your dad probably didn't even on your forehead. Listen, Thomas, I've done a lot of episodes and this is probably, well, probably doesn't top the one that we did on the other show, but I want to plug this PDF into chat GPT and I want chat GPT, right? Cause it can read your PDFs now. I want it to come up with a summary which it's not going to say any of the dirty stuff. And I want to see what it pumps out. No pun intended. I want to see what it pumps out from the summary of the box saga without getting into the nitty gritty, cummy details. Jizzy. G D you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see what it, cause how do you, how you, you bring up a great point. How do you explain this to somebody? And you can't just gaslight people to be like, no, you're just too stupid. You know, these are perverted ideas garbled together. No, no, no. How do you explain this to someone without being icky? If someone were to say, explain the box saga to me and I, and like, let's say you're, you're a neutral, a neutral party, right? And you see me interacting with someone else that never heard of the box saga and you know what the box saga is about. And I know what it's about. I can explain them. homunculus without getting into detail. I can be like <laughs> a human created through alchemy. I don't have to say the dude was the the the, the alchemist was off into a beaker and then just fermenting it and doing rituals and all that. I don't have to say that. Well, that's because you're withholding knowledge because the Catholic Church has brainwashed you into not having a off buddy, right? And you fell for it. You're you're married. You got a wife and kids, right? So you fell for it, hook, line, and sinker, my friend. I won't be. My own anytime soon. I'm gonna tell you that right now, Thomas. And you're not gonna gaslight me either. I know which either. one of us had their dad on their head, and it's not you, my friend. <laughs> You've exposed yourself. So let's let's not dismiss the whole box saga as a hodgepodge, okay? Let let's keep going. Because if you were to dismiss it, you'd stop reading now. You'd be like, "This is gross. This is anti-Christian nonsense. They're making stuff up. They're making grandiose claims and not backing it up. Don't do that." We're here to learn the real truth with a capital T and a little I. And no one mentions the offering. This is the this is the full crux. This is where this is how the box saga actually worked. You wonder, okay, fine. It takes twenty thousand people, twenty two thousand and some change, to create one person. How does that work? Where does the math come from? We're about to do the math. This is the best part of the entire book. There is so much that relates to the various symbols survive the time that lack meaning without a credible explanation. The box saga gives us an understanding of our world. The saga consists of an overflowing amount of detail that has an encyclopedic feel to it and never contradicts itself. I feel like that's incorrect. I feel like we might have uncovered a few contradictions, specifically that your grandma's ashes has a soul and Ignore that. Also. Ignore that okay. part, dude. Here we go. Strap in, guys. Four four hours in. We've we've just started. Yeah. Welcome to the box that, saga. Welcome to the box saga. If if you if you just joined us, <laughs> you didn't miss anything. We're just going to start now. The notion that the infantry in the army in Paradise Time was not a killing machine, but merely an organizational structure to help make children is unexpectedly beautiful and harmonious, as is the logic within the root language and everything else in the saga. The tsunami of findings of archaeology and DNA research over the past years seems to acknowledge the saga 
which in turn makes it even more interesting. They don't cite any of the specific findings, but I I believe them for this. Um, so is this unexpectedly beautiful and harmonious to you so far, or is this our our Catholic mind programming? Yeah, yeah, my Catholic, okay. my my Christian mind is taking over right now, bro. So, so as to not gloss over this, they are clearly saying that the infantry and armies and militaries, they were not put together for killing. They had nothing to do with aggression or, as they said much earlier, destructive force. That the armies and the infantries, they were not about destroying things or about creating things. The entire reason to have a military was to bang each other. And that might sound silly, but, but this read, is exactly what we're going to see. Read that right there. The true bizarreness of the box saga might not be the story itself. Right. The, but the fact that we have drifted so on, far read, away from let me read that again. understanding. You want to do it? The true bizarreness of the box saga might not be the story itself. But the fact that we have drifted so far away from an early understanding of nature, including our own nature that we actually conceive the box saga as a foreign entity. Like, I'm not weird. You're weird for not doing this. Yeah, don't gas. That's the, don't dude. That, you're bizarre, yeah, bro. You're weirdo here, bro. Don't make this. Don't make it any gear that it needs to be, Thomas. All right. You know, when it, it's not, it's for magic. All right. So don't be, don't get all weird and clammy and hermity on me, dude. All right. Don't be a hermit, bro. So here. Well, I mean, I'm going to like, you know, Atlas shrugged. It's just going to be, I'm going to go and, and myself off and, and as a recluse, and you're not going to get any of my knowledge, sir. Greedy bastard. Here's where the jokes come to life, right? It's interesting to note the English word is pronounced. Whenever someone says it's interesting to note, that means like, hey, I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't really have any context. I'm just going to hope someone bites at it. Here's another one in 2023 that that made that triggered me a little bit. You can tell by the sound of the voice whether they're they're talking about old boys start to experience a change in the sound of their voice due to the production of their from their testes. This is where that age comes in. So they basically claim that by the time a kid turns, when the voice changes, it's like, hey, <laughs> hey, I heard your voice crack the other day. Guess what? It's it's time to start homeschooling. And you're like, what does that mean? And that's when it all starts. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to censor this part because this could be construed as if you get what I'm saying. I'm going to probably have to censor. So do whatever you got to do, man. If you want to, if you want to shield the world from true knowledge, that's on you. Okay. I'm not going to do that. All right. Sure. I'm not going to sacrifice my YouTube channel for this garbage, but sure. So I'm not putting this on YouTube. I mean, if I, if this is on YouTube, it's just going to be one long beep. With like every once in a while, we'll like say like uh or the, and that's it. Okay, the boys at that age have natural flexibility, so they can place their knees behind their shoulders, lock their feet behind their neck, and relax. This enables the boys to look into their third eye, which is the little hole on top of their. One can say that a boy in this position now has eye to eye contact with himself. This encouraged his little to grow and enter his. Eventually, he drank from himself. Look me in the now, eye, Thomas. When you tell me that, all right? Article, what's that? You look me in the eye when you're when you're talking to me, all right? <laughs> look, <laughs> look me in the eye when I'm talking to you, son. <laughs> no, I wonder though, because that Wikipedia article said that only one in a one in a thousand could actually do this. Um, but I guess if you're of the selected lineage, then I guess everyone in the family can do this and it just happens. And that, I don't know, this, that part doesn't actually explain it. And there's a Dutch saying that goes, the morning hard on has gold in the mouth. So they're implying that this old Dutch saying is a direct reference to the box saga, meaning that your morning hard on has gold in the mouth and that like you need to, if you wake up with wood, you need to drink yourself in order to retain that knowledge. Otherwise, you're going to lose it forever. And now you're never going to know, you know, the answer to that math problem. Yeah, but when you have a morning wood, isn't that, that has nothing to do with, it's got, it's because you got to take a piss. And, uh, well, that's um, <laughs> clearly your dad never just on your head. 
a morning wood is about as useless as the box saga to do anything with other than you got to really got to take a piss. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the way you do it. <laughs> All right, dude. Surname is also dis- better described as name. So, okay, fine. Dad, the, like the, the patriarchal family name that gets passed down is actually representing the line. I actually am on board with this. This is the, the this is the most practical claim made in the last hundred pages, I think. So I'm on board. And then it says that heathens baptize themselves with wisdom vaten, which means wisdom water, which is your you drank your own cells, therefore enter the and into the stomach. In the stomach, the cells are broken down into a form that can enter one's bloodstream in which turn circulates to every cell in one's body. This blood also enters the brain, which the cells absorb the wisdom contained in the blood. Now, I looked and I didn't see any medical research that actually says that a person can eat their own and that somehow that will enter every other cell of your body. Um, That would be kind of... But it also says that the blood enters the brain and that the blood has the in it. So this is how language came. This is how the first person learned the first thing. But now you need to read a book to get it. I There's a disconnect there, but I'm not going to get too far into it. Yeah, no, the, the Bacchus did the science for us. It's fine, dude. No, don't worry about it. So you got you to gotta, you gotta be there. And then here's where you were wrong, my friend. Let me correct you. You kept bringing up on a previous... Uh, and you're going to feel like total idiot here. But you kept saying that we're drinking their with a straw. No, no, no. A offered to herself by drinking her own sap, which was produced when she clean her, meaning she tickled it. So when she tickles her, clean means to tickle. For this purpose, she had a thimble. The thimble, his name is a fingerboard. It was the smallest measurement of liquid otherwise known as a lick white, right? Because the word liquid kind of sounds like lick white and lick white means she was this white that came out of her. So that's where the word liquid to be comes so grotesque. from. The word liquid literally from. You have to be so gross about it, Thomas. You just educate us. And I'd be so, so, so nasty, bro. We have to censor that part, and dude. This is why, this is why I truly think that you're a coward, and that I think that you're probably out there pushing bad occult information. Is that you're afraid to talk about this information? You well, don't want to talk about olds themselves and drinking their own because you're like, oh, that's going to be construed as not easy to sell a Hyundai ad. I guarantee you, <laughs> YouTube's going to have plenty of advertisers signing up to be on this video. Yeah, hold on. I got to censor that. Can you repeat that specific last part? Old something. Fingering. Don't be gross, Juan. I got to censor that part out because that's. And do you think we should I'm probably take this? Can this, can this be misconstrued as copyright if, we've po- if we're like going down the whole book open like that? Uh, well, we're not going down the whole book. I'm, I'm clicking on very specific notes and we're going over them in context and transformative, okay. but also, um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna on this live stream. So there's no way that I'm <laughs> going to be able to give all the information. So we're going to leave a little bit on the table. Here we go. By offerings ones to others, it's precious essence was transferred to them when drinking from more people more of this essence or energy is collected. Energy is described as N, meaning knowledge, er, meaning raw, and G, meaning giving. Therefore, knowledge, ray, giving is collected. The more one collected, the wealthier they became. When collecting from those who in turn collected from others, one wealth is accumulated. This is simple. This is just compound interest. None of that essence was lost in the transferring process. It was the closest analogy to monetary wealth that existed in paradise time. Of course, it only had value if one could pass it on, similar to money. And money actually means moon e because it means mouth prick. Money means you're my dude. If I pay you for anything, I've just I've just jizzed in your 
and you've eaten it. That's Oof. this is like the dumb Catholic version that we've strayed from the natural source. The initial source was like, if I hire you to paint the side of my house, I go out there and I in your for it. Like I don't give you money. That would have almost been seen as disrespect. The only way that I could have truly respected you was by letting you take some of my knowledge. What does that say about and all that stuff? I mean, have they figured out the matrix of the box saga and they're able to hack the matrix by taking money, but also right, and... taking of the of the moon eye? I mean, and if I don't know if you're trying to be silly, but let's just let's assume that I you're want to being legitimately understand it, bro. That's all I'm trying to okay. do. Okay, well. Who who is the one that makes feel bad? Like what what is the religion out there that's like is bad and you should feel bad if you're you know your friends off and drinking everybody's and the only religion that seems to be against that are these Abrahamic religions. These religions Abrahamic, that come yeah. from this like monotheistic. Again, they're trying to hide the true value of knowledge and the true source of everything from you by making it feel icky and this is why i really do think that everyone should be a prick everyone should be a prick and don't talk about icky stuff embrace the icky only a real prick is going to embrace all this icky stuff but a prick is a good thing you want to be a prick you want to ten thousand you want to have your dad on your eleven thousand eleven thousand see now you're correcting me that's good here we go none of the essence was lost in this ceremony of money the mechanism of receiving raw and passing it on to others was known as an offering that's what kept the wheel of life turning was this offer dash ring it was literally a ring of human beings standing in a big circle big circle making their offerings to each other now that might sound like we're joking guess what this is where it's going to get really really in depth the military employs a base 10 system, 10, 100, 1,000, so on. Militaire equals milliliter. I don't think that that's correct, but this is the box saga definition that the word military comes from milliliter because you would measure the amount of you would drink by the milliliter. When it came time for making children, they would go out with a patrol of 10 to the villages. This is the army, right? So the army didn't exist to protect you they didn't exist to fight the whole role of the army was to do this they got in a patrol of 10 people they'd go around to the village with a round oak shield in the middle of the shield was a buckle that had a spike pointing outwards on the inside of the shield the buckle had a round bowl shape where the hand could hold a leather strap that it was mounted onto this sounds like a normal shield right you'd hold up and you'd You'd protect yourself from people coming at you and the leather strap is there to, to hold it, right? And protect yourself. No, that's wrong. That's that's what the Catholic Church wants you to believe. The reason that leather strap is in the middle of that shield is not so you can put it on your arm and hold it. The leather strap was to use it as a bowl and the buckle was called a lot saw. A lot means layout and a saw means bowl. When the bowl was placed on the ground, with the spike pointing down, I'm almost imagining like a dreidel, or they say like a roulette wheel, the people would come and offer their into the shield, the would drip down into the bowl, the rundelier would then drink it, and his body would acquire the essence in this way. So you send the patrol out into the village, 10 people at a time, they're having everyone off into this big shield, this big bowl, and then once it's completely filled, you'd bring it to your superior and your superior would drink all of the that they've collected from the village. Am I misreading any of this? Am I being icky or is this literally what this says? Can you imagine the smell? Just the smell of of that of knowledge? Yeah, probably it's like <laughs> opening up an old book. But but think about it, right? You, you you painted you painted a really interesting picture, a roulette wheel, right? A, a roulette wheel type of thing. This is why maybe at the oh, at the casinos with the eye in there. You have the Muni, which we know, again, we, we broke it down there, and it's all about riches, and it's all about the getting the jackpot so you get more Muni. So casinos, in this sense, are, are kind of in some sort of way, you know? like and, and look at strip clubs when they make it rain, right? When they throw the Muni all over the place and it gets all over the stage and all over the person, 
that I mean, that is a metaphorical representation of what Mooney really used to be. The the old strip clubs before the Catholic Church ruined strip clubs for everyone. You would go in there and you would actually just off on the strippers and they appreciated it. They didn't want your money. They wanted your knowledge. And the Catholic Church ruined all that. Let's get a shirt. Let's get a shirt made. Make strip clubs great again. <laughs> Okay. Pre Catholic strip clubs. Pre Catholic when they just strip accepted clubs. knowledge instead of money. Yeah. Well, we don't. Okay. We don't. So, so this doesn't stop. So, okay. So you've got your, we're going to say general just for the general is going to come up. Let's just say general. Your general has gone around. He's sent the troops out. They've collected all the stuff in the village. He drank all the stuff. So now he goes around to the houses in the village and drinks directly. Now, they don't say this in this particular part, but I assume this is the caste system, right? So all the uggos have to jump off into a big shield and you drink that. You don't want to make eye contact because they're uggos. But as you elevate through the hierarchy, you start getting into the mids, right? So now here's the mids and you're like, okay, you're a six. You're a six. I'll this directly from you. So he goes around and he has this thing called a snore or a rope with a knot at one end called the fangala. Fang meaning to catch and agla meaning a loop. So a little loop to catch. This is going to be fun. Open your mind up. Clo anyone listening out there, close your, close your eyes and let's do a visual activity here. I've got a rope with a knot at one end. It's got a little loop. It's like a little miniature uh, sort of noose, right? But instead of sticking your, your head through the, well, you're going to stick your head through the noose. But instead of sticking your, your, the, your actual head through the noose, <laughs> You've got this knot that looks like the bow of a key that looks like a three-leafed clover. This is actually going to be important. This key. this And what do keys look like now, right? Like the old style? They've got the little three-leaf clover at the top? Okay. This is the Ankh from Egyptian hieroglyphics. They would hold this, this little fangala, this little miniature noose, to hold the of the person offering his so that he did not have to touch it with his lips. Because that'd be gay. So you would go to the mid and you'd be like stick your dick in this little loop and you would hold it just in front of your so that it was like perfectly in line but you didn't want to touch it with your lips because that would make you but if you got it just close enough that as they off it would directly into your so you could <laughs> it's, this is hard man so you could without touching their with your lips somehow that was like the next level so I it almost implies that the better looking you got, the the more of a chance you would have that someone would actually touch their lips to your and they wouldn't just either drink it out of a bowl or suspend it in the air. Are you with me? I'm with you. And and I'm just I'm just a man. Like what happens if you accidentally like you're just like, all right, here dude, what the f why'd you why'd you touch it with your lips, man? Don't do that. <laughs> We're not he, now we gotta start <laughs> all over again. <laughs> It just like boops you and it's like, oh, sorry, bro. Dude, no, come on, man. You ruined the whole thing now, bro. Now you're just making it, dude. Don't make this. <laughs> the right. rundle here would, would pull the string through the loop, creating a second loop the size of the head that was offered to him. This second loop was called the favor gla or the favor eye. When the rundleer drank from 10 people and had 10 loops, his rope was full. He then went to the corporal and offered to him. So imagine this. You're going around. This is like like the worst version of the scout troops. And every time you scout off 10 guys, they give you like a scout badge, right? And after you get enough of those badges, you go to the troop master. And then the troop master repeats the process. But he, the troop master is only going to drink this from anyone that's gotten the patches that said that they drank from 10 people. So it's this big pyramid scheme with the guy at the very top drinking the most not this is where i think it gets metaphorical right because the the no. next guy that drinks from you if you if you tend to, and then someone's your then they just 11 that's the math that that's going to come out here we're going to show the math so it says after the rundelier offered the 10 offerings he got plus his own in one go to the corporal. After drinking from the rundelier, the corporal would take his snore and remove all of the loops. He would then wipe the snore with a cloth, giving it a touch of yellow because it was a saffron cloth. So that so think about this. And right now in military insignia, right? They'll give like the little like ropes or something on the shoulders, or they'll put it on the hat. 
so this is implying that if you had a white rope or let's let's talk about karate right if you got a white belt you're kind of like a newcomer i assume. I just signed my kid up for karate too so shut the f up <laughs> so <laughs> so what this is saying though is that every time you go and you and you beat 10 guys you beat off 10 guys and you drink their you would bring it to your sensei and your sensei would then drink from you and if he thought that that was a good enough offering he would then wipe your white belt with a, a yellow cloth and now your white belt looks a little bit more yellow so every time you go and do that he wipes it again so the more yellow your rope appears in this box of context this is the more wealth you had so the more yellow your your rope meant you more guys off and you brought that to the corporal and the corporal you off and every time that happens your rope gets a little bit more yellow and that's what you wear around to show people look how much i've drank look how many people have drank my and you can tell it just by the color of the yellow so let's all think about that sock you had underneath your bed during your high school or middle school years and how crusty that thing would get okay Let's just let's just picture that for a second. Dude, All that you're, wasted knowledge. You're wearing your heart on your sleeve, bro. You're wearing your stained lasso on your sleeve. <laughs> I wonder too, like if if you were to do that, right, and you just left that sock, or you've got vats of it, or whatever. If you just like left it and came back, like ten, you you know, you go back home for the first time after a long time, and you find it and you eat it all. Is that like you gain all that knowledge that you previously didn't have? Like you wake up the next morning and you know how to speak German? Well, I'd rehydrate it, dude. So I'd, I'd do it in a way where I can rehydrate it and then just wring it into uh, a cup or something. And then I'd use that, you know. Unless you want to eat the sock. I don't know. Uh, do I want to make you, this man. weird, though, dude. So... So every time he goes to the corporal and every time he offers his cord becomes more and more yellow, this served as a measure to show how rich he was. So this is, you were showing this off. Like you were, you were truly proud. This is the only way that you could show your status off. So here we go. The Lancier, the Lancier implies that he has a suitable for child making and that he is someone from the Carl cast. The heathen believes that the shaped resembling a pointed church tower preferred for making children the lancier carried a ceremonial sword to show how his was formed again let's let's not miss out on this very important observation that the sword was never meant to harm anyone it wasn't meant for protection or destruction or any of that it was literally just a symbol of like this is what my looks like that was what the sword was for and it was the show that you had a very pointed sharp edge to the tip of your and if you didn't, then you said, it says it right here. Those who resembled a mushroom or a club were unsuitable for child making. They would carry a curved saber. The role in the offering for the moon was discussed shortly. So this, again, depending on the type of sword you carried around, was literally telling the world, here's what my dick looks like. So what does that say about samurais? Uh, long and skinny. Mm, so no girth there. At all. Right. Or I would I would bring it to the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? That means Ralph um or or Raphael with his little size, right? He was probably not packing. Donatello was had the hog. Yeah. Like he had the bebop hog. And their role in the offering for the moon will be discussed shortly. I'm gonna tell you right now. They're all <laughs> 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 well not but I mean we'll get there. So yeah, man could show his rise in the ranks through the, the the colors and through hats and different shapes and colors. Secret societies love their hats and their colors. So this is something that still persists today. Uh, even you know, even the Catholic Church, they love their fancy little hats. And the bigger the hat, the more powerful you are because you can put more in a big hat. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, everyone remembers because he had a huge hat and he was a super smart guy. Probably because he filled that hat up with stuff and he drank it all, and that's where he got his knowledge. For instance, the amount of pearls in a necklace, one could determine how many portions of salve a woman had collected. So again, the pearl necklace is actually about how much that a, a female has drank in her life. 
Did you skip over this? This is an important one. Yeah, I skip. I exposed myself. I skip over this stuff. Okay, here's Wait. the math. Here's the math, That's and I'm gonna of... kind of look like you're gonna look like such an idiot now. <laughs> such... <laughs> the Lancier has a jackpot inside of him. Do I? Oh wait, hold on. We skipped over the jackpot. The oh jackpot is is the important part. Yeah. The commander. So you you started down. You worked all the way up from the rudier to the the lancier to the commander. The commander offers the lancier a raw of eleven thousand one hundred and ten offerings plus his own, which equals eleven thousand one hundred and eleven. Each lancier only had one commander under him. The Lancier now has a jackpot, also known as a off pot, literally a off pot. He's represented by the in a traditional card deck following the 10, holding a lance or a straight sword, the shape of his. So when you see the in a deck of cards, this re you'll never see it again the same way, right? A similar offering system was practiced by the women where they had a pots dam and a pot was a vessel where they would store up wow. all the I missed that one too. So the pots dam is symbolized everywhere around the world in ancient palaces, mansions, and monuments by a big vase. So anytime you see a vase, that actually means sov because if you pronounce vase backwards, sov, therefore that's proof that anytime you see a large, one of those big like <laughs> oriental vases or an egyptian vase is that one my grandma vase. always had a, a, yep. a vase and make sure i didn't break well, it i bet you she was super smart and you probably didn't even know it and then your grandma probably also had a lot of pearl necklaces um yeah, because fucking... every time that you drank from that vase you would get another pearl on your pearl necklace so lot, here here's a lot of people's grandmas in. were f***ers. my grandma didn't have pearl necklaces so she was good no that's a very prudish uh, religious catholic way of thinking it means they were smart the lancier with the jackpot inside him so the lancier has drank the pot of he has drank the the pot of 10 different men who themselves of 10 men who themselves of 10 men so here's where this number comes in he now goes on a honeymoon with the lady who had chosen for him at the festival five months earlier. This lady also experienced the offering process on the female side. Again, the same way that the guy goes around and off 10 guys and they off 10 guys, the exact same thing is happening with the woman. And the woman is using the little thimble to drink the liquid, the lick white. The Lancier has collected the, the collective procreative strength of 11,111 men inside of him. And she has the collective procreative strength of 11,111 women inside of her. During the honeymoon, he offers his rose to her, which she drinks once a day for 30 days to prepare her egg. At the end of the honeymoon, she has the collective procreative energy of raw 11,111 ladies and 11,112 men because all the, the dude drank plus himself he's the extra one all of that go together and that's where you get the number twenty two thousand two hundred and twenty three. but check this out as mentioned before she got pregnant with only one shot from the lance here so why the dude have to drink all the because what are you not getting here man <laughs> in just, order for listen dude so this if, doesn't sound like a sustainable model for society it's like where'd all the people go well the well the military's out all the time we don't have time to be foraging and hunting they just want to all the to make more people and it's taking such a long time we're running out of people bro what all right let's take this seriously let's not get too off guard here right. well, off the tracks let's, let's stay on the main vein and the answer is that if you just go and and just bang a chick and you don't drink the of 11,000 guys first you're doing your kids a huge disadvantage your kids are now we're not I, I, go ahead and write this down 420 uh time stamp because i'm going to make a medical claim that might not be accurate but <laughs> the rise in might be because no one's drinking their dad's anymore and if you drank your dad's that that might cure might be the lack of this knowledge right if you've only got one person's knowledge and the kid next door his dad drank eleven thousand gallons of 
and now he's going to get a one up on you because he's not going to be. I don't know. I'm 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 just putting things together here. Isn't isn't it interesting that there's a rise and seems to correlate with the the downswing in this whole drinking ritual. So thus, it takes the effort of 22,000 people plus the Landseer and the lady to make a child in paradise time. The purpose of the military and within that the infantry was not to wage war, but to assist in the child making process. The military's weapons, the lance, the club, the sword, the saber were not for killing, but served rather as symbols of reproductive organs. Here's where I feel like we could just go on a full like two day rant and say, like, I don't believe this for a second that the military created sharp weapons and they got like shields and they put like the whole entire structure of the military. No one ever fought. It was never for protection. None of that. It was all just about what does your look like and how much can you drink? That just makes me think what the weapons of mass destruction were that in Iraq had when we invaded them. You think they're just giant? I mean, what are rockets? The feathers in the headdresses of American Indians, the plumes in Greek and Roman helmets all correspond to the number of offerings the wearer received. Um, shots fired at all the American, the, the Native American chiefs, right? They're basically saying that those chiefs are a remnant of the original box saga because they grew up in nature. They grew up away from this horrible Catholic, you know, onslaught. And before the Catholics came and spread their horrible religion, those chiefs and all their feathers, that's because they were going around and they were drinking a lot of, and we took that from them. And Indians also were known for what? Having oral tradition. I don't know. I'm just I'm just thinking that's interesting. A special role in the offering system reserved for the artillery. Artilleries were also called the cannoneer. They had an enormous called a slega, also known as a sledgehammer. The females would have enormous breasts. They were the stars of paradise time. This was in contrast with a child-making lancier who had a small and pointed like Rome and gr Greek statues of the times like God Apollo. So here they're saying if you had a big hog, like that <laughs> cannon, like that's that's a metaphor. That's a symbol for like how, I don't know, how well endowed you were. That's you are now you're packing heat, you know? Yeah, dude. Shots fired. Packing this heat. is where all of this actually comes from. Yeah. Just read that last part there though, dude. Uh, Yeah. One. It's it's hard to even know what to skip and what not to. The cannoneer accompanied the military with their big guns in order to give them an inspiration to perform their duty. The art in the word artillery refers to the art of their work and the art of their bodies. The latter refers to the root word art, which means nature of. So just the presence of having this huge hog uh, <laughs> in eye shot would get you into the mood you'd be like man i'm inspired now like this dude's got this hog i'm gonna go ahead and stick this chick with my lance i i that's what i'm reading out of this so he was like the fluffer i guess in a way like the encouragement yeah yeah like this could be yours one day but check out read that from uh, the beginning and, there and the words of your brother those that's directly from the source wh which one right there in the, so go down a little bit Two paragraphs. In, oh, the, in word. the words of Yorbach, imagine when you grow up and realize that 22,224 people had contributed actively to your existence. You must have a feeling that you belong in this world, that you're welcome here. And maybe the fact you would stay the first years with your mother instead of daycare, kindergarten, and school would enhance that feeling. Maybe some of our psychological problems of today did not exist during heathendom. And I'm just wondering. Here, listen, a moment of silence, please, for this statement. And this is like flat earth copium here where it's like, you see, the reason it's not flat, they tell you it's not flat is so you feel inferior because we're a space rock floating through space and it's actually not round. And that's all meant to be a psychological thing to make you feel inferior. Like, no. What? I'd be well, like, mommy. My 
how many maybe some psychological problems that today would not exist so so if you yourself off in front of your mom and your aunt for 20 years no <laughs> mental health issues whatsoever will come of that but if you don't you're gonna have some some wicked psychological issues my friend listen dude turn and burn here get, get past all this because i'm trying to go eat uh four leaf clover it's more about okay here's one it's polite to lift one's hat when coming across from another cast. This is something we still do now, right? You, like you, you tip your hat to somebody is like a way to show respect. It symbolizes exposing one's head, which in this case was the head of your. So if you take your hat off to greet someone, this is you showing your to them. One could then see whether you were a lancier or a clubier, therefore offering the sun or the moon. Keep in mind that during paradise time, the climate was subtropical and everyone was now you know where the custom of tipping one's hat originated from. Tipping a hat is a nod to like, originally I could go to Publix and get us in a sub and walk around and you would know like, oh, that dude's a clubber. That dude's a landseer. What like are you, you bro? Knew what everyone's role was. What are you right now? Do you look like a, you look like a, a clubber, bro? Like I'd say I'm a clubber. Pretty too chody. Clubber, too chody. Style. Yeah, you look a little <laughs> chody, chody there, bro. <laughs> bro, but you missed. But miss this is interesting. That, that now every time you tip your hat, that's like, I don't know. This is me showing my my to somebody, apparently. Yeah, clean your back, exposing the head every time. Like, oh, I got to do this don't, again. Don't be gross. Don't oh, be I'm gross. Um, so, no, you, you missed. French, no, no, you what, missed what a very miss? important part, bro. Don't expose yourself here. Right? You missed the most important part here on the, the highlight before that one is the, probably the most important part here, dude. I mean. Uh, when it was his turn. No, no. Uh, up, someone. Up. Further up, up, a little bit more, a little bit more, up, right there, right there. Okay, I did the four, the four leaf shamrock. Yeah, in English, four people were involved: the Valjean, who was the offering, the Tajon, and the Lejon, who assisted the Vajon, the sector, who was on the receiving end. So this is the four leaf clover is basically four dudes standing in arrangement, all assisting each other to each other off. And that's what the four leaf clover uh, has come to represent. Read, read the one. Be, and when you read the one on top of that, bro, right there. The Tajon would lie on his left side and tickle the stones in the of the Valjean. He would massage or pilra his. On his right side was the Legojon. Lay means smile. Go means good or good feeling that just before. With John referring to the trill cast, the Legojon masturbated the Valjon with his right hand. So yeah, it's a very specific system on how all this works. The etymology, the words, like all of this means something. The word John, if you know it, John out there, this is actually where John came from. John refers to the name, and John is Juan, by the way. Oh, fuck. Um, just the, the, the crappier Mexican version, Puerto Rican version. Um, but this just means that there's a Mexican dude that's off someone with their right hand. That's literally what the word Juan translates to, man who off another man with his right hand what the f yeah, and i'm just leaving this out on the table yeah here's the hat tipping okay here we go um in french comprehend means to take so knowledge is this this is all is more proof that the box saga is true this one this all seems random like word games but from a box saga perspective, it makes sense. Okay. I agree with that. Um, this one's fun. This one I, is, is called King Juan. There were many a jot waiting in queue to offer the king in his tower, translated as a new castle. When it was his turn, a jot would approach the podium where the king sat on his throne. The jot took a step up, uh, forced the meaning first, and then a second step. This is Freemasonry, by the way. He took a second step, which brought him onto the podium. Finally, he took a third step. This is the Master Mason. Onto the Tron Pal. A pal is a stool with a curved ball and claw legs. I don't know if you've ever seen those old school like chairs. And they've got like the little like lion paws. The pal stood in front of the throne. And in front of him stood with his third eye, the little hole in his in front of the king so imagine this you walk in front of the king you stand up in front of this little stool so that your is right in the king's face 
So for the king, this could be an energy sapping moment. The king formed part of the pantheon of gods and was the love god himself. It was therefore no easy task for a jot to offer to the king on the podium in the tower of this impressive castle. After the long trip to Odinma, he needed to get an erection and perform there and then. Despite adhering to all the necessary etiquette, he also had to feel good to be able to perform his duty. Imagine trekking all across the world and going up in front of the king and then getting like performance anxiety. Yeah, bro. This is dude, honestly, do you think people take this seriously? Like the like the the saga in its entirety? Or are they are people reading this and they're nitpicking and that's why it's cool to them? Well, let's say you are nitpicking. Which which parts are you picking? And which parts are you knitting? Right? Like if you pick if you go on the semantic aspect and you're like, you know what, box saga explains everything because of this root language, you're like, okay, how did the root language come to be? Who and who discovered the root language? How did they discover it? Easy. Because I can answer if, that. Well, go the, ahead. The first man <laughs> his own. Right. So, so how do you nitpick around that? How do you say that knowledge came to us all as this self-evident thing, but you're not allowed to ask where it came from? Right. I don't know. I don't how. I don't know how you can nitpick around this. How do you skip over the part that the entire procreative system of the world? hinged on people making these treks over years and and militaries were formed and weapons were formed all to just gather the and the to drink and copulate i i truly want to understand how you can gloss over any of that and say don't mention the icky stuff uh, we're not well easy people are going to be saying we're not reading between the lines and that we're too stupid to understand it and all that stuff so Right, we're we're getting close. To, trust me, we're, we we don't have too much longer. Are we about here. the climax, bro? We're getting close. We're getting close. So Saul Bach and Balder would offer back to the castle, or an offering would return the supplanter to the king. Or this is just a, a huge chain of like you murk your way all the way up to the ultimate king. And every time someone someone else off, they're essentially drinking thousands of other dudes. So when the king gets to it, he's drinking the most cum, but therefore like has the most knowledge. So. The king offers to his father in Valhalla, who never offered to any man. So if you are the top of the food chain, no one ever drinks your, like, you just drink your own. I but guess. here's the thing, you know, in that perspective, I, I would want to be the dude that doesn't or doesn't do any of the, but you still at the top still got to drink. The, so what does that make you? You know what I'm saying? Like. But when, if you're in the lowest cast, then you don't, right? You don't drink anyone's cum. If you're the ugliest, poorest person in the village, you don't partake in any of this. You just, you jump off into a shield and then you go back home and you don't worry about it for a year. But if you're a king, bro, your entire year is literally bent around receiving nonstop. You will never stop drinking as long as you're a king. So I don't know. It, it almost feels like a burden. Imagine that if you became president of the United States, it meant that you had to guzzle. Well, you got to get a hundred dudes got to come on you to be the president. Right, according to right, some. right. But 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 I feel like this could be that that philosopher king that you know Plato yeah. and Socrates and so many people referred to is like the best king would be the king that doesn't want to be a king. Well, this is this is a way to get kings to not want to be kings. Well, you find out. Once you're elected as president, you got to drink eleven thousand gallons. Of That's a little bit different. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they'd be I don't think they'd be volunteering up for that if we had to do that nowadays. So maybe, which means that that would be the the right person to rule us all. Maybe make. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. I think that that Trump could be the best president ever if he just drank uh, the <laughs> from eleven thousand people. Make so alt land ice great again. <laughs> The, uh, the idea behind all of this offering is that with each offering, the strength of the essence of the or sav increased and therefore became more powerful. The raw within the sap became stronger and purer, so the swan could produce wiser and superior children. Also, the phlygia, the soul, this is that the, the weird uh, grandma's soul and the, the, the bull's um, this is reduced in quality as it went down through the casts. So the procreation system increased in quality when it 
went up through the cast. So if a rich person or a, a good looking person bangs an ugly person, it only creates more ugliness. But if ugly people stop procreating, then that helps create this like ultimate race. And it says, as mentioned before, this was offered within the lower echelons of a five caste society called Nectar. When offerings went through the royal family and increased in concentration, by the time it reached the king, it got the name Ambrosia, the famous food of the gods. So a bunch of poor people drinking their own is nectar, but rich people drinking the of slightly less rich people is Ambrosia. My allergies are active. Which is also a very popular side dish at Thanksgiving for a lot of people. <laughs> I'm allergic to all that's being served right now. Robbie, just like all the men who made children, got an enormous jackpot of raw in the form of an offering. The offerings to the Lanciers and mothers-to-be were called wisdom water. Um, this, If you actually bring this to a christening now, people don't like it because the Catholic Church <laughs> has ruined this. <laughs> Jerusalem means J to give, Russ, Rose, and uh, top of saw to receive. Lem also means so Jerusalem means give the top of the receive the one by one the rabbi did an offer exchange in the 69 position thereby giving and receiving after the exchange they had a 30 day honeymoon with a particular disa Jerusalem ritual this is uh, the 69 position is known as the Jerusalem ritual within the box saga it took place in the temple, the oldest temple on the planet, with the smallest having been designated for only two people. It was literally a room in the bedrock. It had golden doors and walls and ceiling covered in gold. The gold symbolized the big concentration of Ra that the or Ambrosia had. So this is basically, what is it called? Like two minutes in, in heaven or whatever when like two people go into a closet? But that, that's, that's at that cave. The Lyman Common Temple, that's what that's what's also happened at that cave that they couldn't ever get into. Correct. And and that's why it's coated in all this gold. The gold is just a representation of the It just everywhere, dude. I told you it wasn't even real gold. Imagine they finally break in. I told you it wasn't real gold. Uh the temple featured this golden dome where the rabbi uh would perform the sixty-nine and drink from each other. At the same time, the females returning from their ceremony, uh, where they're elected to be the mothers, they have their own drinking ceremonies called Sav Brunin, source of sap, to prepare for the honeymoon. So here we go in the situated in the backyard of the estate where Eeyore Bach grew up, and the Sav Brunin was in the basement of the house. Um, this got kind of creepy because I'm just imagining. Wait, what? Yeah, dude, this was the the house that Eeyore Bach grows up in, his basement is where all this is happening. All right, I'm done. We're, we're almost there. What in the... F Here's the song. What? Trellin takes the eye in the hand. Trellin is wanking. Trellin stows it in the... Trellin draws the eye in the... Trellin takes the eye the in his mouth. Pour it in the mouth. I mean, there's no real reading in between the lines here, man. This is a this is a song about a dude that's drinking. No, sperm. it's the same thing that happens with Crowley. No, no, dude, you're not you're not distracting the, the... the moving upwards from cast to cast. Remember, it starts at the uggos and it gets all the way up to the hot bodies. The moves upward called nectar, and as mentioned, its quality improves when it finally reaches the top level cast. It has a yellow and red sheen like gold. It resembled amber and therefore was called ambrosia. So the reason they call it ambrosia is because once you collect a certain number of gallons of it starts to turn a little bit yellowish and bloodish color, which almost sounds like it's maybe turning. Like if, if I'm going to have to drink it, I feel like I either want clear or white. I don't want yellow and red. Yeah, it's like there's blood whatever. in there, dude? What the f it's, if it's turning, I don't know, man. I don't know if I've ever seen it come out red. I'm just going to leave it at that. The wheel. Here's the semantics, right? The wheel. Devil. Devil. The wheel. So the, 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 the word devil literally means the wheel. Perpetual motion symbolized by a snake biting its tail. This is the, the Christian church, the Catholics, 1050. They ruined it all. They basically said, hey, you guys that are 
forming these big circles and you're off in these shields and you're drinking the shields and you're putting people's in loops and you're and you're drinking the out of the loops that stuff is evil guys that's that's horrible you should stop doing that we're gonna call that wheel the devil that is now the devil the wheel devil and that's what made it all wrong and before that People were living in perfect harmony and no one was ever wrong and no one touched the thermostat. Or the if you were high up in, in cloud, you didn't have to touch the tip of the when you do doing the loop thing. And then we're getting towards the end here. They're giving refreshers. So here's a refresher that the very Thanks. first language was called root. The language first occurred naturally in the brain of free, the first human male on the planet. Since then, it was spoken by people in the Odin Ma, the Aser. The second language was Vaughn, constructed by the Aser for the Vonner, who lived outside Odin Ma. The names corresponding to the titles appear in both languages. They get into all the different names for people and titles, and I'm not going to go into all of these because there's a point that they make, again, that they can pick from like 800 words to decide which ones match the best. So, fine. you can They can win that game. The dance. This is that Russian dance where they do, you know, they, they get on the floor and they kick their legs up. So the dance uh, was a Russian dance where a would jump high from a low position consisting of bent knees to show the strength in his legs and shape of his genitals. So that Russian dance where they do the kicking and stuff, this was actually to show off to all your friends and family, look at what my looks like, look how high I can jump. No, 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 no. The, shape, means- yeah. the shape of the... This is the saber and the club and yeah. all of that. This, it all, yeah. That one makes sense. I, I, there's no argument here. Everyone on the planet belonged to one big happy family and there were no wars until the Middle Ages. <laughs> this part, I wanted to have more reference. Look at how, look how long this section is on medieval castles. That's it. This is the whole set. Look, and the one before that, right? So, there's all this white space. This dude could have written anything he wanted, but all he wrote was everyone on the planet belonged to one big happy family and there were no wars. So, okay, yeah. let's just assume that. Yeah. Go- goat and the ape. And and I have a note here. Who built the castle? Who labored? Yeah. Did they get a castle? Did everybody involved in building the castle also get their own castle? Or was there somebody at the end of the day that was going to sleep on, a, on an empty stomach and they look over onto the, the edge of the, the castle, right? And they're like, damn, those dudes got this badass house. They're protected from the elements. I got nothing. But that dude is fine. He He's part of the one big happy family. There's no wars. He's not angry. He's not jealous. None of that. That part is weird to me, but that's just because my dad didn't just on my head when I was. Yeah, a baby. yeah, you just the, the psychological problems of the after Christian <laughs> yeah, the Catholics. Just, I'll yeah. never forgive my yeah. parents for the. And psychological- let's, say, let's ignore the basement of my house and my backyard <laughs> and all that. <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, this is my favorite countless, part right here, bro. Countless generations created room after room, spiraling downwards from the conical shape of the cavity. The heathen people eventually reached rock bottom. And continuous, uh, continued horizontally for generations until it was impossible for them to create additional chambers. This is the basement in your box house, right? So it started, it was just this one room when, where people went to bang. But every time someone went in there to bang, it sounds like they would create a new room to bang in. So after this happens for generations upon generations, it's this huge, vast network. It's, a, it's an infinite mansion in your box basement that sprawls to create this huge, you know, this under this subterraneous sort of like um, spot where they put all the gold and all the family members are banging each other. And all I could think about was this is Minecraft, bro. In Minecraft, if you keep going down and you hit the rock bottom, you have to start expanding horizontally, right? The Eeyore Bach invented Minecraft. Checks out. And you, you missed a part here at the 1050. Let's see here where he's talking about the records that were in the, I don't know if we talked about it, the monastery. I think that's important to, to, to talk about because it's like, oh yeah, we had the records, but they were lost actually. So, so I hear, let's see. I don't want to get accused of, of skipping any important information in, in this seminal work. Yeah, I'll find it here, but the, yeah, I'll find it and I'll read it. 
Okay, so I'll, I'll keep going here. It says that uh, according to Eeyore Bach, there were more generations than people in modern day Finland, which was about 5 million. Then there must be more than 5 million rooms in the storehouse. If each room is an average of two meters wide, there would be a path of 10 million meters or 10,000 kilometers on the inside of the cavity. The path with all the rooms would spiral down through each consecutive spiral be larger and hold more rooms. So Eeyore Bach is saying that in this huge area that's under his house or around his property is 10 million meters of just nonstop rooms where people were banging and putting gold in. I might, I might be misconstruing some of that, but I feel like the scale and the practicality uh, is unchanged despite if this were in his backyard or if people were banging or putting gold in here. This still is referencing a, a real structure. Yeah, and I found the part. So it's how the Sami came to Finland. And for some unknown reason, some Tibetan groups had a falling out with the emperor of China about 5,500 years ago and were forced to flee. The Tibetans requested then the reigning king Seppo and his father Ukko permission to live in Scandinavia. They were granted permission to live in the northern parts of Finland where the rivers flow north in the White and Nordic Seas. And then it goes, according to Eeyore Bach, documents were drawn up pertaining to these arrangements. Apparently, these papers were sent to the Tibetan monasteries after the year 1050 AD. It is rumored that these documents were brought to Dar Darm Darmsala by the Dalai Lama when he fled to Tibet in the late 1950s. If any of them still exist today, they could be there. But then uh, I could have sort of said something about them being lost because it would it would make sense, right? That they were well, and the the Sami in this case are the other people that were like, yeah, kind of like the Russians were like, all right, Bach family, you can go in and see each other off for ten thousand years. Don't tell anyone about it. The Sami had a similar arrangement i guess where they were allowed to go and do their thing and that's mm -hmm. why the sami people is where um the the santa the shaman yes. comes from right they're the ones that would go into the yurts and they would have the mushrooms and the reindeer and they would drink the reindeer pee um but we're not going to get into dicks. that woo woo stuff yeah we're, not we're just talking about milky white rivers that flow into the the cump of hell yep. if this is true it would be the most fabulous treasure trove in the history of mankind According to the box saga, it's still there since nobody removed it since the storehouse was closed in the year. So again, this, if anyone has the resources to dig up this treasure, it would be the largest treasure ever found in the history of anything anywhere. And you would never be able to um, beat that. So it feels like a no brainer. We should probably start a, a Kickstarter for this. We should. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we could literally disprove the whole you know prove the entire thing and beat off the no pun intended the haters of the box saga you can yeah and if you're wondering where this this entrance is it's actually cited the saga tells us exactly the address is vandusvagen Soderkula, finland I'm, that's probably all wrong it's 23 kilometers east of helsinki efforts were made in until the 90s by Eeyore Bach and his friends to no avail. The amount of cubic meters of rock that had to be removed was a mammoth task impossible to perform. Now, it does seem odd that somebody as smart as Eeyore Bach and that had drank as much as he did uh, wouldn't have realized that this was going to be a harder task. Maybe he just didn't drink enough. Maybe he was missing out. Yep. It was in that 1050 AD when they switched from liters to milliliters and all that. They got lost in the sauce. Is that when the the uh, the artillery guys like they weren't packing as much? They yeah. were like, we used to measure it in liters, and now we're going down to milliliters. Pretty much, the, this this world's going to hell. <laughs> Here we go. The a uh, burr known as a cage. They talk about a tower that the fattest tower in a castle was called the tower, uh, and this was uh, part use for common use and for offering ceremonies. So every time you go and see a castle look for the fattest uh, spire in that castle, that is the tower. And that's where you would go to drink a bunch of... Yeah, all the all the castles have been modeled after nice a lot. It has five towers, the King's Tower for Seppo, opposite that of the Queen's Tower for Maija. The Kerr Tower was the... For the Couriers, the Burr Tower. Yeah, you got it. The fattest tower was the tower. Though. The, the chodiest tower was the one. The chode. The chode. The word labyrinth refers to labia. All right, sure. I'm not even going to get too much into that.
we still see many prehistoric buildings around the world today. Here's where I think the Tartaria stuff yes. comes in. How exactly they were built, their original purpose remains a mystery. Prehistory is defined as the time before written records. Therefore, prehistoric people were able to move massive stones and construct awe-inspiring structures with such precision is unknown. The box saga does not provide any answers to these technicalities, which is a little weird because earlier on in this book, it was like, it's a known fact that prehistoric people could move heavens and earth. And they say it in a way that they're almost going to explain it. But then you get another hundred pages in and they're like, oh, by the way, we're not going to give you any answers. And not only does it say the book, but it says the box saga, meaning that in that those 20 years that Eeyore Bach is himself off in front of his mom and his aunt, at no point does he figure out where this comes from. Wasn't allowed to ask questions, bro. That's the problem. He wasn't allowed right. to ask questions. So I wondered, did they just not tell him that? Was he not paying attention when they told him that? I mean, not anyways. A gathering is also known as a get a ring. So if someone invites you to a gathering or an offering, they're basically asking you to drink a bunch of stuff. <laughs> First of all, once you keep in mind, resources were shared equally. No concept of personal property existed. Food was for everyone. There was no need to own more than one could eat. A king did not have more possessions than a common person. Both had none since there was no concept. So did everyone get their part? Did anyone ever get to take a day off? Was there workman's comp? What if you're working on the castle and someone drops a rock and it lands on your nope. foot and your foot breaks? Like Jesus. what? How how does all that then didn't happen? Everyone nope. was in perfect harmony. Yep. Got it. All the people who worked together on these colossal structures were closely related. There was no personal gain. Mm. Again, dude, if you're if a castle takes a thousand people to make and only a hundred people live in it. Aren't there 900 people that when it rains, they're like, hey, I almost feel like I should be able to go and hang out in that tower nope. uh, and, and have an <laughs> offering. No, okay. Nope. Here we go. We're, we're closing in on the very end here. Some of this fountain of knowledge, again, is fa- are we talking a literal fountain here, was incorporated into the acts of circuses traveling the ringlands. The word circus derived from circle. In root, circle means law of the ring. In heathen times, men abided by the laws of nature. The laws were presented in circus acts and shows. A circus translates to a circle of people, an ancient vehicle of spreading information. Now, when we say a ring of people spreading information, that's a that's dudes in a circle drinking, and that's what a circle is. That's what a circus is. You bring your kids to the circus, you're basically bringing them to a modern version that the Catholic Church has ruined and originally, you would just see a bunch of dudes each other off, but now you got to watch bears Fucking doing like horses the and shit. Or something. Yeah, I don't yeah, see it's that. dumb. So check this out: the what? oldest of the sisters. So he's talking about Eeyore Bach, the family side, of, the female side of his family. And this is where we we can we can definitely bring in Tartaria here. The oldest of the sister was Maja the Queen. The other six were called Hexor or Ball Hexor in root. The, the Ball Hexer. She would hex her. <laughs> <laughs> or Noida in Van, the stories were called Tarinoita in Van, which translates to Tari, female, Noita, Hex, or Witch. So tar, t- noi, Tartaria. There you go. Proof. Uh, there's proof of it unequivocally. The ancient peoples knew this as fact. 100%. Yeah. Until the circus, we find so called rings or circles. One of these rings was a female ring. On the opposite side was the male ring, and in the middle was a ring with both the male and female properties. In the female ring, shows were presented for women and vice versa. So that was again, the three ring circus meant on the left side, all the dudes are each other off. On the right side, all the chicks are drinking each other off. And then in the middle is where they have the, you know, the two hot bodies get to come together and procreate I assume that's that the circus is just a representation of all this. Yeah, don't be so vulgar though about it, dude. The female side also featured characters dressed up as animals with a dancing bear symbolizing the matriarch. Now, I'm a man of culture. Um, and I accidentally, a long time ago, uh, when I was at my uncle's house in Canada, which I don't talk to anymore. But he pulled up a website called The Dancing Bear. And The Dancing Bear is a 
website about a guy that dresses up as a bear and dances for a bunch of women. And it makes me feel like oh, your Bach is a hundred percent correct. How else would someone in 1984 know about the dancing bear phenomenon? He didn't know about that. The only reason that he knew was because the dancing bear is an actual remnant of this ancient peoples where all the original knowledge came from. There's the, why isn't it the dancing pig or the dancing goat or the dancing anything? Why is it the dancing bear? Well, again, anyway, the CEO of Pornhub is a ra rabbi or I'm sorry, rabbi. So, so he knows that th they actually understand. Okay. It should not be written at all. The box saga should never be written. This sounds like Freemasonry because the written letters disassociate the sounds of the root language from their meaning. So we actually just wasted a lot of time here because we read this out of a book. We needed to hear this from somebody. Otherwise, we're not getting at least half of it. So, or, I mean, I would argue we're not even getting one twenty-two thousandth of this yeah. by just reading it. Yeah. The third theory is to write the root phonetic. They're described, okay, here's the first three ways that you should communicate the box saga. The first doesn't make sense because you can't write it in a book. So therefore, writing in a book is out, despite the fact we just read this in a book. The second theory is to use the current Swedish spelling, since the opinion of the people that prefer this, Swedish is the root language. The third is to write the root phonetically. This is like that Jordan Maxwell style. This is where you say like, um, you know, liquid means lick white and all this stuff. That's writing it out phonetically. However, this is not easy because one has to decide the exact annotations and connotations. I loosely followed the third theory when I wrote the saga. My way of spelling is arbitrary and should not be taken as fundamentally right. Now, I just want to point out, we're on page 180. This is in the very back of the book when he's doing a recap. And I almost felt a little bit slighted when you get to the end of reading 200, 300 pages and they say, oh, by the way, <laughs> everything that you just read, it's a little arbitrary. It's, it might not be fundamentally right. I might have just kind of made some stuff up because it felt right at the time. This almost feels like something you'd put in the preface of a book and not in the end of a book, but whatever. This is the true history, bro. Just as a duck says quack, a donkey says hee-haw, a human says ABC. No, that's... Uh, no. Uh, 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 <laughs> no, I wonder, though, <laughs> did the duck have to drink his own before he knew how to say quack? And did the dunk donkey have to drink his own before he knew how to say hee-haw? Or is it just the humans that have to drink their own before they know what language is? Yeah, that's why they say... Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Here's an example. Sleeping Beauty, an entire kingdom falls asleep for a thousand years. The castle is overgrown by rose bushes. It actually refers to the events in the home country of the Rosette family during the third Ragnarok. The prince can wake the princess up and the whole kingdom from their slumber with a single kiss. And then some. And I assume that when they say kiss, they mean a Yeah. In root, there's a hundred or more words to describe the different parts of male and female genitalia. Uh, but they don't list any. I thought that was interesting. When you say that there are so many words, there's hundreds of words that describe this. We're not going to list any, but just, just trust me. There's a hundred of them. That's fine. Eeyore Box said he could not reveal the entire box saga. Instead, he gave us the key. The root alphabet with its sounds and meanings to unlock it for ourselves and when he says unlock it yeah there's only one way to do that here we go in old fairy tales the power of words and vocal sounds are described as spells sorcerers and witches know their meanings could use them with the help of your box saga you can figure out who is the source air air who is the sorcerer source or air who possess these powerful spells but the box saga does not make up a fantasy world. It's the language itself that speaks. What are you using to highlight this, bro? I'm just an acrobat. Okay. I'm going to have to start using that. We're getting, we're getting to the last lines here. Language is not a human invention. This is where the book starts out. The sounds and meanings are fixed just in that mathematics are fixed. That one plus one equals two. So again, 
language is not something that humans created. It's something that they found by their own. <laughs> Instead of talking to each other, we could listen to each other. Now this part, if, if two people are in a room, right? And one person's listening, what's the other person doing? They have to be talking, right? Like there's no way that, that someone can, if two people are in a room and they're just listening, you're just listening to each other, like the sounds of yourself off, sixty-nine, and like the baby. noise of the like, like that. That's actually conveying some sort of relevant yep. information to you. Okay. According to the box saga, yeah. All people can be traced back to the first two beings on the planet that came from the ape and the goat. Everyone on the planet uses the same sounds to speak. This one also feels like they are ignoring the Zulu language and all of the the click noises where they go like that doesn't seem like it translates directly into box saga um but maybe that should be because the box didn't send their kid to that particular tribe don't be so prejudiced bro don't criticize okay Uh, yeah i get it early life the eel relating to the english word eel al over time evolved into a fish and then an amphibian at some point it involved in something called a grotto which means frog the Grota ventured onto land where it found plant life and evolved out of the algae or the algae. Over large spans of time, the frog evolved into an ape. Just like that. Just like that, this, bro. This is the explanation <laughs> of evolution, right? This is Darwinian evolution instead of Lamarckian evolution. But it's all explained in these two and a half sentences. All of human history right there in two and a half sentences. Trust me, bro. Little Eeyore was baptized the heathen way by his father. I mean, we know what that means, right? His dad on his forehead. They didn't need a lengthy explanation for ancient symbols. It was clear as daylight what an Ankh meant, a trident, and a dragon. Why one lifted one's hat when paying respect. Why demons stick their tongue out and so on. Why? So if you just drink enough, you'll just inherently understand what an Ankh means. Apart from responsibilities, we're meant to have fun and live in harmony. There was no other ambitious pursuits in paradise. Uh, except for, you know, building castles with manual labor and whatnot. But whatever, that's, that's icky. Box Saga is not a religious story. The gods that are discussed are actual people. Anything described in the saga is not mystical, but practical. Of course. Again, except for your grandma's soul that's inside <laughs> the, the ox. Of an ox, yeah that that part's a little bit mystical, but don't be icky. We do not have to abide by the Darwinian survival of the fittest. Although, how did that frog turn into an ape? Ex- describe that to me without Darwinian evolution. And the guy with the uh, with the ugly, they they couldn't do anything. They were, uh, yeah, I uh, sure. And then here's the here's the last uh, bits. The planet will become so overpopulated and polluted. Uh, this is the ultimate sort of alarm that they're they're sounding, that Carl's sounding at the end of this book. He's saying that, like, for God's sake, people, we need to go back to when it took 22,000 people to create one person. And if we don't do that, the planet is going to become overpopulated. It's going to become polluted. This is straight out of the New World Order, right? Is this not what the Illuminati is constantly saying, that the world is too full of uggos? And that it needs to only be the rich elites that are procreating amongst each other, having with each other. And that's the way that the world needs to continue and thrive. And that anyone doing anything else is working to the detriment. This almost feels like the guy did a 180. Now he's purporting that like the Illuminati was the right way. I don't know. Well, again, there's no contradictions. And it was stated earlier that there are no contradictions in the box that's saga. So right. you can't bring that up, dude. Uh, and he says, I think to serve best to explain the main vein of the saga in this book is not by any means imply the omitted parts are irrelevant. So yeah, yeah, I'm leaving a bunch of stuff out and it's really important, but don't worry about it. We're on the end of the pages. It's all good. It's almost impossible to translate paradise concepts into modern English, even though this whole book kind of tried to do that. We can find the words in English for each word in the root. The thought patterns the words reflect are so different that translation will be a meager attempt, but we try our best. Uh, and I appreciate that. They, they do try their best. The making of the box saga, Kevin Woods and Michael Merle served as the fountain of information from which the 
ink in my pen flowed <laughs> onto the page of this book. Is this metaphorical? Is this literal? In 84, this is the guy talking about Eeyore Bach. A journey of friendship took an unexpected turn when Eeyore started to relate the Bach saga. Previous to that pivotal morning on the porch of Eeyore's little house, Michael had no idea such a magnificent story was residing in his friend's head. He was hooked from the word paradise. In Michael, with almost photographic memory, almost, not photographic, just almost photographic, Eeyore had found the perfect candidate for sharing an enormous amount of data relating to the saga. Now, I just want to point out, photographic implies a visual representation. That means if I see something, I retain it. But we just heard a million times over in this book that you're not supposed to retain this information visually or through the written word. It has to be ear to ear. You have to hear it and then translate it again after you've heard it phonetically. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand what having a photographic memory would benefit anyone if anything it might hurt you because you're not listening with your ear at that point yeah you're, you're there's another type of learning going on we already know what that is how this explanation is being passed on michael's explanation of boxing day or sing for the bach day and the meaning of its accompanying rituals and festivity for some reason got stuck in kevin's head i got a an idea of why it got stuck in his head he was just thinking about your box uh, artillery. And then finally, last comment that I made here, from a tactical point of view, I reckon that if one were fortunate enough to have unlimited access to resources to excavate until the cows come home at the temple, there would be two possible outcomes. One, the temple exists, in which case the government would more than likely close it for 20 years for archaeological research, and we would not gain much from it. Or two, there is no temple, and this would undermine the saga. In conclusion, by not digging, we would keep the mystery alive and be able to consider the saga and its meaning without any negative consequences. Now, f me, if this isn't burying your head in the sand and then patting <laughs> yourself on the back for doing it. Right? Sometimes it's okay, bro, to, to not dig deeper and not do your own research and take some other dude's w word for it, so... So here we are. Um, the amount of time we just spent here, Eeyore Bach could have set himself off for three days straight, right? Or two and a half. Well, right? Two yeah, hours a day. I just want to put this bad boy to bed after this episode and not ever have to talk about this shit ever again or ever look into it. Uh, well, what's what's holding you back from believing everything we just read over? <laughs> What's what's the one thing that's really like holding you back from fully embracing it? and not accepting the, the true origin of humanity. Like maybe what's, what's not holding me back, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to answer that question, bro. Well, what's holding you back from believing goat? this? Are you hung up on the goat and no, the ape? I just if you're hung up on the goat and the ape, we can, we can find a video right now. No, 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 no. Maybe the lack of like actual physical evidence perhaps like that that's the, the one thing that really turns me off about it to where there it's just like literally the epitome of source trust me bro it's like oh we might have had a record but ah, i think we lost it it's not it's not around anymore with us you know what i'm saying and then yeah we couldn't finish digging that temple but hey it's it's best to not dig that temple and but hey the same thing could be said about jesus christ christianity uh, Vishnu, Krishna, Quetzalcoatl, all these other people. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's a story. I, I see why people aren't very happy with you the way that you approach this material. Because after all that, I do see the beauty in this. I feel like there's something incredibly profound and true. Because if someone, if someone were to come up to you and said, Hey, Juan, all the information that you seek out there it's actually been inside of you this whole time. You'd probably be like, oh, what a profound statement. I agree with that. Yeah, that's true. Like all truth really is inside of me. But what you don't understand is they didn't mean it in a metaphorical sense. They meant that it's inside your <laughs> and you've got to take it out of your put it into your so that it goes down your throat. Your, your stomach breaks it up, breaks it down. Somehow the 
goes into every cell of your body. That was a direct quote from the book we read. Every cell of your body has in it. Then it goes into your brain, and then you learn how to speak German. <laughs> if that's what it takes, if that's the actual true Faustian pack where Faust is like, you know, Mephistopheles is like, you got to my oh, Fine, fine, Mephistopheles, fine, I'll do it. If that's what it well, there takes. There was no devil. It was the wheel. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Man, you know what, dude? Where do you stand after all this time that we just wasted? Five hours. I don't think it was a waste. Here, here's where I'll, I'll end it on. It's more of a thought on I don't understand why I've heard about the box saga for years. Maybe, maybe a couple years. Maybe in passing. Maybe I just didn't listen close enough. But I swear I've I've listened to hours of We've podcasts tried. and I've seen documentaries digging into this mm -hmm. and not once has anyone ever been like, oh, and by the way, <laughs> there's this one little part of the box saga that's really important and it starts with a girl, then his mom and his grandma that's on the top of a cliff and uh, a bunch of the, the military never existed. And their never pussy just juice the collecting and and container in their basement. How how has none of that ever come up and been the like the key thing? Like, I, I, again, the reason we're covering it is because as I'm reading it, I'm like, man, if I read this book and I was doing a book report, I don't think I would focus on like how you pronounce, you know, words and like the twelfth kid and what the numbers mean. Like, I'm going right for the selves and the and the shields and the like. All of that is incredibly fascinating and a very rubbernecker kind of way right it's like almost like a train wreck but i i love it i think that this part is what makes the box saga interesting if the box saga were just about this word sounds like this word i don't think anyone would care as much it, it is specifically this like naughty icky version that gives it this staying power that's what makes this stick and and that's what that's what drew me into like the homunculus, the icky, the, the icky parts, the nasty, dirty parts of like the recipes and the in-depth descriptions of everything. That's what drew me in. It was like that morbid curiosity. And like I said, I think the box hog is interesting. I just don't believe it. I think it's, you know, there's another word that we didn't mention all day, but I, I just can't. You're doing buy so well. And then you had to get offensive, like right at the end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're doing good, dude. I have, look, check out my notes. Look at this. I, I'm not going to flash it up on the screen because it's got stuff on it. But the, I just don't buy it, bro. I think may, maybe if Eeyore Bach was alive a few thousand years ago and didn't, didn't pop off in 1984 and die in 2010, then maybe he'd have a little bit more credibility because it'd be a little bit older. But just the, the, the convenience right it's all about the convenience and i guess like the 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 allure that it has to people though the reason it draws people in is because it's anti everything anti-mainstream history anti-mainstream religion anti all that shit. and the people who don't believe in any of the supernatural paranormal stuff that that appeals to them but does it well, really and word games w word games is a really fun one for a lot of people because once someone's like i don't have to worry about knowledge and education yeah. and etymology and how like things naturally progress and and the very meandering way that language actually seems to evolve according to the rockefeller education system which i've been indoctrinated by but it's like it doesn't take this very straight path where everything's self-inherent like things change meaning in ways that aren't always planned like one culture might misinterpret something and that gets baked into the culture and it and it turns into that this kind of does away with all of that um but I've, I've got a, a better question here for you. I'm now not making you, a good case for it, but again, I think it's... Well, well, now that we've read the box saga in detail, and I'm still open, I'll still talk about it. I know that Juan doesn't because he's a coward, but now that you've understood all this, I'm legitimately curious on your real answer to this, not a flippant or like a snarky answer. But now that you know the box saga, your kid comes home, theoretically, not your actual kid, you're, you're in Minecraft, but your, your theoretical kid comes home and he's like, hey, I went over to my friend's house and his parents were talking about this thing called the box saga and they're like really into it. Like nothing happened. They were just talking about the box saga and they said I should come back next week and they'll tell me more about it. Is your kid ever going to their house again? If 
without saying Bach Saga in that certain context, you'd think that those kids' parents are some woke, liberal, that are doing some shady stuff, which we know we see in the media that people do. You know what I'm saying? Like that whole thing. You'd think that automatically. So no, he would not ever go back. And my son's not going to anyone's house without an accompanying adult on our behalf. Because, because there are weirdos that, again, according to Eeyore Bach, it's all about the mental, what he called it, the mental disorder, psychological disorders that we have in society now. <laughs> now is the psychological disorders, okay? Not the sap-collecting dungeon in the basement. No, 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 no. Ignore that or anything else. It's the psychological stuff that, that, that was going on that's going on today versus back then. Yeah, dude, no, no way. I mean, that that would be a, a red flag right in and of itself. If it, it, and you would automatically think like, boom, wokeism, you know, they're, they're, they're trans or their kids are whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like that sort of thinking. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. But you'd be wrong. What what's really going on is that they've got the history of human civilization down to the root language. If that's what it takes, I don't want to know, bro. So I guess parting question, maybe maybe rhetorical, maybe it's for the audience, but is there a way? Like, am, am, are we being small minded here? In that, how would you describe the box saga and skip over the icky part? Because that is the number one complaint, right? Is that like. Juan, don't bring up the box saga and talk about the icky stuff because you're going to turn people off from the box saga and they're not going to appreciate it for all the truth that it has. Okay, let's say you didn't turn them off from the icky part and they go and they start reading it and they're like, my friend Juan told me that this is where information comes from. Let me start piling into this. I feel like you'd be doing a disservice if you didn't mention like, hey, by the way, there's this one little part of the box saga uh, that you might think is a little bit strange. I don't know. I, I really, I'm, I'm struggling to figure out how you can convey the whole concept of box saga and never get icky. It seems like it starts and ends in ick. Yeah. And that's something that I, that, I, you know, that now that you bring it up that I'm trying to struggle with as well, as far as like, how do you even convey that? How do you even, you're going to lose people right off the bat, like right, right off the rip, you're going to lose people. And I want to meet people who actually believe this, this thing. And what if, dude, what if, right? Let's say that they end up developing that property that this cave is in and they end up finding this temple that he was talking about. And there's all the gold there. Would you change your mind about the box saga? The, I missed the boat already, bro. Right? My dad didn't come on my forehead as far as I know. And I didn't see myself no, this, for 20 years. The age six, of part, auto part would you believe in the box saga if they came out with a with a documentary and all the Bacchus got together and they funded the operation and they got to the end of that temple and they found everything that Eeyore Bach was talking about and that his family and the statues and everything else with their and all that would you I'll be honest no I wouldn't believe no? that 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 a old uh understood the alphabet because he set himself off just because someone finds a bunch of gold buried underground. I believe that the Bach family, and this is a very outlandish, but this I think is believable that the Bach family could have been affluent at some part in time. Someone goes in and they're like, what the hell is going on in this basement? We're going to bury this. <laughs> and they did that. And so now the Bach family's got all these old riches. And really what happened is Eeyore Bach's family got shamed out of existence. And he wants to dig up the Eeyore Bach gold. Um, but it's it's not buried because it was the source of civilization. It was buried because a bunch of people were like, we don't like that Bach family. They keep doing weird stuff and inviting our kids over. Let's just bury them. I feel like that's a little bit more of a rational approach. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. That's more of a a voice of reason in all of this because the box dog is not screaming voice of reason for me. And who knows, maybe in the deep subconscious of reality, the collective conscious, right? This, this very, it's very Freudian in a sort of, in a sort of way where, yeah, maybe all these words, they're literally inverted. The are actually causing destruction instead of bringing forth life. You could see the, 
the what they call it, dichotomy in that sort of thinking where it's like, wait a minute, it's you, you, the, the words aren't matching up with the actions type of thing. And I can see that. I can see that in the saga and I can see where it's trying to extract and bring forth another layer of this matrix, the box saga matrix, if you will. Maybe I'm not down with the sickness. I'm not down with the whole and all that stuff to extract knowledge. But I, I, I love the root language stuff. I love the 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 alphabetical etymological stuff and i'd be interested to apply that in other contexts to see what kind of knowledge or maybe hidden ciphers you can find even within other stories of creation if we will but then i don't know how that works if it doesn't come from from the root language i don't know i don't know i really don't know what to do with this this information bro I mean, I feel like we've drained all the knowledge we're going to get out of this particular uh, vein, right? This main vein of the box saga. So I really, I feel like we've given this as much earnest attention and no. even making jokes and laughing uh, here and there. I like we read the whole thing in detail. We quoted it verbatim, right? No, what did we do get, wrong? People are, no, we didn't give it the respect that it deserves, bro. Well, no, those are pricks. The pricks are going to be upset. We're going to be called out for exposing ourselves for trying to make fun of something that is the history of the heathen people, you know, the legitimate, legitimate people. This was a, a, allegedly a culture that people followed and we're making fun of that. We're spitting on them by making fun of this sort of stuff and talking about it. So the way if, You're damned if you do, if damned you, if you don't, bro. If you come across someone that's talking about box saga and uh, and you say something like, oh, that's the guy that, you know, his own whatever, and they come back at you and you're like, oh, you believe in a sky daddy. Uh, like, is that is that hitting as hard now? Or are you just like, yeah, I'll take my sky daddy. I'll, yeah, exactly. Like I said, if that's what it takes, <laughs> you can keep that, you know, and people are, you're, you're feeling guilt. You're feeling guilty. Huh? What are you trying to hide, Thomas? Are you, are you actually in the closet, bro? Is that why you don't like to talk? Is that why you're obsessed with, with anus? Huh? Is that why you like all the butt stuff, magic stuff? Come on, dude. You've exposed yourself. Who do you stand with? Huh? The white magicians that, that their own or the black magicians that come everywhere and then just throw it away like it means nothing. Is that who you stand with? I bet your dad didn't even off on your head, you is fucking that who, idiot. Is that who you stand with, bro? Are you pro? Is that what you, that, that's what I'm hearing right now, dude. They're pro by making fun of the box saga. Are you pro life or pro choice? You decide. All right. That's what it, that's what it all boils down to, bro. All right. So again, that's just another interpretation of the the box saga. But I feel like yeah, I feel like we did give it a fair chance. We gave it a, a fair chance in a different environment an environment that's not an echo chamber and since neither of us were really sold on it from the beginning i think we're able to interpret it for what it is and like i said what did we're reading it directly from this if there's something more that we need to read because this is alleged this is essentially an introduction bro but when do you well, really he's got those other three or four books yeah but what are those about I mean, I think that's where he actually shows the math. Like, that's where he shows all of the, the calculations. Yeah, let's see here. Let's see here. So, books. Temporarily Insane. Let's see what this is all about. Temporarily Insane. This is a story of William Ronan, Casper, Lola, and Mr. Yeah, a group of Generation X freaks who escaped the grim atmosphere of the urban industrialized world in the early 1980s and traveled the world in search of nothing. They spent a lot of time on buses, trains, planes, pristine, psychedelic parties, da da da. What? Oh, right here. Carl Borgen's soon to be published work of nonfiction is a fascinating memoir of him and his friends and their involvement in the box saga and how it's going forward, how this ongoing 40 year search for the box treasures led to all manners of adventure and mishaps. All right. Sure. What is that? What are you looking at there? What is that? 
Well, this is a history of your box family. So here's an example of they found a uh, a sauna knot, uh, this this auto that was carved into the side of a church or a temple or something. Here's Eorbach doing the sauna knot. Here's Eorbach's dad, uh, who I guess was like a dancer. Here's the, the Bach family performing in India, doing what Eorbach does the best as a fakir. A fakir. <laughs> the sisters. Here's uh, There's where he got all of his information from, I assume. And there he is. I mean, if you look at this picture and you don't think that this dude is the absolute perfect specimen that you could only get from drinking from 22,000 people, 11,000 guys, 11,000 women. I don't know. That's a sweet stash though, bro. Tell you that right now. I think it's unfortunate that this hasn't sold you, but I do think that we can get there if we read the other hey, three or four books. I'm down, bro. I'm down. Carl's also watching a podcast. We're here in tour Webster, an expert in megalithic history, discuss the saga and your listen, dude. I I will listen to this, sh- but don't f- sit there and tell me it's the true history and that that that's the that's what it is. That's the that's the thing. Again, I don't come at anybody. People come at us because we say stuff, we talk about things. So this is we read the whole damn book, man. We went through. We still look like we didn't just sit here and like. <laughs> So this dude not was enough. talking about touching a like nah man we read it in full detail not we didn't enough. embellish not enough Welcome not to enough Thomas you've exposed yourself All right, well, I'm, I'm done here are you done I'm done join us as you read old books and stuff old books and stuff alchemy magic and monstrosities conspiracy theories and philosophy Playsets, custom art for adults, disguised as brick modular playsets. Mix and match them and collect them all. Very limited edition. Some of these will only have 20 in existence. Fake your own moon landing comes with director, fake moon rock, and two astronauts. Super Predator playset comes with reptilian, shape shifting politician, and a light up severed head. Nephilim Portal Baby playset. Complete with a portal, Nephilim Baby, and watch your angel. Death by Cop playset, you know you want it, so just stop resisting. The homunculus growing kit with a miniature alchemy lab kit 
and more. Bohemian Grove playset. Stage your own cremation of care ceremony. Wet market playset. Violate the very fabric of humanity in your own bio lab. Disclaimer: These are custom art creations and not toys meant for wimpy little new world order babies. Don't eat the art. Don't sue the artist. For more details, visit paranoidamerican.com. Paranoid American Playsets available now at ParanoidAmerican.com. <laughs>